And a very warm welcome to all of you as we kick off yet another Triton Festival. Today, it is the Triton Super High Roller Series launching at the JW Grosvenor House here on Park Lane in London. We call it jolly old England, but the weather's been a bit more dreary old, if I'm being honest, Randy. Great to be back, though, nevertheless. Ali Najat alongside Randy Liu, of course. First time that the Triton Super High Roller Series has paid a visit to London since back in 2019. Yeah, you know, it was obviously 2019 was a great event. We had that epic uh, million pound tournament invitational. I believe it was the first time we introduced that invitational concept, mm -hmm. and it was really cool. Um, eventually, we did have Bryn Kenny and Aaron Zhang battle it out. Uh, and Aaron Zhang did come out on top. Uh, they did chop it up. He won 13.8 million. Bryn Kenny was a massive chip leader when they made that chop, and he did come out with the lion's share of 16.9 million. Yeah, one of the few occasions on which you can finish in second place, and yet you ended up picking up more money. Let's not overlook, of course, back then in 2019, that the main event, which was a 100,000 pound buy-in, Randy, that one picked up a record-setting field at the time of 130 entries. But let's turn our attention now to the present as we kick off this festival. It's going to consist of 15 events. Here's the breakdown, 11 No Limit Hold'em events, three short decks, and one PLO over the next 16 days. Yeah, and obviously we've got those three special tournaments. Uh, another invitational, you need one at every Triton stop because, you know, it's very cool to see these VIPs kind of battle each other, the pros um, taking on who can get to that big price. So that's a 250 thousand lux on pay invitation and we also have the 125k no limit main as well as the 60k short deck main of course uh, awarding those special jewels uh, hardware to your wrist not to be overlooked of course another very popular format in addition to the invitational randy the mystery bounty the mystery bounty for me is one of the favorites i think a lot of the players enjoyed it is too um you get your opportunity to be the mc host and do those envelopes but the um, big prizes you know players who don't even cash the tournament can still get one bounty and score more than the majority of the players out there yeah such a memorable moment back in cyprus as the envelopes were being ripped open some players were very very excited as you might recall when that took uh when that took place all right london making uh or marking the first stop obviously in our third season of the triton super high roller uh ivan leo player of the year race is going to kick off this is going to be the very first stop last year of course that player of the year race was dominated it seemed like wire to wire by the legendary stevie chidwick but then at the last minute jason coon hopping in there when everybody thought for certain it would be an impossible task for him to take it down I would say it was impossible. If you told me like who's going to win it um, at that last stop, I would have immediately put my whole bankroll on Steven Chip. He was so far ahead, but Jason Kuhn was on, on a mission. He came here and says, you know what? I'm still going to try to win this, uh, win this Player of the Year award. And he's like, I'm going to win two Triton titles. He did just that, right? He got seventh in the 50K to start mm -hmm. things off. Then he won the 20K. And he won the 100K main event. Obviously, very hard to do. But not only did he just win that main event, he got third in the short deck main yeah. to kick things off to take down that uh, Ivan Lau. A, a year little match. cherry on top, without question. Simply incredible to uh, bring himself to seven total titles. That is a banner that stands alone in terms of Triton. Nobody else even close. At one point, it was 4-4 four and four for him and Makita Badziakuski. But Danny Tang has kind of thrown his name into the ring. Surging here late. Obviously, he's no short, uh, not short on enthusiasm for the Triton Super High Roller Series. Picked up a couple of titles in Cyprus in a 50K Turbo, the short deck main. And he has said that he wants to win this Player of the Year award. But never mind, Danny, just in general, do you have your eye on anyone in particular as favorites coming into the season? Um, yes, I do think, um, just to touch on Danny real quick, I do think that he's uh, definitely in contention. You know, he showed he had a great performance at the last stop. But for me, I do think it's uh, the year of Mikita Badziakuski. This guy's hungry. He's seen Jason Kuhn overtake him way too far in the last stop. I think he's going to try extra hard and win every single one. He's very capable in both no limit hold him in short deck, and I'm sure he can play the PLO as well. Yeah, no doubt about that. And another breakout star, of course, the ever-smiling Santosh Suvarna. We've seen 1.0, we've seen 2.0 on Santosh, and perhaps at this festival it'll be yet another operating system upgrade and some new software on the uh, always happy man. GG Millions Live, he won that one, found another three final tables, including second to Danny in that 50k turbo that Danny ended up winning but we've always got a chance that there's going to be some fresh faces once upon a time Santosh was one of them that really catch our attention walk us through some of the people that have kind of fallen under that umbrella 
prior. You, you know, the big one was at our Northern Cypress stop when KCG made a breakthrough. And the first time we've seen them play, playing the uh, Invitational Tournament, was making big bluffs at the very end of the tournament, putting these super pros in the blender. And, you know, it's very fun to watch them. But, you know, over in Vietnam, Dao Min Phu, a recreational player, hasn't been playing that long, taking down a big title, uh, really just been splashing around. And, you know, of course, Santos, as you mentioned, these are just really some of the stars that's been in our prior tournaments, but I feel like there's new ones coming. Yeah, no question about that. Now, we are just moments away from the first event of the Triton Super High Roller Series here in London, the GG Millions Live. It's going to be a $25,000 No Limit Hold'em, and of course, we're going to bring you a couple of feature tables. This, the product of a deep partnership between GG Poker and uh, the Triton Super High Roller Series, and it comes with some kind of special wrinkles, Randy. The main one is that they've got this leaderboard uh, where generally most leaderboards is just who's got the most caches. So you cash for a million, your stat is one million. But for the GG Super Millions, what they're doing that's special is that they are taking the profit and loss. So even if you cash for a million bucks, if you're down 900K, you're only got 100K profit on that leaderboard. So I think that's a really cool wrinkle that uh, GG is uh, putting into play. Yeah, no doubt about it. Of course, there's some special seat draw stuff that goes down too <laughs> right. at the final table, but we're obviously a bit removed from talking about that. In Cyprus, we had 158 entries in this event as touched upon Santosh the champion seven hundred thousand dollars went his way and we will now turn our attention to the two feature tables that we have uh, going on we're going to find Ike Ike Haxton and Eric Seidel also a couple of new faces in Diego Sanchez and Pascal Lefrancois I don't know anything about those two guys do you Randy I don't know who Diego Sanchez but I do know uh, Pascal he was a very accomplished uh, online cash game player for a long time at the highest stakes don't know what he's been up to the past few years I'm sure he's been grinding um I think uh, if you underestimate these new players, just think they're new faces, uh, you're definitely going to be making mistakes. So let's see how he does today. Yeah, the term new is obviously a little bit strange because the Triton Super High Roller Series is a bit exclusive. Not everyone and anyone has made their way into this festival or into the series, rather, I should say. But that's not to say that when they show up for the first time here, they're showing up for the first time on the felt or even in the Super High Roller circuits. As many do their bidding with mouse in hand, as we touch upon, but uh, known commodities uh, in, in that room realm. Table two, we find Garniani and Chidwick. Of course, we'll see how Chidwick feels about having lost that player of the year title. Let's see if he wants to jump out of the gates real strong. Dongwu Ko, a GG qualifier in the fold as well at that semi-feature, under 5,000 in career earnings. Are you like me, Randy, where you love seeing somebody that we know is actually new to all of our super pros that are regularly on tour with us and they have to spend some time figuring out what they're dealing with it's going to be a big tournament for him right you know he doesn't have much career earnings you know he probably doesn't play these kind of big binds too much but you're able to qualify through gg you know, and obviously a great opportunity for him um and, you know we'll see is he going to be nervous he's going to be like wow these guys have so many titles what am i going to do hopefully he can just stay on point and play his game and try to outmaneuver these guys now on the topic of new. You guys can't see her. She's standing right off stage. Will you come over here just behind the stage? Will you walk in here? <laughs> Get in here. I was not you guys, she's not prepared for this. This is absolutely unscripted, but none other than Maria Ho is going to be joining the broadcast booth here as our fourth member, Henry Kilbane, <laughs> off stage as well. Get in here, Henry, instead of what? pecking away at your phone. The whole family's this here. <laughs> this was not planned at all. I'm throwing curveballs out here, but here we are. Gang's all here. We are so excited to be bringing you this coverage, and obviously the team will be in place once Randy and I step aside after a couple of levels. Wishing you guys all the best. Do we know what you're going to get up to? I know you don't have mics on, but any plans? You're going to grab lunch? Will you grab us something I didn't eat? I'm a little hungry. Wow, I know. That's th I'm hazing. I'm hazing. Get out. Get out of here. Have, have a great uh, series, guys. Thanks for popping in over there. Of course, producer James in the building as well as Martins. And uh, certainly happy to have all of you with us. Moments away from the commencement of play here in London. It's going to be a, a long ride. 15 total events, 16 days of coverage. And then for those that may not know, on the back end of the Triton Super High Roller Series Festival, the GG uh, World Series circuit event that's going on over here is going to be streaming a couple of days of their main event as well. I'm going to be sticking around for that. So just uh, an absolutely delightful time to be a uh, poker fan. Every single tournament, live stream, multiple titles, not just one big main event. 
It's going to be exciting. Yeah, and London's an international hub, by the way. So if all of a sudden you're watching us up here at the desk, you're watching this coverage, and you're like, what am I doing at home? Book a flight. Get out here. You still have plenty of time to register. And price points are going to be varied because not only is the Triton Super High Roller Festival taking place right now, but the World Series of Poker Circuit also happening there, brought to you by GG. So you can come in and splash around at maybe some more approachable stakes, two, $3,000 buy-ins, and, uh, and be here with us. We'd love to see you. So obviously come pay us a visit. Let us send it down then without further ado to our main stage where our two featured tables are going to be revealed shortly. And there they are. Players still trickling in. It's going to be four-handed action at each of those tables. 500 and 1,000 are the blinds. Blue table is where we find Seidel and Haxton and the two newcomers. And then the red table has the three aforementioned players. And of course, Tim Adams. Everybody's starting with 250,000 in chips. Just about ready to get our first hand dealt out here. Now you notice the shot clock cube front and center here at the feature table. But on our way in, Randy, we got our first look at the evolution of the shot clock here on the Triton Super High Roller Series. An actual LED inlay on the felt at some of our tables. So as to be a little bit less intrusive. Seat 8 sometimes would have their chip stack obscured by the presence of the clock, emblematic obviously of the perpetual commitment by Triton to evolve and improve, always responsive and receptive to player input. Ali, I'm liking this kind of graphic. It looks like playing cards, is it? In the like, background, yeah. yeah. It's like, it's new, right? Something like that. I'm not sure. I tend to pay attention to the foreground. Who am I kidding? Yeah, I actually pay I attention mean, to that. <laughs> you only look at the I, I really, I'm way more interested in the background. So there is Pascal Lefrancois. Going to take a pass with the 8-6 off suit. Eric Seidel doing what he does best, a man who is really Spanned so many, let's call them decades in poker. Don't want to say generations, but even a little bit of that as well. And has managed to stay sharp. Such an impressive feat. Time banks if you are in from the start versus entering even five minutes late. Which also sounds like a thing people are not going to care very much about. Yeah. <laughs> Consider, by the way, if you will, Randy, the game in, a, in its state when Seidel began his career, early 80s. So, yeah, he's seen, like, all of the different changes in strategy and tests of time, like you mentioned. Uh, Seidel, you know, he's actually been to our try and stop many times, too, and has done quite well. He's got a nose for the super high stakes. He's not getting on a plane 10 hours from Vegas for no reason, that's for sure. Yeah, because when you think about, like, some of those old-school players that's been playing for so long, you know, like, not all of them are still playing No Limit Hold'em at the highest levels. Seidel, of course, one of them. Ivy, Antonius, all Triton regs. Does that T-shirt say I Sparkle Horse? I was looking at it, too. I was like, Sh do, we, do we allow you to kind of... Observe these t-shirts. What is it, Sparkle Horse, you think? Well, I don't see the K where it's supposed to be, so maybe it's not. Well, what could it? It doesn't. There is no K. You're right. So it's Sparla Horse? 
No, we're missing a vowel in between. No, maybe the K is there and a wrinkle. But, I mean, what is the, the logo? Like fire? Maybe it's a flaming unicorn. Two gray t-shirts. Normal. <laughs> <laughs> nope, gray Two hoodie. gray cards on the button if you're playing four-handed, certainly. Uh, Sanchez settles in. 3X open. And welcome Henrik Hecklin. Former Triton main event winner. The Signified hair? always by the handsome Jacob and company. I feel like the hair looks a little different. This Triton. Style. Yeah, it does. It does. Maybe he just got walked through the rain on his way over here, and it, it got a little unkempt as he defended with the King-5. Fails to connect with the 10-7-6 board. Same story for Sanchez. Really? A couple of knuckles. Hockey said he had looked, and it wasn't. Yeah, not much of a texture for both players. If you think it's going, I probably a pair pairing on the board. Hecklin checking once more. I think we're going to find out who among the field is jet lagged pretty early. Randy is energy feels a little bit low in Camp Hecklin right now. Well, obviously, Denmark isn't exactly a huge haul, provided that that's where he traveled from. Not a given. Four-liner showing up on the river here. Just 35 players registered for the time being. Full shutdown by Sanchez here, and Hecklin's going to be able to show down King High for a winner. Felt somewhat improbable. Always nice to take it down, but check down with King Five. Sure. Not certain we needed a chip count, <laughs> but you know, there it is. <laughs> Brought to you by Poker Steak. Not that much, no. I I'm visit my family in Syracuse. Week, but that is not the same thing. <laughs> Lehman Village, we should make it to Syracuse in 2015, I think. Yeah. I can side out a little chatty today. They're not jet lag, no way. Not strangers to one another either, obviously. Well-respected pros playing under the stars and stripes. Do you want to mention how we don't need this chip counts as well, Ali? Not now that you already did it. <laughs> <laughs> it's brought to you by betacr.eu, however. And on the topic of ACR, would expect ACR boss Phil Nagy to be among those who work their way into the field. Hecklin, going to try his hand against Seidel, limping the 10-8 offsuit. Eric wags his finger. Ace Jack, raise and take it. I need you to figure out what it actually says I'm by the end of this stream. I'm desperately waiting for him. I see the K now. Turn, please. Right? It is Sparkle Horse. But I suppose it's going to require a visit to the, to the Google streets, to the cyber webs, before I'm able to solve the riddle. Well, for now, Ace-9 offsuit while you figure that out for mm -hmm. us. It would ah, be some my dusty pleasure. hands. Hold it down for you for a bit. Sparkle horse, huh? Do I want to go to an incognito tab just in case? <laughs> Check the images tab. Aha! Ever the enthusiast of music, Sparkle Horse was an American indie rock band from Richmond, Virginia. Led by singer and multi-instrumentalist 
Mark Linkus, active from 1995 until his death in 2010. Okay, we learn something every day. Thank you, Mr. Seidel, for that. Little action coming up here. Queen nine suited on a button, opens ace jack now. Diego Sanchez, 250 big blinds effective to start things off. Uh, sir, excuse me. Oh, right here. Can I get the sea bass and organic greens? Thank you so much. Did he say organic greens? I believe he did. Oh, okay. Back to the action, top two. Gut shot. Sanchez, Seidel, respectively, in a 7,500 chip pot. So one third pot here. He's got top two on a board texture that's got the flush draws and straight draws out there. So he definitely could get caught by worse. A lot of stack to play for. Might want to juice up the pot. And juice he does. Check raising the 2,500 chip C bet from Seidel's button to 7K. Yeah, I'm curious to see how he approaches this queen nine suited. Looks like he is going to peel one in position, try to hit that 10 ball. No backdoor diamonds, however. Does brick out. Great card for Diego Sanchez to still try to extract a lot of value from top pair, but Seidel won't be able to pay that off. It'd be one thing if Seidel had a more meaningful interaction with this flop where he might be able to assign some spade draws to Sanchez from time to time, but with just queen high in a gutter, this isn't going to be the one. There we go. Game over. Game just beginning, <laughs> but pot over. Pot over, okay. Perhaps a new player. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, Correct. that's how it works. Yeah. yeah. Okay, sorry. There is no four. Why is that? Because four is unlucky. Four means death in that's, Chinese. That's very true. Literally. All, all seats should be eight then, right? I think that's the luckiest. Okay, I, I got to know, if you're aware yeah, culturally of the fact that the number eight is lucky yeah. in Asian culture, know? how do you not know that the number four is unlucky? Yeah. Well, it's still superstitious, but in a, in a much more harder way. So there's no four in any of their calendars or anything? I don't know about that, actually. No, I'm pretty sure, I don't think they skip I think there must be. January 4th. Yeah. That seems like it would cause international difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, you definitely would not get married or enter a business deal on the floor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just give this to you, right? Is it a consensus or some people don't care? I mean, uh, receiving I word from above right. that Nikolai okay, Mamut. It's not that bad. Yeah. Is the new it's arrival playing under the okay, Israel flag? I don't think anyone really cares. It's just kind there of he okay. is. You got any um, unlucky four stories or anything for us? Seem like someone who might know have some. No. I do. It's just it's dark. too dark. <laughs> it's dark. It's too dark. <laughs> Axton. Ooh, Sanchez. You know it's naughty with just the seven of diamonds. It could be pocket sevens, of course. Could be, but still would be, you know, not a standard play, I would say. I'm leaning more towards like a seven eight suited, seven six suited type holding. A 
ace five. Forced to put it into the muck. As what began as four players is steadily growing to six. Where it is, there's quite the queue at registration right now. Unbelievable amount of demand in terms of registration and attendance at this festival. An incredible number of unique players already corresponding with us, announcing their intention to be a part of this historic Triton stop here in London. Yeah, it feels like we're going to kind of get record-breaking numbers at this stop. You know, like la the first time we came to Triton, we had those. Um, obviously, Triton has grown quite a bit since then. New faces seem to show up every time. They, they like what they hear. Two queens, Diego. Just three bet the last hand with the seven of diamonds. Against the same opponent. And this time, Haxton has a lot more serviceable kit with the king-queen suited. Yeah, king-queen suited, um, most certainly a hand he can take a flop out of position, occasionally come in with a four bet, but, uh, you know, 250 big blinds deep. Can get dicey. Call we go. So 17,500 in the middle and 965 with a couple of clubs. An absolute whiff for Haxton. Good looking board though for Sanchez. No ace, no king. Yeah, always nice to have no ace, no king. Helps have the little club back up. <coughs> Imagine he'd want to try to extract value on this type of board, especially with the kind of a three card to a five straight. Sevens, eights are always bad. KC bet ends the altercation. It is strange to put all the Triton people in the other hotel. I wonder if this one is more expensive or less expensive. The World Series got to it first. Like they have the GG World Series stuff going on at the same yeah. time. New face at the feature, dealt right in, is that of Juan Pardo. He, he's a really good online player, Juan Pardo, plays a lot on GG. So probably perfect tournament for him, probably helping with that leaderboard that he's probably fighting. Little blind versus blind spot here. Le Francois limping the king six off suit. Hecklin, bottom of range. Occasionally we'll see some activation. Activate he does. Four X. Don't really think this is the type of hand you'd be limp calling with King Six offsuit. Perhaps he's balancing some time. No, he actually is going to take a flop out of position. Bit surprising. And that flop is Jack 10 5. That's Le Francois. Defending and failing to improve. 
Same story for Hecklin, but of course the benefit of position and the betting lead. Yeah, the seven deuce of clubs, of course, doesn't flop that well, but he was hoping to take down pre-flop as played, though. He does have the backdoor clubs potential. Let's see if he wants to bet now or delay bet. We'll check. It is a favorable spot, though, for Hecklin now still, because the king six, I don't really feel like it's going to fire on this turn. It kind of appears that Hecklin may be Paired some tens, got some showdown value. Dust check. So, I do think there's a good chance that Hecklin will take a shot at it here on the turn. In the face of a second check. Oh, no, we'll check again. I guess he's waiting okay. for the river to take a shot. But that's going to give Pascal top pair. But it's also the kind of card that, as played, Henrik might be thinking he should represent. Let's see if LeFrancois gets busy. Yeah, so basically he's debating, is it better for him to value bet against 10x himself, or does he check to try to induce from his opponent? He might strongly feel that Henrik has got like an ace high or a 5x, uh, just giving checking flop and turn. So it looks like he is going to try to extract from those hands. Those hands would probably check back river. Uneventful exchange there. As everyone's still treading a bit lightly here in the early going of this kickoff event at the Triton Super High Roller Series London Festival from the JW Grosvenor House right here on Park Lane. Ali Najad and Randy Liu with you. Six off suit for Mexico's Diego Sanchez, deemed inadequate. And obviously, as the table fills out, ranges should be tightening up a little bit. A little 2.5x open, Nikolai, Queen Jack. So far, standard. Juan Pardo, King Seven now. We shall see a flop. And that flop. Ten trade deuce. A couple of hearts. Yeah, not too much of a board, but for both players, pre-flop aggressor tends to kind of attack these spots, expecting big blinds to just check fold so often. And there you saw 2K quick check fold. I'm going to go out on a limb and say there's a few jet-lagged souls on board right now. <laughs> the non ch Every non-chatty player, you'd say? I mean, extraordinarily quiet here at the feature. And a little bit in turn here in the booth, though. I got here on the 19th. I know you got here a little bit more recently. I'm fresh, bro. I'm fresh. I'm feeling good. Excited. You feeling good? Show off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm good. I'm ready to go. Looking forward, certainly, to the freshness of some of the faces that we expect that we're going to be seeing as Triton rookies. I'll tell you, this Triton rookie, Diego Sanchez, has been getting involved a lot so far in this level one. Yeah, a little suited connector. Opens.
Trip Jacks here for Henrik Hecklin. Nice spot as the defender. We'll probably expect continuation bets at a decent frequency on this board. Diego is going to try to attack these unpaired hands or little pocket pairs lowered into Jack. 3K to start things off. Question here for Henrik, is it more value if he was up against an ASEC to race now or does he kind of slow play a bit? Slow play? There we go. And a full house on the turn as Hecklin is holding the deck. Sanchez, not interested. While it would be best for him to check in this spot, just given what he's up against, he's got to think about getting value from like the ace, queen, ace, king, the ace, axis that just will be a bit sticky. They're drawing very slim, of course. Heart draws once he charges his hands. That might go chasing. 11K, makes sense. course six high not able to oblige And nine suited for Mamut. Shoots it up. You got a shot of that logo there, Ali, if you can see. Sparkle horse. I didn't see a horse. <laughs> yeah, there was and no for horse. that matter, I didn't see any sparkle. I did see a lot of fire. Look like maybe a robot on fire. You know, some kind of circular metal concoction. Yeah, a little bit peculiar, if I'm being honest. Jack of Hearts. Got to expose Jack of Hearts. That's going to be relevant to Hecklin. Looks down at Jack 8. Not that he was going to be interested in opening the pot in any case. Could be relevant for Diego, right? Like, Jack do suited BVB is actually kind of a playable hand, but knowing that the card you want to hit is missing one out. Four. Let's see if he wants to still defend here. Sanchez looks to tussle with Jack Do suited. Flop comes right color, wrong suit. And for Haxton, spade monotone texture will do just fine. Two overs, not flush draw. Yeah, not a bad spot here for Isaac Haxton. Let's see if he wants to barrel this one off. It is a type of hand where if you bet flop, you do bet turn at a high frequency. We'll check. The check makes sense just given that his range um, really shouldn't be too confident BVB on this board. Does check. I wonder if he starts to bet now or does he feel that 
since he didn't bet to flop, it's he's never going to get like a pair to fold. Maybe he wants some worse spade to catch up, and you know they both make a flush, and he wins a decent pot. Sure, has played obviously. Options on the table for Ike. Doesn't have any spade in hand for Diego. And check. Now a four liner on board as well. Yeah, this, the the four liners always kind of put a little light bulb in your head where maybe I'd take a stance here. I don't think Haxton will with his ace queen type holding, given he raised pre flop. It's hard to represent six x himself. But for Diego, it's definitely reasonable to know that, of course, Jack Deuce would never win that showdown, but maybe he takes a stance against the ace highs. Third check from Ike. Is this your first run? Is this your first run? Second check. Oh, okay. Just you have no picture in yet. Wait, coronavirus is not there. I like this bet here, yeah. recognizing that. This board texture is very tough for the ace highs to continue, the king highs, even like a little baby pair, like a four. Four or five, yeah. Four or five. Half pot looks a little bit milky where it doesn't necessarily mean just six X. It could be like some two pair combos that just hit the river, like seven five. Valiant. I like it. From Sanchez and obviously some six X combos that Really weren't interested in putting any chips into the pot until that point in time. <laughs> Could have been present, and as such, Ike says, go ahead and take it. But a very passive line taken there by Haxton, perhaps associated in part slightly with limited reps against Sanchez. Different if limited any. reps. Um, but, you know, Haxton kind of strikes me as one of these guys who, of course, like to go into solver streets a bit and... Um, from that point of view, this type of texture, uh, number, 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 BVB, raised pot, especially monotone, you don't have that many nutted hands. So you kind of want to contain those situations where yeah. you bet, you get raised, and, you know, they can kind of just apply so much pressure. And you don't really have much. Five X mystery card under the gun. Ace of Hearts. That's my read. Certainly reads to be among the side cards that LeFrancois could have as a razor under the gun. As you mentioned, 7-6 suited. No mysteries here. And Mahmoud, three bets from the big blind, giving us a glimpse of how he likes to approach things. Yeah, a rather aggressive play, because if you look at the position, it's big line versus under the gun. A lot of players would just call here pre-flop, um, but a lot of deception here in case he, they do take it to a flop. Of course, he's hoping to take it down now. Looks like Pascal's got enough of him to continue. <coughs> And how about trip sixes promptly delivered to Nikolai Mahmoud's doorstep? He can hardly believe his good fortune here is maybe a flush draw or a straight draw, maybe a pair. But trips, he'll take it. 26-5 in the middle. Yeah, he smashed it so hard that he wants to still put chips in to kind of build the pop, but doesn't want to bet too big. He's like, he wants to invite these kind of two overcard floats that might pick up a piece on the turn. And, you know, of course, he's doing so well with trip sixes. The I like thing is, it's size. not obvious, Randy, that it's because he's trapping. If you're in LeFrancois' seat, this could very much feel like an obligatory C bet with two overs, given the texture, rainbow, and paired. And 
You're right. On these uh, paired boards, little paired boards, uh, no face card out there, it's pretty much expecting the three better to fire his whole range, especially with the positions they're in, big blind versus under gun. So it doesn't necessarily mean like, oh, it's only a strong hand. He's going to continue with the five of hearts. You know, it could be pocket fives. It could be could be occasional 5-6, although that's not that likely. Um, but it could be ace-5 suit. It's reasonable. And so we head to the turn. Yeah, for Nikolai, the king of diamonds, of course, it picks up. He gets that extra flush draw, but it's actually not a good card in general for him in this instance, given how strong his hand is, because... His opponent will always fear the ace king. That would three bet big blind, of course, and c bet flop. He's going to fire away again, 12 5. And note that he's actually opting to kind of go small again on the turn. Is realizing the king is scary, and you don't want your opponent to just hero fold a hand that has so little equity. Twelve thousand five hundred, and down goes five X. So a couple of newcomers giving us first glimpses of how they're going to be approaching one another. Juan Pardo also fresh face. Well, actually, it's Juan's um, second. Triton series, Ali, if you if you heard him say earlier. Don't remember. No, I overlooked that. He said he, he popped in. I don't remember. I feel like he went to Madrid because he's from Spain. Oh, you know what? Yes. Yes, you're right. He does look a bit familiar from Madrid. I, I assume that's the stop where he may have paid us a visit. Yeah, I believe he goes by the name Malacca style. Now, I have no idea what that means, if it's a Spanish word or, <laughs> or whatnot. You got a little chuckle. Does it mean something? Malacca style? No, it's just, I, I think, oh, I'm confusing with maracas, which are the, you know, <laughs> the <laughs> rattles. <style>. No. <laughs> Malacca style. Yeah, I'm wondering, like, is Malacca, like, a, a nice word or something? Or you think, think it's... The Malacca Strait, I believe, in geography? Maybe I'm The wrong. Malacca Strait? <laughs> like, the Strait of Gibraltar? No, there's more than one strait. <laughs> You mean Broadway? Ace Queen now for Nikolai. Yeah. The Malacca Strait, or the Strait of Malacca, is a narrow stretch of water between the Malay Peninsula and the Indonesian island of Sumatra. Okay. So what does Malacca mean? Can you translate it for me? It's just a name. What does Randy mean? It means me. <laughs> now, no go. Ace Queen suited means three bets, says Nikolai Mahmoud. Shoots it up to 14,500 in a good way here against the preflop Razor Hecklin, dominating. And Nikolai just three bet the last hand from the big blind. So, of course, it could be just card distribution, but it is crossing his mind. He's got King Queen suited. Do keep in mind he raised from under the gun, so. It's supposed to be a bit stronger from the small blind. He's keeping that in mind. Haxton does get the close to action with 8-7 of clubs, which is nice. Very deep stack. More than 200 big blinds. We've got a pot brewing up here. Three players in for 14-5 ahead. Bringing us to over 45k in the middle pre-flop. Jack, Jack, three. I guess everyone's got a pair. <laughs> yes, everyone's got a pair of jacks. That's <laughs> that's right, Ollie. Um, very nicely noted. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I get paid to do, Randy, yes. is point out these sort of nuances of the game. I mean, the good news is that you're not doing the strategy point and then saying that's what you want to know as the key important information in this hand. So I shouldn't say that Nikolai's betting his jacks? <laughs> his pair of jacks of <laughs> ace, queen, three. You know, his kicker might improve from the three upgrading uh, on multiple turns. Right. But 
regardless. Continuation bet, 13k. King Queen suit in an interesting predicament here, right? He's got position. He's got these kind of back doors that can give him some opportunity. Still has the little Haxton behind him. He's got to keep in mind. The little Haxton, <laughs> Randy? <laughs> Are you making a reference to perhaps a perceived diminutive stature on Ike? Okay, the the medium Haxton, okay? Uh, the mighty Haxton. My I would prefer to go with. I don't think he goes by Mighty Haxton, though. Most of the things that I call people on stream, they don't go by. <laughs> it's not a prerequisite. I want a nickname for every single player by the end of this whole series, okay, Ali? Careful what you wish for, Randy. Yeah, I'm not mad I just got excited. And Mahmoud's going to be pretty excited not to have to take a turn, given that he was out of position against two opponents and didn't have much. But Ace Queen was the best hand as it stands, so his C bet earns him the pot. Thank you. Yeah, you can always see like things just heating up slowly. Always the beginning is when they get their feet wet, but uh, players are kind of being a bit more active now after the first few orbits. A seven suited, activating Seidel, two and a half X the open. <coughs> Nikolai has been active both in the big blind and the small blind next hand. Activating this 5-4 hearts as well, but this time in the more passive route, flat calling in position. Ace 10 suited, it's playable. 6-5 as well from the blinds. It's crossing Pascal's mind if he wants to squeeze this one up or maybe just come in with call. Call makes. More reasonable sense given that it is an early position raise. Henrik now in the big blind gets to close things up. Out of position, of course, in the small. and Price is right for Eklund here. Yeah, price is right for sure. Just contemplating, does he ever put in a squeeze with this kind of deceptive hand? He does. Key point is the size and he opts to go for. Notice that he goes for 19,000, which is a rather large size, you know, almost 8x. The logic, though, is that we started this hand with playing more than 200 big blinds deep. So the deeper you are, the more you size up to kind of cut down the stack to pot ratio and, you know, the odds that your opponents are getting. Seidel, however, still making the call here in position. Kind of a trouble spot here for Pascal closing the action. Now, it's nice that he's suited, but he could easily dominate it in an ace X situation. So he lays it down. Kind of the two weaker holdings in there still. So Hecklin managing to thin the field a bit. And Seidel. <laughs> Sussing out that maybe something was afoot, but unfortunately for him, Jack-Jack-6 leaves him not only behind against Hecklin, but also unimproved. Yeah, really nice for him. He also kicked out that ace-10 of diamonds that would have gave him action. If he's going to continue, I'd imagine he wanted to kind of go small in this board texture. Hoping to just take it down now. Yeah, about quarter pot. No, he's probably not expected to have that many nutted hands like the Jack X given the squeeze from the big blind. So, so you wouldn't really want to opt to go for a big C bet. Backdoor clubs and Seidel. He's tough. Sticks around. No question about it. Peeling just to see what's what. Board texture such that obviously there's going to be some discomfort from time to time. For somebody who doesn't have a hand, and that somebody is not Henrik Hecklin. Six is full on the turn, leave Seidel drawing dead, but note the arrival of the nut flush draw for Seidel. 
Yeah, of course, Henrik is pleased to hit this six. Uh, of course, now he t takes the lead against the sevens through tens pocket pairs. Still falls to the jack. <clears throat> He's kind of wondering, is there value in betting against these kind of smaller pocket pairs lower than a jack and the ace highs? Against those hands, he probably wouldn't want to size too much and get those hands to get away. Does he check to kind of let diamonds... Pull a trigger or a pocket pair lower than six. It's actually very tough here, Ali, that um, Seidel picks up the club draw, so more opportunity. He might feel like if his opponent is holding a pocket pair that, you know, whether it's queens and higher or even the middling stuff, oh, no, no, no. wouldn't they kind of want to slow things down? The fact they're still betting, does that mean he's up against, like, a diamond draw, a club draw, something he can still win against and have the back of backdoor clubs as backup? Drawing dead calls. Ace high, of course, a part of the equation as well for Seidel, and now a problem. He's made the nut flush, and in a 136K pot, Hecklin is going to have the opportunity to cobble some value. Yeah, great spot that his opponent hitting the nut flush. Um, for Henrik to bet the turn, must feel that these pocket pairs wouldn't be folding there, so he might want to target to extract value okay. from those hands. Yeah, and half the pop makes a lot of sense to kind of attack these hands. He also is aware that Jack X and 6X should not be a large part of his range. His op opponent might kind of look him up a little bit more because of that, because you got to remember he squeezed from the big blind against an early position raise to 19K. Sixty-eight thousand feels like such a nice number to be targeting Seidel with, and Seidel wow. jamming, and this is incredible because effectively he's turned his hand into a bluff. Right? I mean, it, it, I guess okay, it's a uh, little bit mergy. To to be fair, um, no, Seidel actually thinks he's got the best hand. He's value betting this. He believes he's up against like queens, kings, aces. And Henrik lays down the six. That's incredible. How that is simply that incredible. Win? I, I mean, the line obviously does feel a little bit like a trappy jack. 100%. It looks like a jack X, right? Jack 10, uh, queen jack, ace jack hands that he would peel. And Hecklin obviously lamenting. Perhaps that, that bet on the river, although... I don't know. Maybe Seidel comes with something meaty enough on the river that Henrik can't call regardless. But obviously, when we fire and then we get piled on it, it feels Look, a little bit worse maybe. You play poker and you kind of make some adjust, uh, assumptions while you play the hand, of course. And I, I believe Henrik was thinking that with the way it's run out, my opponent would play Jack X this way. I call slow play flop, slow play turn, of course, with double paired board. Would jam, of course, when he sees a bet in front of him on the river. So he was thinking that if I bet here and I get raised, my opponent always has a jack. He would never try to bluff me. The thing is, Saito actually went for thin value and got a better hand to fold. That's why poker is fun to watch. That's wild. Yeah, you know, my initial sense was, yeah, Seidel's turning his hand into a bluff. But obviously, you can think you have the best hand from time to time. Maybe Henrik is pursuing value with an overpair, one that won't buy the line that you're taking. But... With two possible full houses. I'll, I'll tell you this. Um, Seidel wasn't thinking that he was going to 6x because a huge squeeze preflop from the big blind. You don't expect 6x. He kind of just threw it out the window. In the jack x, he also thought the jack x will check to me on a turn at a decent frequency, given it's double paired. Like, why lose your customer? 
So he basically was thinking, look, my opponent's got some worse clubs that got there, or he's got, like, pocket kings, aces, queens. Let him figure out if he wants a hero call or not. Mm -hmm. And just created that amazing, uh, <laughs> somehow got the better hand to fold. Didn't expect that regardless. We throw the two sixes over to Eric Seidel, who called the three bet. He's up against the two aces of Mahmoud, however. Bit of puck control here of two aces. Now a gut shot for Seidel. And as played, it's going to feel perhaps like Mahmoud is unpaired in this situation. Yeah, I would say I would say he's unpaired at a decent frequency. Um, but, you know, seeing the two aces check back, of course, a lot of over pairs, one pair of hands. It doesn't want to play a huge 300, what, 200 big blind pot. For now, I'd imagine that he'd want to just value bet now with the kind of this texture of bad river cards that could arrive. Seidel might find it odd that his opponent has check back flop the op to bet this turn. Because if you check back like ace king, you're kind of looking to check this down if it gets checked to you twice. So why is my opponent betting now? Does pick up inside straight draw, which is enough for him to continue with added equity in case he's up against an overpair. And fails to improve on the river as the texture does get pesky. <coughs> X makes a straight. Extremely hard to extract value of two aces here. Sometimes you value own yourself against like some river two pair that's a little bit worried with a four straight out there. Would be a pretty nice value bet, but very hard to do so. Wouldn't fault him if he opts to check. But it looks like he does find a value bet. Nice. Looks like half pot. As this one came down, Randy, three and a half K, three bet to 11 by Mahmoud. Seidel calling, check, check, flop, check call 13 K on the turn. And this river bet of 26 K Feels like it has the sixes beat to you as well as we uh, see Seidel folding? 100%. I would be surprised if Seidel had folded that. He, the hands he's trying to pick off, like the busted hearts, they have a lot of incentive to just bet a heart draw on a flop, um, which can multi barrel you off. So when he checks back, it just looks a bit pot control y. What kind of person three bets and try to represent 8x? Not too many, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So the fact that he's still betting there kind of screams to me some kind of value. Just, just some water. Oh. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Things have been going pretty well for Mamut. Been highly active, Queen Ten. Four K open as the blinds did click forward since the onset. Now playing one thousand fifteen hundred. Yeah, everyone loves a good Jack Ten suited three bet in position. Forty minute levels here in this eight max event. Reentry is available, of course, right? You think everyone just going to do the one bullet and go home? <laughs> I mean, if it was a one bullet situation, it would have made that jam by Seidel even more impressive. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you can rebuy all the way through the end of level 10. It'll be 8.30 in the evening tonight. Okay. Wired tens.
Sanchez, 4,000 to go. Seidel, a customer with King-8 suited. Yeah, he's actually getting a little bit better price given that the small blind is a little bit larger with at this blind level. <clears throat> a couple clubs in there as well. Not too bad for Seidel. Flopped it. Nut flush and a three-way affair here that included Haxton, who has bottom pair. A couple of checks in front of Sanchez. Double checking he's got a spade in hand, does not. Really just not much connection. No backup. A check through. See a red card. Look at how fast Seidel just checked that turn, like, all right, I'll get you guys on the turn. Look uh, weak. Obviously, it's super profitable for him to look like a man who's not interested. See Haxon actually thinking about how weak the preflop raiser to check this flop and how fast Seidel checked. Going to check as well. I suppose as played, the 210 should be happy to take one card off, try to just get a safe river. Betting doesn't really accomplish anything. So another round of checks yields an eight of clubs, and Seidel, one would imagine, is ready to get busy. We'll yeah. see, though. With the check around on the flop and turn, he's not going to think he's up against a big hand. 10K is basically targeting the ace-ec hands that are not strong, but would feel mandatory to pay off one bet. Ten K into thirteen five. Sanchez trying to figure out whether or not Ace X Jack X would be willing to fire at this on the end. He should be able to eliminate Jack X given the sizing. It's unlikely with the ace out there. Does he feel like this is a slow played hand or nothing? <coughs> Looks yeah. like he's reaching for chips. Pays it yeah. off. Nicely played, Seidel. Two streets of slow play. Adequately under-repping the nuts and getting a river call. So small, right? Out of Diego Sanchez three, there. Yeah. No shame in being the, on the wrong end of a Seidel hand there, Randy. It takes me my, my eyes that are bad or... Yes. We take our first opportunity to point your attention to the 2023 WSOP online action taking place at GG Poker, the most prestigious online poker series at the world's biggest poker room. More details will be soon to come. There you see D-Nags and Elki, Bertrand Grofelier. Two of the GG pros, Team GG. I'm rocking my track jacket today. You are. Well done. Nicely. Triton is business daddy. GG per business <laughs> uncle. <laughs> perfect ad for you to read. Thanks, Ali. But um, no, it's pretty cool that you're able to kind of just win bracelets at the comfort of your home. And it's still the highest stakes, big, uh, big amount of players playing it. So big prizes. I like it. Obviously, the game has been grown tremendously. By the efforts of such series, approachable price points. And some of the guys you see here at Triton cut their teeth and began their journey in poker in exactly those sorts of tournaments <coughs> and at those buy-ins and stakes. So we see Pascal LeFrancois, Pocket Kings, making it 4,000 to go. Juan Pardo. Grabbing his miner's helmet with the pocket fours. 
miner's helmet. Is that what you said? Yeah. Am I supposed to understand this reference? Well, Usually I don't. When we have small pairs, we're oftentimes referred to as set mining. Oh. So then, I I like this one. You know, one of the few things I like that comes out of your mouth. Believe it or not, I've actually spent time in a mine, Randy. No way! I Did swear. You? <laughs> for for ten, one though, he says ten texture. I'll get to it later. <laughs> and Le Francois obviously not going to be in love with what he's seeing here. The Ace does loom from time to time. I'm <laughs> having trouble concentrating as I'm thinking about why would Ollie be in a mine? But okay. King 10 to Kings, definitely uh, something that can extract some value on some later streets. Not a hand you're looking to get like three barrels on. Mines are also the kind of place where one can extract some value. In yes. Natural. Gold. Earth materials. Diamonds. And precious metals. Dirt. Sure. Did you say dirt? <laughs> dirt say dirt's dirt. not that valuable, <laughs> I'm just Randy. wondering if, if it was going to get by. <laughs> <laughs> so Le Francois decides that he does not want to follow through on the preflop raise with these two red kings, as on the turn, no. Well, I was going to say no, but it's a third spade. I thought initially that it was a club, and that's a very relevant card in terms of Diego Sanchez's kit. Aces and tens, king kicker, and the nut flush draw. One can't blame him for reaching for chips. Yeah, and you know, this bet is designed to get value from worse, you know, worse tens, of course. Um, some kind of spade that feels attached. For now, though, you know, two kings, it's, you never like to see when someone's betting into multiple players with cards that can hurt you, but, uh, I can't really imagine him wanting to fold this right now. He actually has the best of it. <coughs> Board pairing nine on the end. The nine doesn't rate to be a card of concern for either of these guys as played. Yeah, I'd agree with that. You wouldn't expect 9x to bet the turn. Probably not even calling a turn bet as well. For Diego, you know, he's got actually pretty good showdown value here with aces and tens king kicker. You know, it's not crossing his mind to turn his hand into a bluff. We'll check. Double peek. Double check those cards on the board. Yeah. Make sure he's seeing what he's seeing. <coughs> but obviously, if we were up against aces full, we would expect to see a bet. Maybe from time to time, the spades are now concerned and shut down. Yeah. that That's what I would be afraid of. Was I wouldn't expect ace X to check to me now, but I could see how two spades would be worried with the double paired board. Uh, I'm not trying to bloat the pot. So check. Nicely played. Very much so. There's Le Francois. Keeping things clean out there. Playing under the French banner. You know we're not far from Paris, Randy, here in London. Shall we go? You can even realistically make a day trip out of it. How, how long does it take to fly there? That's like an hour. Okay. Can you drive there? Yeah, through the channel. You can also take the Eurostar. Can you boat there? <laughs> I believe you could even boat there. Okay. And what are we going to do when we get to Paris? Because we can have... We're going to fall in love, Randy. <laughs> We're going to fall. <laughs> you want to go to the lock bridge and put a lock up. So you already know. Yes, I do know. About the romance that is Paris. I really don't want to be romantic with you, though, if I had a choice. Randy? That's a shared sentiment. Okay. Just you suggested For comedic it. effect. Well, maybe it'll be like a bromance. Maybe, you know, it doesn't have to get weird. Okay. Seidel making things. Have some croissants. A little weird for Mahmoud. He's got the side card, mystery. 875. How about that? 
for Seidel. Not flush draw, open ender. Yeah, usually you get one or the other. He somehow hit both of them. Mm -hmm. Nice spot to put in a multi-barrel. Lots of equity, of course. Apply maximum pressure to the one pair type holdings. 2K to start things off. A grinder. I thought they, they like read and then you can do you can put them. I or think it just didn't quite take enough time to and if you leave it just gonna take two or three seconds, that should be enough time to start. Understood. Thank you. Thanks. Easy check fold apparently for the yeah. Yeah, it's just presumed unpaired Jack X. Just want to one step back real fast. We're not going to Paris, right? That I can't confirm nor deny that, Randy. Maybe we will go to Paris. Okay. Okay. Are you into it? I am a little bit, but you know, I need to see if my schedule is <laughs> open. <laughs> we can make time for you. <laughs> well, given that we've got a whopping 15 events on the slate coming to you each and every day here from the JW Grosvenor house with streaming coverage of all of it wire to wire. I suspect we aren't going to have enough time, but that's quite all right. That's all right. We got good stuff here. What, what, what can we do in London and maybe in there? Oh, oh, we can do some things in London. Okay, let's do it. Deuce five suited looking so to do some things to these Ooh. two queens. <laughs> and how about that for a flop pair and a flush draw? The type of kit that often likes to get frisky by Francois. Yeah, an extremely strong piece, of course, with that pair. And a nice texture in the sense that it's often that his opponent has just got two overs that completely whiff. Eight. Uh, a sizable C-bet here, 8K into 10.5. It does change their approach Pascal might take. He might feel the bigger sizing is a bit polarized. Of course, regardless, whatever line he takes here with the deuce five is certainly welcome, whether it's check raise or check call. I do like the check call. It, you know, you hit a flush, your opponent on some like over cards too, and your opponent might barrel away or hit it. The king is obviously troublesome, but for both players. Second check out of Le Francois, who is unimproved. <laughs> Wouldn't fault Haxton to still fire away for value, but he might not follow through for river bet if he does. 14K. At this point, when you check call to flop with deuce five suited, you probably wouldn't be start starting to raise now on a card that is more advantageous to your opponent. It's still reasonable to do so, but uh, you tend to call a bit more in this spot. And if you're holding like a big combo draw, you tend to check raise a little bit more with the uh, non-showdown versions of it. So check call we go. Pot grows to 54,500, and how about that for a dynamite river as the board stays clean for the two queens and they improve to a set. Don't think Ike's too worried about the 10 jack business. Maybe some backdoor spades from time to time, and we do unblock that holding. Yeah, so he would fear the spades more than the jack 10 because jack 10 would. Um, probably consider a, an aggressive action on the turn just given still a high card type holding. The 30k bet here designed to attack the king x of diamonds that would check call to flop. He knows it's hard for his opponent to be holding two pairs. They might raise a turn like king nine. 
King Queen near impossible given he's got two queens in hand. <coughs> Lays it down. Fun said. Nice pick up there for Haxton. That pot could have been a little bit bigger had Mahmoud had some different ideas about how to go about his business. And despite losing that one, he is sitting with 320K roughly in the black on the session, as is Eric Seidel, only two players in that situation. Treading water is most of the rest of the field, with the exception, of course, of Henrik Hecklin, who ended up on the wrong end of that big altercation with Seidel, folding a winner. This six is full. This music normally comes, I get like PTSD with like a promo of some sort, but. Uh, Did you notice the transition of the music? Like halfway through, you were changing the names or like exciting music for this player. Yeah. Exciting that Henrik lost his stack. Are we getting curveballs thrown at us from production, perhaps? Well, Unclear. 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 Couple of nines here in the small blind. Three better call, both viable options. Cut off open, obviously, from time to time. Can be a bit out of line. I feel like calling is nice in a sense that it's less tricky post-flop on how to maneuver when you don't hit a set. <coughs> of course, the downside is your opponent might bluff you off of your pair. Queen 6-5 board. Le Francois, only one over card to contend with. The texture not exactly picante for Sanchez. Picante. Randy. When, I see, when I hear the word picante, I just think of like salsa. I don't know why. Paste Spicy? picante? Spicy? Yeah. Isn't that a brand? In it's salsa? also just a Spanish word. So what does it mean? Spicy? Yeah. Okay. Teach me more. No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you should have said non Spanish. It would have been it's perfect. It's just no. <laughs> oh. Okay. Gracias. <laughs> De nada, Randy. Le Francois, maybe thinking merci with the gut shot straight draw being delivered on the turn and the check back from Sanchez. He feels comfortable enough to fire. I'm just thinking you really thought he. To think thank you for the little gut shot. Like, don't you think you say thank you when you hit the set of nines, maybe? See, for someone like you who clearly lacks gratitude, <laughs> <laughs> maybe you need to hit the gut shot or a set. But for those of us who see the world through a rosier lens, Randy, simply the delivery of an undercard gut shot producing eight might be adequate. For a merci. Now, and note, I didn't say I merci beaucoup. Yeah, just like merci. Right yeah. Okay. We've got a little bit too much ego. <laughs> <laughs> Randy, come on. Don't be facetious. We know you don't. <laughs> Why did you do that in French? <laughs> <laughs> Pocket tens for Sanchez. Considerably better kit than the ace deuce, which found the bin. Opens once more here. She opts for a 3x open from the hijack. Not sure if that is of importance. Ace deuce of clubs is very playable for Juan Pardo. Henrik's not folding just yet, though, so maybe there's some mystery card connectivity. Ace deuce suited. For Pardo, what's he got on his mind? A flat. Two 
three players to the flop, 15K in the middle. And a set of tens on a very coordinated and wet board for Diego Sanchez. Yeah, really nice um, board for him with his set of tens is that your opponents, when they continue, you know, like they, they've got a decently strong piece that can pay off multiple streets, whether it's in the form of like king, queen, queen, jack, or even like some two pairs. And he doesn't have to worry about the ace, queen too much. A lot of ace, queens like the three bet preflop. But just gets it done. A little sad, I'm sure. I don't know. When the board's that wet, feels like... You're the worried type, right? You see that little <sighs> bit of action. You're like, all, right, yeah. all my chips, so they don't see that river card. No, Ollie, we need to play no, I didn't say whatever all my <laughs> chips. <laughs> got bottom got, set. I've Who's got two aces. You? It's the main event bubble. Oh, let me just go all in 1,200 big blinds and make sure no one calls me with two kings. No, that's not... That, that's you. What a guy with that's aces does in that situation, is it? Don't you just, you like, You always fold? hear those years when people just fold, open fold two aces, pre. Like, don't know what they're doing. You're that guy. <laughs> that's the vibe I get. Listen, man, I don't play tournaments. If it's the difference between me being able to etch my name into the archives as someone who cashed the main event of the World Series or who stone bubbled, you know which side of it I'd rather be on. And it's a bit safer if you have chips to just sit back. You know what I would do on the stone bubble? I'd go to the arcade. I do like the arcade. Can I join you? <laughs> Candy machines is my thing. Pocket sixes, Henrik Eklund's thing. Can I ask you one thing, though? Although six is full, not his thing, <laughs> as we learned earlier. Quick question, Ali. Yes, um, sir. Just before I forget. Do you, have you ever cashed a tournament in your life? Yeah. Okay. I think I got two caches. My hand and mop. I've only played, like, in terms of recorded I'm gonna take a look. tournaments. I, oh, I was going to ask you to recall it for me, but you might be too embarrassed to tell me what results they are. Seidel. Bottom pair and the gut shot. Wow. At least he got a good photo of you. Embarrassed enough not to fire. Hecklin. <laughs> looking to tell a story. 3,000. You cashed mm. commentators week. Does this even count as tournaments? <clears throat> Jesus. Apparently it does. Back to the poker. <laughs> <laughs> With pleasure. Seidel peeling one off, understandably, as the pot grows to 15,500. Heads up against the Dane. He knuckles once more and welcomes Ooh. Seth Davies. That's a tough customer. Mm -hmm. Hearts get there, queen pairs. Hecklin was all done with it from the turn and beyond. Just keep getting the best of Henrik Hecklin. Yeah, Seidel's had his number. I'm just kind of browsing the Try and Poker Plus app a little bit. And so many new names in there. So I, you know, it's in the at least double digits for sure. <laughs> you like him? <laughs> oh, you know who's in the mix though? Phil Listen. Ivy. Oh yeah. That's a good one. For the first 10 minutes just cuz new things bother me, but I'm coming around. <laughs> Haxton sharing with us his issues with new things. <laughs> 45. Do you think he's not going to like Maria? She's something new. New to us. Not new to him. Actually, not even new to us. We've known Maria for a long time. She'll be here in the booth with Henry Kilbane after Randy and I step aside later on today. Juan Pardo not looking to step aside with a suited connector on the button. Understandably makes it 4,500 to go. And Seidel with the black needles. Three bets to 16,000, which creates an issue for these two fives of Ike Haxton in the big. 
Yeah, he was very excited to get involved here. We'll have to lay this one down. Three bed in front of him. 10-9 suited. Very nice hand in position. You know, of course, he's not always up against aces. Could be up against some unpaired ace-kings, ace-queens. Something he can outmaneuver. Lots of stack to play for, of course, early in the tournament. Roughly 150 big blinds to start things off. So Pardo will be heads up as Ike understandably folded those fives and will be relieved to not see a five on this board. But relief is not going to be that which Eric Seidel experiences as he's got an over pair against top two, Randy. Yes, pretty big trouble for him here. I mean, it's a type of texture where he wants to try to extract value from those Broadway gutties. The 10Xs, there's so many hands I could name. For now though, it is a 15K bet into 35. Juan Pardo sees that they're playing rather deep. Perhaps he raises to try to get value from these over pairs now. You know, there's a lot of bad turn cards that could fall, whether it's in the form of a club, the jacks, things that just scare these over pairs. I do strongly approve of this raise. And with so many draws out there, obviously, Seidel recognizing that with some frequency, this raise in position is going to be attached to one of those sorts of holdings, as opposed to something like two pair or a set, which have him beat. And two pair or set is a sh rather large part of Juan Pardo's range. Um, looks like he is going to just look to get this in and just an amazing spot here for top two at this point your opponent's put in so much of a stack he's never folding let's just push the rest in there and hopefully hold with the 70 percent favorite equity are we simply targeting jacks through kings look the guy raised to 125k that's so he's got 80k back he's never folding really Let's get it in here and now then, says Seidel, and he's going to have five outs for the time being as a little cooler works its way to this feature table. 465K chip pot. And unless Seidel can improve, he's going to be left with just 155K. Now a nine on the turn means the four will no longer work. As you see it wiped from the board and it's two outs one time for Seidel, and the Jack of Diamonds will deliver a healthy pot Juan Pardo's way. Can hardly believe his good fortune, it looks like. Eyebrows raised. I mean, it's always relieving to double up such a, a deep stack early in the tournament for Seidel, though, you know, nothing wrong. He did have two aces, right? He still has a <laughs> clearly a monster hand of a club backup. Oh, well, Welcome step to away. The Overall chip lead, Juan Pardo, as we do step away. We find Sweden's Robert Flink with Queen Ooh. 10 suited, top pair on a Queen 7 3 board. Tim Adams, pocket nines. It's a tough table. Love me some Robert Flink. Haven't seen him in a while at a Triton stop, but uh, good to see him back. For bet and call in front of you, two nines don't start to look too good. Here behind, you got two outs. Dong Wu Ko, the only caller, backdoor clubs, and a pair of sevens. Great. Turn as a four of hearts. So in this hand, Robert Flink raised the pre flop under the gun and check to the player in position, Dong Wu Ko. So he played good. rather passively. His queen's a bit disguised. And you can see Dong Wu is He's still attacking home. here with this king how seven. Far, how long is it to get him? 56K, uh, it feels like uh, he's bluffing this, he's trying to attack the pocket pairs lower than queen that would check call in this manner. May have a bit of a merge as well. Sure. Excuse me. It's a lot of chips in here. Excuse me. 
Can I have my green tea, please? Sorry? Green tea. Green tea, yeah. There's a spike here. Mm -hmm. There's a spike here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Flink will make the call with the best hand. Four to a straight on the board. Not sure that 6x is a concern in this 205k pot. Yeah, this, this pot is massive. I wonder if it was potentially three bet pre flop. Regardless, though, the way it's run out is rather tough for both players to kind of put more chips in there. Like, if you had a value hand in Dong Wu's co spot, like, you'd be a little bit afraid of the four liner. But let's see what he does. Triton Newcomer. I don't think he thinks the 7x is ever good, but doesn't think it will get through. So a shutdown from Ko with the sevens, says Flink. Able to pull that one in, and you mentioned Robert Flink. Haven't seen him at a Triton in a while. Well, we haven't seen Dong Wu Ko before, but he did qualify for this event, believe it or not, in a $54 <laughs> secret bounty event <laughs> online. Say, say How do you like say, that? Say it again. $54, Randy. $54. Oh, yeah. And it was a mystery? Is that what you said? Yeah. So he just busted some random guy, received a package to come out well, to the Triton London stop. If you have a like me, you got to... My guess is that his envelope contained... Yeah, for sure. ...a trip to London. That's a nice one. Unfortunately for him, his table contains oh, some real sorry. killers. <laughs> Look at that one, two, three, with Adams, Chidwick, well, so and Kisa Chikolu. They're on my sleeve. I'm just yeah. like, I'm like <laughs> enjoy a trite in London. He's <laughs> <laughs> the best players in the world. <laughs> you know, spend your chips and then go have some fish and chips. All right. There's another new player, Cedric. Name I can't pronounce, but. Uh, Schwaterly is my guess. Okay. <coughs> Flink, ace nine on the heels of having picked up that pot. Defends is big and flops the gut shot and backdoor nuts. Spade draw up against top pair as the pre-flop razor, Orpin. A little bit checked over to him with 11-5 in the middle. Tricky spot here of king eight, you know, top pair, but it's kind of quite connected. Looks like he's opting to fire. Hope for no check raises. Ace of spades in hand. Not a strong draw, though. Looking for the jack. Yeah, a big question here for Orpin is, do we start to check now? Just trying to play a bit pot control. Just bet the turn and target the lower pairs like Queen Jack, Jack 10, and check back river unimproved. Looks like he will check, looking for a safe river card, and that is not one of them. Rather dangerous, and Robert Flink might attack here, trying to represent the 10x of a, a big size, because he's against an early position raise, so... <laughs> He has to realize that it won't show down his ace nine too well, whereas the late position rate's got more random offsuit low cards. And I like the size he's going for. It's very hard for Orpin to even call just King X. But does make the call. And does so correctly, as Flink did his best with the ace high, but ran into the tough customer in Kisuchikolu. 
Or been a two-time Triton title winner, 5.6 million plus in career Triton earnings. Mm -hmm. Six caches. Picked up his second title out in Vietnam. When you say Orpin, I just think of the guy who luck boxed the mystery bounty, you know? <laughs> he won the big prize. Uh, was it the last stop? The one before, I can't remember. What are we talking about? The mystery. When you, you're talking about Orpin's achievements, but yeah, you didn't mention yeah. his mystery bounty oh, achievement. Oh, right. He pulled with one envelope only. The 250. The 250K. He really let the wind out of the room that day. That he, wasn't nice. He, he did, did it really early. Just ruined your show. Yeah, yeah no, he, he was happy. Yeah, but he turned to me and he said, how many envelopes do I need to win the 250K? And I was like confused. I said, just one, Orpin. He goes, yeah, that's right. Like and, he pulls it. Trick. <laughs> and he pulls it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's a bit of a free roll. If you don't hit it, so what? <laughs> Jean Noël Torel. Enjoys paying us a visit on the Triton Tour, time 15. to time. Yeah, he doesn't really like to miss the the London stop so close to home, and you know, obviously an avid fan of poker. Thank you. Gets three bet. Yeah, probably doesn't enjoy <coughs> this experience quite as much as he does hanging out at a Triton. Enough, enough c connectivity here of the 9-7 suited with deep stacks. You wouldn't be defending with shallow, but with mm. this, 176 behind, very <coughs> reasonable. King 10-5. Check. No Check. connection for either player. A 10 of diamonds interaction, though, for JNT, and you see Look at that. Flink took his one shot at hopefully winning at preflop. Straddling the five, but far from enough for his taste. That's a big play there, just nine high. Hmm? You'll eat my sushi. Well, you and I have had a front row seat to JNT's <laughs> operations on more than one occasion, and table ten. they are table very ten. entertaining, is a fair way to describe them. Distracted. <coughs> This pouch came in handy. Is Chidwick being pulled to a different table for rebalancing? Is that what we have on our hands? I swear I heard so many sigh of reliefs at this table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. No doubt about it. Don't mind if you do. Absolutely not. Adams limping the small blind. Stevie able to escape the big. So Orpin checks back, 10-9 offsuit. And the flop comes king 4-3 as ace high turns into a pair. Backdoor wheel and nut spades. Yeah, nice spot for Timothy Adams with his hand holding. He knows that the four is rather vulnerable to rather kind of bet it himself if he was holding kind of a higher pair may check less chances of random cards to kind of take you out a quick one easy pickup for the canadian tim adams Adams with one Triton title, 7.3 million plus in career Triton earnings across nine caches. It was a very important cache, a title. Free and new one. It was the No Limit main. Back in Jeju in 2019, oh, prior to the pandemic. I've been playing 
live sense. Is your wife keen on settling down? I mean, taking that step. I mean. King Jack here for Dong Wuko. Taking on Libravetsky. Different life. On the 5 5 6 board. <laughs> Much more in favor of Andre. Two overs, gut shot. He would have fins out. Uh, Co checking with the flow, facing like the sea bet. Oh. Should be fairly straightforward uh, release, no and power. indeed it is. It's funny. Yeah. He doesn't play much. Back over to our other feature table. Unwind after playing or right on a flight. Hey, should we get a wash and stuff? Looks like Henrik Eklund going to be part of the rebalancing efforts in the room. I, I can do that. The way over here, it's just always sleep the entire time. The way home, it's always awake the entire time. What's it? Do you remember what it's called? This documentary? I'll, I'll ask you. I'll text you. I'll probably find That sounds like good. Uh, unwind. Aces for Nikolai Mamut. Facing the 4500 trip open from Haxton, who had to put two fives into the muck 14. not long ago. Here, a different proposition as he's able to open from the hijack. But 14. again, a three bet. What he's having to contend with. Yeah, and we've actually seen Nikolai Mamut um, three bet at a pretty high frequency at our feature table. <coughs> two fives going to come along. Axton, not afraid to play a pot out of position. Should be. <laughs> he saved threes up against top set as matters get worse for the two fives. Does have spades and backdoor wheel prospects, hence the 5% equity. So with top set, you tend to see like really small bets. Obviously you hit it so hard, occasionally you check. Haxton contemplating maybe a raise from time to time. He's got the little backdoor spades. Uh, yeah, he's going to check raise. He's targeting these kind of hands that, you know, the pocket pair is lower than ace. Of course, the unpaired like broadways that would attack. So actually is a great spot here. You're holding top set and your opponent check raises you. You're like, well, this guy has to be bluffing or he's occasionally in some kind of lower set. I mean, Haxton really asking a big question of Mamut here, who's three bet on the button, obviously is going to contain ace X with some decent frequency. Test comes back positive as Mamut hangs in there. And now suddenly Haxton with the wheel gutty a path to victory, but is he going to be able to see this river as he has bloated this one to 80k already? So I believe that Haxton, when he decided to check raise the flop, would likely give up on most turns, but with the wheel card or a spade dropping off, it's kind of like enough equity to continue with the follow through. Right. I'd be pretty surprised if he slows down here, especially his check raise from 8500 to 23k is not particularly large. So I can see how some pocket pairs lower than the ace that might see back kings, queens, and jack would still call check raise from time to time, given the small sizing. And he can obviously blow those hands out rather easily. But let's see if he wants to follow through. Sixty-five. 
five. It's a big bet here, 65K. The big question here for Mamut is, do I raise to kind of charge these spade hands? If I just call, will two spades follow through with one more barrel on breakouts? Because you obviously want to extract value, the most value you can. Haxton firing 65 into 80. He's got himself in a little trouble. A lot of trouble, frankly. Given how bloated the pot is pre-flop and flop and turn, and what they've got behind, I don't think Mamut needs to be worried about, oh, some kind of spade dropping off and I lose action against like two eights. I think he can still get action from his eights and threes regardless if a, kind of a scary card drops off. Would do I order two if I want a coffee? So I do like that he's just okay. following through with a call here because his opponent likely has very little equity and can still get value from the big hands. And from very little equity to none at all as the 10 hits the river. I would love that. That would be perfect. And now... Haxton can certainly get ambitious at this SPR 260 into 210 if he thought he was up against a big ace, just one pair. Maybe we can get it through, but as it stands, a virtual impossibility. Only deuce five beats Mahmoud, and that doesn't rate to be the kind of kit that Haxton opened with, called a three bet with, and then check raised the flop with, so he knows he's nutted. Snapped and off. Yeah, Haxton gets busted. Yeah, very nicely played of just that call on the turn, allowing, knowing your opponent, right? You know your opponent's a type that potentially could just blast away of 2-5, mm -hmm. and you don't want those hands to fold yeah. despite having some equity, but very little, as you saw one there. And Haxton, sure. to jam, expected the one-pair type holdings, even the ace-kings, yeah. ace-queens, to yeah. just uh, drop it. I mean, obviously, ace is such a specific holding for Mahmoud to have in that situation. And the fact that the three-bet came in from the button against a late position open kind of helps to include a lot broader range than well, simply that. What's important, too, Ali, is that the other cards that were out there don't hit a lot of the two pairs that your opponent could have. Like, say there was a queen, ace-queen, or ace-king, and ace-jack out there. Haxton might not follow through thinking there's more of a calling range against him with top two. So with the kind of lower cards, it, you know, it's just you don't expect the ace-eight suited to be three-betting. They kind of flat a little bit more. Sure. With that pot, Nikolai Mahmoud becomes the overall chip leader in the early going here in this 25K GG Super Millions 8 max. Over 600K. That's good for over 300 bigs. Distant I'm second is Juan trip. Pardo, 483K, of course. He's the man that doubled through Seidel. So been some big pots here at our feature table, both of which have produced top two stacks in their wake. Yeah, see. massive pots. My players have lost like 150 big blinds apiece, mm -hmm. right, the Seidel hand as well. Pascal's down to 100k stack. So Mahmoud putting the newfound chips to work promptly with Jack-10 offsuit, picking up LeFrancois from the button with Ace-4 suited. Paired rainbow board. Nikolai deliberates. I would think the ace four clubs would probably peel here in position. You've got that little deuce um, for backdoor wheel, you backdoor clubs. You're expecting a high frequency C bet on this board texture. You still beat the broadways that would fire away or the suited connectors that just completely whiff. Price is good, does call. So to the turn we go. King of Hearts as an open ender obtained by Mahmoud, but not the equity that LeFrancois sought. For Mahmoud, a great card is this king. He can apply a lot of pressure on all pocket pairs, lowered in queen. 
He can, of course, fold out the ace highs. If he gets hero called by, say, like nines, eights, he's got, of course, the backup with open and a straight draw. Eighteen K the bet. Yeah, and Nikolai Mamu has really just been playing really well so far. Rich get richer. Always curious to see how fresher faces respond to good fortune such as that which mm. Mamut is experiencing right now. Again, no allegations that the man is new to poker. Obviously, he knows what he's doing out there. But sometimes... Now you're out here on the big stage that is a Triton event. Granted, a 25K buy-in. Not the highest price point on offer, but certainly the type that's going to move the needle for the ma vast majority of people in their poker career and find yourself rubbing elbows with the best and the brightest in the game and formidable opposition. Some might be tempted to kind of sit back and get snug, but far too early in the event to get away with that. Yeah, this is not one of those spots where you just, oh, I doubled up. Let me just fold to the final table. No, definitely I not happening. You know what? I guess the point or the thing that I'm more curious about is we see LeFrancois picking a heck of a time to three bet. Ace four suited, running into this ace king open from Sanchez under the gun. Is more associated with is somebody going to pick up a big stack and then really get speedy? You know, there are a lot of players who do that, right? They yeah. get excited, and, you know, they know they've, you know, happened to make some plays. It doesn't work out. It doesn't matter. They, It's just kind of like extra chips they've got to spend. Right. Um, in the meantime, Ace King is going to push some more chips in there, I imagine. Pascal wouldn't be able to do too much with Ace 4 suited. Start to hand about 50 big blinds just under. You know, Pascal flat called. The previous hand of ace four clubs opted to go for a dip different line preflop. Still bad. Given the sizing he's up against and what he's got behind, he shouldn't be thinking this is a four bet bluff and thinking that he can push this in. I suppose he's calculating whether he might have the odds to continue. Thirty-seven thousand total, twenty-four thousand more on request, and he will let it go. So nice decision there for Le Francois Sanchez with a nifty pickup. Bringing it back over to the other feature now. We're in the seat previously occupied by Stephen Chidwick. We find one Thomas Bethel. And in Orpen Kisichokoglu's seat, we find two Black Kings. He opens to 4,500. Customers, that'll be a little bit disappointing. You mean you're not scared of me? I think better, I would call. <laughs> Only hand I've got. Thank 
4,500. 4,500. Once more from Orpin, but unlike last time, it's not going to be customer free as Dong Wu Ko, the $54 mystery bounty qualifier. Three bets to 13,000. Ace King. Big slick, you know what it is? It's an all-in type hand. 239K for Adams with the AK-47. He's in three bet in front of him. 33.5. I wish he made it 47K after you said that. <laughs> Just like, was like, come on, do it. Instead, the 33.5 is going to be enough to put the threes into the muck quickly. But how will Dong Wu Ko respond? At this point, this is just, let's just run it. We've, I've played, what, 35 antes, a little bit more, actually. I see a fortune is on his side with these two queens. Using a time bank, Randy. Yeah, a little bit surprised, but... Uh, Tactic that gets employed not always because we don't know what we're going to do, but... Sometimes to make it look like we're uncertain. It's only got another 59K back. And of course, we presume it's going to be shoved in there. And once it is, a snap call from Adams and a classic race on our hands. Oh, he's really thinking about this. Like, uh, I mean, look, these are stakes he doesn't normally play. You say he qualified through a $54 mystery bounty. Like, you can't really be laying down these hands against this caliber of players, especially if the snack size you're playing. You don't think. It must be crossing his mind, I imagine. Two time bank seems a little excessive, but regardless, he gets to the right decision. Two queens in there. You could see a little bit of a grimace on his face once he got snap called after the all-in. Ace King does feel like perhaps one of the better case scenarios. But very vulnerable are the two queens here as Ko is outflopped. King, nine, six, two diamonds, a deflating situation, and one that he recognizes puts him in a bad way as the turn fails to render assistance in a 152K chip pot. Can he find a two-outer? No, he can't. And that'll do it for the online qualifier, Dong Wu Ko. As Adams showers it. Pocket threes. Pocket threes. Oh. oh, who's that in the foreground? Santos Suvarna. Is he going to find his way to this table? It looks that way, doesn't it? Have you won in a tournament? Which one? It's right then. Uh, one. You only won. Difficult getting on the screens. It's too many. Yeah. Kuhn got like seven. Yeah. He, he's the last. I think in Vietnam he won one, and then in Cyprus he won two. Oh. Oh. There. It wasn't difficult for Santosh to win this very seven. event last stop. Yeah, the reigning champ limps in with Ace Jack upon his arrival, playing under the. Indian banner, which he is oh so proud to be doing. The only title holder on the Triton Tour of that descent. Career Triton earnings of 2.6 million plus. Seven caches under his belt. Oh. Well, he did limp 
very early position of Ace Jack, isolated by Robert Flank. Hey. You, you know, know Robert Flank's back, actually. Right? Yeah, I can, uh, can't see. Flink's been missing the last few tours, so he might not actually be aware of how Santosh plays. And he is going to be aware of the fact that he has hit a pair of nines on a 10 high rainbow board, and that jumps in front of this ace jack as Santosh limp defended. Now picks up a gut shot on the turn as Flink elected to check back, Randy. Nothing wrong checking back these kind of middling hands. You're not looking to put a lot in there. It looks like Robert Flink is trying to deny some equity here with this small bet. Gets paid off by worse so far. And the jack is good, but it is rather dangerous. Four-liner out there looking to fade uh, against a player who might be holding a queen in this spot. Robert Flink's got to be aware the nine is not good too often, but can he get a better hand to fold? He thinks so. Wow, 50K. That's an overbet on a four-liner. You don't see that too often. What an awkward spot it puts Suvarna in. Obviously, it's 50 into a pot of just 29. Suvarna capable of finding a big call, by the way. He gets a little curious from time to time, but not on this occasion. Miss me some Robert Flank. I know he likes to fire away at pots and just trying to win them outright and gets it done there. Flink 1.77 million plus in career Triton earnings across two caches. Last visit he paid us was right here in London back in 2019 where he finished sixth in the 50K pound eight max no limit event. And then in Jeju earlier that same year, he picked up a second place in the 1 million Hong Kong buy-in short deck event. Yeah, it's definitely one of those guys that knows how to play both the no limit and short deck. Tobias Schwecht here, binking a six. It is a blind versus blind spot. A little value coming. Actually, a full pot, though. Really trying to polarize his range. Mm -hmm. Pardo. With the jack. Has the best hand. Schwecht thought about it, but in the end, looking at that texture, 10 jack, couple of kings, decides it's time to go. Well, today's event is brought to you by Poker Stake, the official staking partner of Triton, the ultimate platform for staking and professional poker players around the globe. With no fees on any purchases, Poker Stake is the go-to platform for anyone looking to support their favorite player's journey and celebrate the rewards of big victories. Check them out at PokerStake.com today and stake your champion. You know, the World Series of Poker main event just wrapped up. And mm -hmm. I feel as though there may have been some pieces that were bought and sold. Poker Stake's the, the place to do so, right? Mm -hmm. Make it easy. We like easy. You think aces are easy to play? Uh, sometimes, but so far they haven't worked out great for Seidel. In fact, the reason he is well off the 250K starting stack size is because that man, Juan Pardo, who has opened here again with a suited connector as he did on the prior occasion where he took the big bite out of Seidel, has opened to 8,000. Now the three bet from Seidel. Queen Jack of Clubs, small blind versus big blind. You know, of course, the history with the two aces before. Very reasonable hand to take one out of position. Nice thing about Queen Jack of Clubs, too, is that if you're up against the ace, kings are three, being, of course, your cards are live. Well, he's going to be out of position on this occasion, Randy. My apologies. Not Unlike last bit. time where he was <laughs> in position and... Here he is behind on a King Jack A two spade board where the overpair and backdoor nut flush draw materialize for Seidel. Just 
second pair for Juan, 48 in the middle. Yeah, nice spot here for Seidel. Looking to extract value. Bit of connectivity in the sense that his opponent can easily have some kind of piece that has to pay off for now. Queen Jack qualifies as one of those holdings mid pair. K, bet and called. No improvement for Pardo. Yeah, really nice uh, turn for Saito because he can still represent. He can represent even more hands that might multi-barrel with his heart. Backdoor hearts incoming. 45K. So about half his stack of this bet. So Juan right now is trying to decide is ace-queen multi-barreling here, these kind of spades and hearts. Does give it up correctly. So some kind of rake back here for Eric Seidel with the two aces. Yeah, maybe a little bit of a smaller sizing manages to retain the queen jack. But as it were, one can't fault him for hunting 45K, failing to come up with... Some of those chips that used to belong to him that sit in front of Juan Pardo. Overall second in the field right now. Third after losing that one, Robert Flink sliding into second. Snowmen, is that what we call them? Two yeah. eights? Yeah, red ones on this occasion for Pardo, who flats the Tobias Schwecht cutoff open. The German min raising with the queen nine suited, dominated by Haxton, who, of course, comes along with king nine. Price is right. Ace king deuce board, and Haxton um, flops the best of it. Of course, the ace is. Always a concern. Schweck does interact with the king of spades. Yeah, the, the backdoor spades, the backdoor Broadway draw, of course. His opponent's flatting from those positions. Also, you know, waits to not have the, the bigger hold, bigger cards as often. So hopefully we take it down. Can multi-barrel some turns in rivers. King nine. Enough of a hand to continue. It's a third pot bet. Really hoping to improve or just kind of get some kind of check down. Let's see here as Axton checks once more. Ooh, look at and that. Backdoor trips was not what we had on our bingo card here, but bingo indeed for Schwecht. I don't think Haxton's going to want to bet this king nine. Just can't really get caught by worse unless he's just trying to block to try to prevent his opponent from setting a bigger price. So the big question here with the queen nine trip queens is He's most likely going to be able to extract value from the ace X. Which size can he get that to pay off and rather just leave the king X alone? Twenty five in the middle, twenty five bet, full pot. You see Haxton scratching his head. 
Yeah, Haxton obviously did not expect uh, to see such a large sizing. Especially from a hand like Ace X. Yeah, so the big question is would Ace X bet this way? It's possible if they're trying to blow off like the similar type hand holding. But it's polarizing, and in that way, it actually might earn a call from King Nine. And you see Haxton. Polarize is good. Paying off. Things not really going his way as Schwecht. A very fortunate run out there as the players will head out to the first break of the day. 634,000 at the feature table for Israel's Nikolai Mahmoud. 254 big blinds. And we come back to the 1K 2500 level on the back end of this break here in the 8 Max 25K GG Super Millions event, the kickoff event at the 2023 Triton Super High Roller Series here in London. Ali Najad back with you at the desk with Randy Liu. Guys just getting their feet wet. Haxton looking a bit off form maybe. Ran in with the pocket fives to the aces of Mahmoud. That the pot that put him into the chip lead. Not often we see Ike set to dispense mode. Yeah, and, you know, like, chips haven't been uh, flying his way and, you know, correctly. Um, but, you know, he made that big stance with the pocket fives. He felt like he had to follow through once he picked up the extra equity on the turn. And then, like, if he feels strongly that the ace-kings and ace-queens and ace-jacks are going to lay down to a pot size shove, then, of course, that's a, a great play. But, you know, we play poker. It's a set of ranges, right? Sometimes you run into the top end, sometimes the bottom. Um, as long as the play he makes, he deems, is kind of the most EV against the whole range there. Now, I know that this is going to seem a little bit rich, and I don't even know that I fully believe it. It's just speculation. But do you think, especially for guys like Haxton, who are accustomed to playing massive buy-in events, when they step into the arena and they know that it's like a 25k buy-in event, that maybe there's some experimentation from time to time, a willingness to tinker with an idea that at higher stakes they would be less apt to do? We know that these guys don't really think about the money, and that's part of why they're successful. But do you, do you suspect that that might be the case? It is something that crosses the mind of some, uh, even the greatest players out there, like, oh, well, I'm playing a little bit smaller. Maybe I can bully them around a bit more. I don't know if it applies to Haxton specifically. He kind of strikes me as that guy that's just always making the most plus EV decision. But I do see where you're coming from, where, uh, you know, I, I even find myself do that from time to time. Right. I play, like, uh, a smaller game than normal. I think I can, like, be a little bit more aggressive, see if it works out, maybe try some new strategies. Um, I don't think it applied to Haxton here, but I think it's a great point that you made. Yeah, definitely. And I would imagine that perhaps if it doesn't apply to Haxton, it may apply to some people that we'll see out there in the field. Fewer and further between, one might imagine. So overall chip lead, as we've touched on, belongs to Nikolai Mahmoud. 634000 for him. Robert Flink, the man who didn't visit us since 2019, where he was at Jeju and he was at London right here back in the saddle. Second place for the Swede. Third, rounding things out, the Spaniard, Juan Pardo. 444000 for Pardo. 460 for Robert Flink. Uh, let's take a look now. 72 players are still in the running right now. Average stack, 254K, 101 bigs. As we take a look at the Triton Poker Plus app, first occasion on which we're going to be doing that for you. Dong Wu Ko has not rebought. Obviously, when you get in for $54 on a satellite might think that that's not in the cards for you. So a disappointing situation for him to be the first player knocked down. Haxton, 27,000, just 11 bigs. But well within the rebuy period are we right now in this kickoff event. Uh, Ten levels he'll be able to uh, rebuy. And then when we come back from the dinner break later on today, that's when uh, registration will be closing. So I would imagine the field is going to continue to grow. You think some late reg action is going to be happening? Some jet lag guys are going to yawn, wake up wash their face and think, okay, let's go play a 25 game. Of, of course they are. And there's a lot of guys who aren't even in the field that uh, frequent all of our Triton stops. They're, it's a smaller bind. They're thinking, well, I don't need to register right away. I'll just play relax and then, you know, jump in at the end when, um, you know, blinds are strength uh, quite a bit. But yeah. um, look, there's going to be a lot of more guys. You know, Paul Paul hasn't even joined yet. You know he's getting in there. Maybe. He's Maybe. getting in All right, there. I he know. He never misses miss. a Triton event, <laughs> and we never miss an opportunity to give you guys a break alongside the players here. Don't go anywhere. When we return to London and the JW Grosvenor House, continuing coverage of this kickoff event, the 25K GG Super Millions. Keep it close. <laughs> GG 
Take your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Practice against GTO on all your devices. Study any situation from pre-flop to river, we've got it all. Upload your hand histories to uncover your biggest leaks. We have hundreds of hours of coaching from top pros, cutting edge theory articles, and custom study plans to help guide your poker journey. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. Welcome back to continuing coverage from the 2023 Triton Super High Roller Series in London. J.W. Grosvenor House Park Lane playing host to today's festivities and all that will ensue across the better part of two whole weeks. Ali Najad alongside Randy Liu left you just moments ago after the first frame in the books in the 25K GG Super Millions where we find the fresh-faced Israel's Nikolai Mamut at the top of the leaderboard gave you a peek at the Triton Poker Plus app as well. Worthy of note that this is exactly what Randy and I use to keep our bearings here in the booth and throughout the course of commentary. And it is available free to those of you at home to download and keep a firm finger on the pulse of what's going on. Yeah, it's a really nice handy app to use while actually watching the stream. You know, you can keep an eye on your favorite players and, you know, you can see like who's been busted out quickly you can actually view the hands which which is really nice right like maybe you missed out on uh how 
Isaac Haxon lost most of his chips. You right. can just click into him, go back and find a hand with a big graph distrib- um, change, right, and, and review it and, you know, learn a lot. And, in fact, a lot of the players who are out there make use of the app very regularly as they seek to kind of figure out what's happening elsewhere in the room, who's up, who's down, who's maybe on the verge of being on the stone bubble, something like that, when we get into those sorts of moments. As uh, 75 players have currently registered, we will be sending it down to 1K, 2,500K action as the blinds continue to tick up. We've got a new couple of featured tables on our hands. You got a glimpse of them as I showed you just there in the app. Dan Smith, front and center, alongside Winfred Yu. Nacho Barbero, also a presence there, and Nick Petrangelo. But the one I'm focusing on is right here, Justin Saliba, Randy, a man who's familiar to you perhaps, courtesy of his first ever attempt to secure his first ever cash when he showed up in Vietnam? You know, like, obviously he didn't do very well in Vietnam with uh, multiple entries, but uh, I found him pretty impressive. Um, there were some hands he played where he made some great calls. Uh, I recall it was against Lycolin, and he called like third pair or something. And, you know, he just shows you that he's one that's, excited to play with the best, um, not willing to deviate from his game plan just because, you know, he's playing with such good players, high stakes. Um, hopefully this uh, run of London will be good for him. I, I think he's pretty excited. I saw a tweet from him that he's here to play and should be better results this time. Yeah, I would expect he will turn things around, although you and I both know we have seen some incredible droughts and a man at that table with him, Nick Petrangelo, knows about that all too well. You can go multiple stops without notching a cash. It's uh, certainly not how you want to start your Triton career, though. And turning our attention to the other feature table, of course, that is where we're going to find one Phil Ivey, who has got his hands full, courtesy of the presence of the likes of Ben Heath and Bruno Volkmann and uh, a host of other characters. Roman Hrabic is going to be the man directly to his right. Ivy just sitting on 246,000 there, so roughly just a starting stack, and nobody looks all too deep. Gomez, a couple of seats to his left, 314,000 in front of him. Now, with Phil, he's had such an interesting career arc, Randy. Obviously, we all know when he first came onto the poker scene kind of the impact that that had. But in terms of, you know, these days, uh, he's a little bit older, he's a father now, uh, showing up, playing a 25K. Once upon a time, it might have been unimaginable for him to kind of rise to that sort of occasion. But uh, here he is, and, and for me, I, I've really enjoyed seeing that kind of renewed commitment, it feels like, that he's got. Yeah, you know, right? He kind of took a break from the World Series, I believe, in some previous one, right? This one, he fired a really nice schedule, uh, played a, a lot of different events. He's you know, missed our last try and stop. As you said, you know, he had some other uh, obligations. But now here in London, ready to fire, um, even in the 25K, one of our smaller buy-ins. And um, I'm happy to see Ivy in every stop we can get him. And those obligations you speak of, the type that you're not unfamiliar with, is Randy also a papa, one that takes his daughter down to the arcade and <laughs> smashes the, what was it, the candy, candy machine? machine. <laughs> Come on, man, you must have dental insurance. You don't want you don't want to get hopped up on sugar. Come on, Randy. That's for me. Right. You know? Actually, it is for you. <laughs> I believe that. And there is your first look at the gathering at our new feature table. Barbero, 308,000, second biggest stack. Kiat Lee, present as well. Winfred, Petrangelo, Smith, and Saliba rounding things out. I will go six. He told me, he, and he played it Taiwan. Uh, he says it was wonderful. We have our own studio, our license, and actually. Queen suited, being welcomed by Smith under the gun, raising it up uh, to I don't 6K. Really, when it's in front of a player, it looks like they played. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Cool. Yeah, I was like, ah, oh, what's he doing? <laughs> He's making a big move. <laughs> Bought an off. He's four suited in the small. A customer no, with some diamond coverage. And now Nacho Bar- Bar- Barbero, who... I feel like if his bankroll has a leak, it's the Amiri store 
Yes, he has uh, multiple different items of clothing from the Mary store. No we doubt. saw from the last stop. What he doesn't have, though, is any improvement for the time being on a two-spade, two-deuce, queen high board. Does have the backdoor nut flush draw working as both he and the other ace high. Knuckle it over to Dan Smith, who has got a lovely queens up. Good kicker. Yeah, safe board. A little bit. Ace of spades in Nacho's hand, but he's out. Now, over the course of my career in the booth, Randy, I have had a deep appreciation for Dan Smith's willingness wow. to show yeah, up in a beautiful. wide variety of attire, kind of give us something to work with, some comedic fodder even from time to time. Today, he rocks a hat I've never before seen that just reads bagels. With cream cheese? Now, the think? cream cheese hat would be a love. Like, if we were to buy the bagels hat, one of yes. us should obviously have the cream cheese hat. That kind of a match made in heaven. Yeah, this is a new look. And now, is this bagels hat, like, from his favorite bagel shop? It would appear so. His side gig? On the side, it looks like some sort of bagel company branding there. Cheers. Are we losing him? But they don't want us to discuss it anymore. Uh, apparently, production, not a fan of the bagels hat. Yeah. Showers yeah. for Dan. <laughs> <laughs> He's back with the cream <laughs> cheese hat next time. <laughs> okay. We finally had something to work with. Stripped from us savagely. Of course, it's part of the rebalancing efforts here as players continue to register and new tables do crop up. Ace King. Big slick. Yeah, cropping up for Barbero. <laughs> Facing the open from Saliba's Jack-9 suited. Any chance Barbell got a discount on this hoodie is missing some of the embroidery. No, I don't know how to tell you this, Randy, but you remember when ripped jeans first showed up. And of course, my parents were saying, why are you paying more for damaged merchandise? But uh, that's the way it worked. Same story okay. on the Amiri hoodie. That hasn't changed at all. Nah. It is hijack versus small blind. Jack-9 suited, very playable. Blinds have gone up a little bit, and his stack has dwindled from starting. We'll fight. In Cyprus, too. They don't understand. They just bring you something else. Does take the lead here. Okay, okay, okay. Then bring you something else. Do you have this problem? But Ace King is actually quite a good hand to still continuation bet here. You know, you got the two overs, you got the inside straight draw, but you also have these two cards that overcards all of the pocket pairs that would defend. You know, the tens, nines, and eight sevens. These hands would clearly not want to continue against the fire. Start things off rather small, 11.5 for Justin Saliba. Middle pair back to his spades. Keep it simple, I'd imagine. Don't really want to bloat the pot with middling type hands. Justin agrees with you. Has 23,000 slide into the middle, bringing the pot to 74K, but not bringing any improvement to the ace king on the turn, which is the five of hearts. So ace king actually multi barrels this turn quite a lot in with deep stacks. It's got, obviously, the equity. You can really apply maximum pressure on Jack X, but you also block a lot of the continues from the top of your opponent's range. You know, the King Queens, the Ace Queens holding this hand. So it w really is a, a high frequency bet here of Ace King. Pretty tricky here for Saliba because you know 55k was 137k is quite a large part of it. He still has just middle pair. Didn't pick up the extra equity. He does probably think that Ace King would multi barrel though. Gonna think it over. This is a 
definitely one of the hands that's the weakest part of his range. So definitely is something you slide into the muck at a pretty high frequency. It doesn't seem convinced just yet to fold. It does have the best hand, 77%. Nice. Here to play. So another 110,000 into the middle now as the pot grows to 184,000 and Barbero fails to improve and that is actually a decent card for Saliba. That's a really good card for Saliba in a sense that let's just say his opponent is holding like some kind of semi-bluffing hand. They would be pretty scared to multi-barrel, right? Because you have a lot of queen X's. So he gets a showdown rather easily. Nacho does have King of Hearts in hand, blocking some of the backdoor heart draws that do get there. And he's thinking about it. So his main decision is, does he think his opponent is very Queen X heavy or Jack X? Queen X, of course, going nowhere. Is there some percentage of the time Saliba just pushes the rest of the chips in there given he's only got 82k back on the turn with Queen X, thus discounting the trip queens at some frequency. That's what he's trying to figure out right now. If he feels this jack X, then he kind of wants to push this one in. If he's up against king 10 or 9-10, then there's no need to bet. You can try to Bluff catch, but Barbero decides to shut it down. Saliba very happy to check back on the end, and you could see the look on Nacho's face. He seemed a bit surprised that the turn got called by the Jack-9, you think? So that's the thing is, following through of a river bet, you want to target the Jack-X, but if you think Jack-X is folding the turn, especially the weaker ones like Jack-9, Jack-10, then checking makes a lot of sense on the river because you're up against Queen X a lot. So the fact that he sees that, he's kind of like, my assumptions need to be a bit adjusted for next time. Possibly. As Barbero. Now the short stack. 210K. Still plenty to work with. 84 big blinds deep. They're not what and all. The big stack at present. is Bodanov's first ever Triton appearance. Same story for Germany's Leonard Mao, who is third in chips. And of course, the remainder of the field should be familiar to us. Nacho and Winfred Yu. Good to see Winfred back in the Triton stop. I believe he was absent the last series. Mm -hmm. Leonard now in the big blind 10-7 off comes along. It is a min raise pre-flop pot. Pair of sevens does flop best. Nacho is the pre-flop raiser. Queen Jack of Diamonds inside straight draw. King is nice. Can apply pressure. Backdoor Diamonds potential for multi-barrels. Mm -hmm. 5K, bet and yeah. called, and a beautiful development on the turn here for Mao, who makes trip sevens. Does check it. Now, Nacho likely would have multi-barreled this Queen Jack on the turn at a very high frequency, but the seven is not really one of those cards. Of course... When you multi-barrel to turn, you're 
targeting these 9Xs and 7Xs. They've got a lot more confidence, whether it's two pair or trips now. But it looks like he still will fire one more. 20K? 20K is near pot. This is going to get the 9X to fold at high frequency and also some kind of like broken clubs or straight draws out of position. They would lay it down. Barbero looks like he's forcing the issue. You can see Mao is not going to fold. But we weren't sure how he would approach this situation. He does check raise it to 55,000, and now the queen jack begins to wither. Paired board textures, not the type that you want to pursue gut shots on. And so Nacho continues to trend in the wrong direction. Yeah, it looks a little frustrated. Yeah. That happens. Is the year of the nacho over, or is it still some, a thing? Now, the calendar year, we're just like a little past midway through, Q3. But in terms of the Triton Super High Roller Series, player of the year race is reset. And I'm not sure what calendar nacho operates on, if the year of the nacho was 2023, or if it was simply the Triton Super High Roller Series calendar. It was more than the Triton High Roller Series because I know he had like some big scores elsewhere for like seven digits, so. Yes, the year of the nacho is was something that was declared and you don't courtesy say of other a year successes. of the nacho over a two week period, do you? You shouldn't. But he might. I would love the year of the nachos where we just get Unlimited nachos. I do kind of want some nachos now that you mention it. This, not the, this isn't the country where we're going to no. get ourselves good Mexican food, I feel like. Randy. Chipotle? I thought about Chipotle <laughs> for lunch today. King 10-7, top pair for Renat Bodanov. Playing under the Ukrainian banner. I believe you said he was a newcomer. He is. First event he's ever played. Far from that for Winford Yu, who finds himself in the fold along with Nick Petrangelo, who has turned himself a pair of fours here. As Bodanoff did not barrel with top pair. Yeah, and it's actually okay for him to have checked that flop too. If you want to have some top pairs in your range, you choose the weaker ones. For now, though, with the turn arriving, you do want to extract and not let two guys get a free shot of connecting. He's actually going quite large here. And he can actually get paid off by worse, like 10Xs at a decent frequency because of the line he took. His king is disguised. He can represent the random straight draws in clubs. Does take it down. Why do I get this QR code to scan for the app? It looks like Leonard getting familiarized with the Triton Poker Plus app. So Petrangelo helping him out. Do you think he's like Googling right now? Like, is it the calendar year of the New York Nacho? Is it like, is it over? <laughs> <laughs> like, I just lost two hands in a row. <laughs> yeah, Barbero feverishly pecking away at his phone here. Does it end before the Triton series start? And why did I arrive? Who do you, who do you text that to, by the way? Like your psychic? He like, hey, lady, uh, you know, I bought you a, a, a <laughs> set of the tarot uh, card readings. A, a, a ten piece, uh, you know, set of pots and pans. Last visit, uh, you know, I thought that you told me this was going to be the year of the nacho, and so far it's just been cheese. Petrangelo, Jack Nine, limping in front of Saliba's King Queen. Not so fast, says Justin. Don't think this hand is over just yet. Jack nine is a reasonable hand to still limp call with out of position. We know the polarized range of those big blind raises has a lot of trash in it. No connection. 
数学唔好嘅咪帮到手啊，数学唔好嘅咪帮到手。<笑>For Saliba, as the range advantage certainly rates to be in Petrangelo's corner. <laughs> and he's well aware of that as he decides to put some pressure on Justin, who simply relinquishes. Bringing it back over to our secondary feature where we find our first look at Phil Ivey. Got himself involved in one here against Britain's Oliver Blakey. Ace Jack button open and a big blind defense. Ace Queen three, all Blakey affair here. Check fold for Phil. Blakey's first ever Triton event. Far from it, of course, for Ivy. Blakey's got home court advantage, right? It's from the UK. Is that a thing? Yes, it's a thing. Of course. You, you sure? don't believe in it? Well, nah. I'm pretty sure in the sports betting realm, like if you have home court, you get better whatever the odds blah 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 blah. I don't I don't know too much about sports betting. But it's true, correct? So why wouldn't yeah. that apply to this great sport of two cards sitting playing poker? I suppose you're right. Thank you. I Thank just wanted to say that so I wouldn't have to explain why I don't think it's a thing. <laughs> Ivy by the way, six point three million plus in career Triton earnings. Three titles, twelve caches. Picked up a title in a short deck event at our Cyprus Festival. Didn't join us in Vietnam, that being the 2022 Cyprus event. Here he is, three betting with pocket jacks. Once again, will find himself up against Blakey, who hangs in there with the ace nine suited. 45,000 in the middle and trip nines for Blakey. Presence of a queen could be the type of card that would help Ivy not to lose too much in this pot, Randy, but obviously a very unfortunate board here. Yeah, he shouldn't lose too much, but he definitely is going to lose at least one bet at some point in this hand. Blakey sees the check in front of him. I like that he's not going too large here because he still wants to kind of get some crying calls from those ace kings that... Uh, you know, obviously don't have much equity at all. Two jacks for now, can't really go anywhere. Must continue. Cool. A blank turn here, really, for, a, for Blakey. Lots of hands, Blake, he can get value from the queen X's, the, the pocket tens and jacks, the occasional overpair. Yeah, Note that he's going small again because yeah. he probably feels that overpairs or queen X would bet the flop at a decent frequency, so he kind of wants to invite these two out type hands to still continue. An extremely tricky spot here of two jacks. The price is just a little bit too good to lay down right now. 
by him calling twice, it does look rather strong, so he might not think his opponent will follow through with a third barrel. Blanks out. Kept him honest across a couple of streets, but really try to keep him honest across a third. And I suspect that Ivy doesn't have any experience playing against Blakey. And sometimes there's some weird meta, Randy, in terms of a player as high profile as Ivy, wondering whether or not somebody is actually taking a shot at him for the glory of being able to go home to his mates or his local card room and say, I bluff till Ivy. That's a real thing for sure. Um, no one knows too much about Blakey. No way if Ivy has played with him before. That's kind of a an aspect that only Ivy kind of knows how to respond to. Is, are you the type, type of guy trying to bluff me off my hand? And he thinks he is. Unfortunately, he is wrong. Stoic exchange there as Ivy takes a massive blow to his stack, left with just crumbs. Randy, but obviously we're in the rebuy period. And Blakey looking pretty professional as he hauls that one in. He actually sized that pot really well post-flop, where it still enticed these two jacks to come along. And, you know, he got in a pretty healthy bet on the river. Ivy down to 19 blinds. I will say, though, I do like this hat. Spades. Yeah, I'm sure that's what's on his mind right now. <laughs> Yeah, I like said crumbs, 19 <laughs> blinds enough to work with, but obviously okay. a big blow. Which flag is this? Do you know, Ali? Cyprus, I want to say. Okay. You very well traveled. Last name suggests Greek heritage. It is the Cyprus flag. My man. I spend a little time out there, you know. You have as well, though for some reason you didn't pick up on that. It's not like they're waving a flag, their Cyprus flag everywhere in front of me. I would say they're quite a patriotic nation, actually, Randy. Thank you. Maybe okay. they're not waving it in front of you. Oh, you mean you didn't get picked up from the airport in one of those big sedans that have the flags on the front of the two fenders? I did not. Oh. But I can't tell if I'm being trolled right now. You are. Okay. <laughs> and Volkman. Leaving Angelos like he's being bullied, not trolled, as the three bet to ace with ace five to 15,000. Out of the small blind is taken into consideration. And a jam from Angelos with his remaining 44,000. Volkman prompt fold. And onwards we march. Yeah, nice pick up there from the short stack. Back to our other table here. Primary feature. Ace Jack suited for Barbero, who's certainly looking to get back on track. Things haven't really been going his way over the last couple of pots that he played. Oh, Nikki P. Getting hands on him. <coughs> Wait, why did you say that? Did I miss something? Yeah. Man's enjoying a lovely neck massage. Ah, Randy, where were you? I, I wasn't looking, sorry. Okay, hands were on him, got it. He even paid for those hands to be on him, by the way. In pound sterling, no less. Which That's I believe it's a dollar twenty-eight yeah. per pound right now. I remember one of my first trips to London. It was like ripping dollar oh. bills in half, <laughs> almost two dollars per that, pound. Yeah. That was bananas. You get a definitely get a better price of massages over in Vietnam. Like I've seen players like just massage the whole tournament. Oh, the Vietnam massages <laughs> were the bargain basement. I mean, yeah. You might actually break even if you get enough massages here in London, typically. P 
paying for the flight to Vietnam, getting your massages, and then going back. <laughs> That's how cheap it is. But the cheapest is Bali. Is it? I'm embarrassed. I, I, I can't even tell you. Can you just enlighten us? Don't leave us in the dark like that. Like 90-minute deep tissue for $5. You think I'm exaggerating. Right? $5 I, US. I, yeah. Not at the resort. Okay, but still. Jeez. You would just get like, you have the poker table, you just get all your limbs massaged at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> the 12 hands massage? 12 hands massage. <laughs> Fairly uninteresting developments here in a three-way affair. Queen Jack 7 turning into a paired board on the turn. There's Winfred who opened the pot. Has not fired any C bets. Flink with an ace high of his own. Not looking to put chips in either. And kicker might play here for these two ace highs at showdown. Yes, should be a chop pot usually. No, no chop pot coming. Winfred, you attacking. Interesting. I wonder what he's looking to represent. I mean, the four is such a dry card. One would imagine that if he had the queen X or jack X, he would have been heard from on an earlier street, Randy. Yeah, I definitely see where you're coming from. Does get the ace X out of there. Nicely done, Winfred Yu. And Winfred's kind of got that kind of snug image too, so he gets away with these bluffs from time to time a little bit more often. Certainly. Uh, a little, little smile. Can you can you send the guy home so go to check? Playing under the Hong Kong banner is Winfred, 5.57 million plus in career Triton earnings, two titles, 11 caches, one of which came in his five attempts in Vietnam. Yeah, Winfrey's just one of those OGs, and, you know, he's good friends with uh, Paul Puan, you know, Richard Young. Just good to see him show the support, of course, at uh, these Triton stops. Fifty five hundred, the open sizing from Petrangelo. Saliba right behind him with pocket sixes, flats and picks up a gutter on a nine seven five board, which does not interact with this King Jack. You do see the King Jack kind of play a little bit passively on these board textures when someone flats in position. We'll see if he wants to fire or not. Actually, size is quite, quite up there. Thirteen k into seventeen. Definitely crossing Saliba's mind, but does have that extra clean out to the eight, in case he is behind. Oh wow. A lovely jack works its way right onto the turn. That's what we call a feel-good card, right? You you put a big bet, a bet in there on a the flop, you just hit it. And in that way, it's coordinated with the feel-good scalp massage that's currently taking place. Generally on camera, I feel like I don't want the scalp massage just because the state of your hair afterwards can be quite unkempt. <laughs> That's the reason. I thought you were going to say because, you know, you're thinking about a difficult spot and, you know, a large buy-in tournament. But okay. No, but you can end up looking like Albert Einstein in a hurry. I can kind of see it happening already. Yeah. Uh, Froalicious here for Petrangelo, who did check the turn, a check back from Saliba, and now a four-liner shows up on the end. See how Nikki P feels about it. Yeah, dangerous four-liner, too, is... Um, 
the eight is actually a reasonable part of Saliba's range. He might come in with block bet though. Perhaps setting the price himself. Check is really hot there. Pretty standard as well. The best time, the best time is like uh, when Triton time, like February March. Always the best. I'm just watching these hands move. It's quite a soothing sight. It is. I've been there for one year now. Winter time, I think still. Yeah, the nails now, kind of a little bit of that. Just rhythmic. Yeah. That's it. Back to the poker. 9,000 on the river from Petrangelo. Mesmerized here in the booth. Oh, we still got a view. The head massage. Top left. Volume expanding. It's but yes, actually back to the poker. But okay, go ahead. Respectfully, Randy, it's starting to get a little bit sensual for me. Maybe not for Nick, who isn't a scumbag. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that you mentioned it, so I didn't have to mention the scumbag <laughs> part of it. You scumbag? Gosh. Well, Justin might be thinking there's something scummy about this sizing here, right? 43,000 facing a bet of 9K. Are we getting milked, or is this a cheap path to a bluff? I actually feel that Saliba is strongly considering bluff raising this, as there's a lot of 8Xs in his range. Um, check back turn, 9.8s, pocket 8, 7.8. Boom. Get to know Justin Saliba. Well, he may have yet to cash in a Triton event. It isn't for lack of heart, as we can see here. Look at Petrangelo. Not instantly convinced. So Petrangelo is just asking myself, is this ever like a two-pair value bet? Three, um, not three-pair, but you know. Two pair set, or is it only an 8x situation? Because that really changes things. Where if you're my opponent can value raise, nicely done, Petrangelo. Wow, he's good. Picks it off, and that is going to be a very unsettling thing to be shown there. King Jack for Saliba. You feel a little disrespected almost. Yeah, uh, or just kind of one of those you tap the table and just. You got me, man. Hats off. Really nicely played. He's tough. He's a tough customer, that Petrangelo. But over here, we got Volkman, ace queen. Brazilian former professional tennis player, Bruno Volkman. Mm -hmm. Turning his competitive energy toward poker and turning his attention toward an ace queen off suit, where he opens to 7,000 as Iraj Parvizi. Under the British flag, but I can assure you, sharing my cultural heritage as an Iranian Briton. <coughs> well, I'm not from Britain, but not Iranian you, American. But they, they wouldn't want you here, but yeah, I understand. From, <laughs> from a pair of aces to trip aces here for Bruno. Wow, look at this. 7-5 off suit. To be fair, I would imagine that someone from early position if they had an ace, would bet this flop at a high frequency. So he's just trying to push push his opponent out of the pot. Ace queen, though, with a lovely check, has granted create an opportunity to pick up these extra 10k chips. And now at this point, it looks like Bruno Volkman wants to play for more. Does see spades come in? So a failed effort there from Iraj. I do always appreciate that when we go to these Triton stops uh, across the world that the locals kind of come out. Right, Vietnam, we've had the local heroes like Dalman, Fu, and Cypress. A lot of those players that you say mentioned that joined the, the Merit to play on these other tours, mm -hmm. they play there and here. Uh, several new faces from the UK already. I'm sure there's more in the field. Well, poker's such a popular enterprise here in London, and a number of international players call 
London specifically home, let alone the UK, just due to the tax benefits of mm -hmm. being a professional poker player here. Of course, it comes with the disadvantage of a fairly high cost of living. I would say so, yeah. But I don't really think they're worried too much, right? They're, they're high rollers. They're like, it's okay. I want to be in one of those nice hubs where I have everything close to me. Two kings up front. Well, I, I really love London personally. It's one of I my do too. favorite places. It is places. a terrific city. For those that haven't made their way out here before, do yourself a favor. Yes. Something just feels so classy about this place. I don't know. Do you get that vibe too? Like London's a classier? It depends. Obviously, you haven't visited East London yet. <laughs> no, I have not. Randy. <laughs> okay. So I've only been to it. <laughs> it's a big city with some less than classy pockets, says. 9-7 might feel a bit classy. Top pair and a gutter in a three-way affair here, but in fact, it is outclassed by Volkman's Kings. So Ivy's really rather short, and he knows this is a board that the undergun will check back at a high frequency. He doesn't want to let two over cards just check it back, and, you know, of course, bad turn cards show up. Trying to take down what's in the middle in his three-way pot. Two Kings, delighted, of course. So Ivy's at risk here. Pair gutter. 98k pot. Bulk of the damage inflicted by Oliver Blakey. <laughs> Turn. Doesn't provide the help Ivy seeks. Can he hit the card he needs? We've got our answer. As the board pairs, no six, no seven, no nine. And there goes a 25K bullet out of the Phil Ivy chamber. What was that noise? I mean, like, is that like, was you that know? <laughs> when you get <laughs> showered, somebody hits the, the Buddha bell? What, what? Is that a gong? Oh, love the Mandarin collar, by the way, on the service personnel here that's a hearkening Classy. back to kind of a british colonial era now obviously here in england they might smile upon that period in time those who were subjugated by the empire maybe not so much thanks for stating that felt like the right thing to do yeah but I want to know who ring that bell when Ivy got eliminated i don't think it was intentional but the timing done. he's done <laughs> The timing wasn't great, was it? You just bring out a huge metal triangle and just <laughs> ding! Come to play. Irach opens the button. And he's Stu's failing to improve on a King 6 6 board. The kind of texture the pocket threes might be able to get behind here as Volkman defended and Knuckles. So, uh, sorry, I misread the chip. Small bit there. So a misclick in terms of reading and sizing, so it does have to put in the min bet. Obviously, that's not a bet that's going to get rid of these two threes. As Volkman checks again. It does change things a little bit, because that means with the small sizing, <laughs> the opponent will continue wider, hence the double barrel, thinking, well, I, the guy doesn't necessarily have just a king. To check call just the min bet. Nicely done, Iraj. Now, as the name begins to percolate in my mind, Randy. Yes. But whatever percolate means, continue. Just effervesce, swirl, if you will. I'm reminded of a legendary high stakes 
mixed game player who pops his way down to Vegas from the UK each summer during the World Series by the name of Iraj, and I begin to wonder whether or not this isn't the Iraj that is being spoken of. I suspect it is, and I suspect that his action might not be available on Poker Stake as he seems a bit well healed. Not that that prevents somebody from trying to give people a taste of their action. Poker Stake is our official staking partner and the ultimate platform for staking and professional poker players around the globe. No fees on purchases. Head on over to PokerStake.com today and stake your champion. Well, so he clearly hasn't frequent your game because... It's too small. Understand. But what about the Iranian thing going on? Like, don't you guys... What? Don't we what, Randy? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, huh? you seem to say he's from my neck of the woods, therefore we may be... What? Friendly. Play the same? <laughs> Play the same. <laughs> same mixed games. Sorry. True. There's an excellent Persian restaurant not far from here in Mayfair, by the way. Will you take me? Uncreatively named Iran Restaurant, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> it's good. Have you been? Uh, yeah, I have. Okay. Hossein and Son took me there back uh -huh. in 2019. You guys know where to go. Robert Gomez knows what to do as he flops the diamonds here with a straight flush redraw just in case. Looking good here. Let's see if he opts to check raise or check call. Facing the 4K bet is the first timer, Spaniard. Facing Yulong Zhou, also a first timer to Triton. You see the very small check raise here. It's just 2.5x despite mm -hmm. the deep stacks. Like He's just trying to get Yulong Zhou here to just continue with the weaker parts of his range. And he does get the 10 of diamonds to continue. You know, had he check raise bigger, that hand probably would be laying it down. Turn is the deuce. Picks, gives those ace high flush draws, or even the ace 10 like this, some added equity that may feel obligated to continue for a bit more. I would say that the small check raise on a flop doesn't necessarily define his opponent's range, still rather wide. And actually, check raise, check. And you know what? Like I said earlier, the small check raise kind of invites a larger continue range. He must feel like these kind of queen of diamonds, king of diamonds might continue to feel like they've got oh. a stab, but he lets them get there with the four liner. He sure does. A bit of an awkward line settled upon by Roberto Gomez, one that comes with the risks of a diamond rolling off. And now suddenly you just play the six of diamonds alone and Yu Long Zhou has that crushed with the Ten of Diamonds. And let's see whether or not he's gonna hunt value with 37.5 in the middle up against the man who did check raise this flop. Yeah, I like that he's gonna ex go for value here when he gets checked to him. You expect the bigger diamonds to put in some value. You want to attack the, whether well, maybe some two pairs on the flop like 5-4. Jack X is very reasonable. You give him a good price with this small bet. I can't really see Roberto laying down the six of diamonds. Yes, it's a baby flush, but when he check raises the flop so small, he invites some random floats that just kind of have to make a stance on a four flush board. It'd be an amazing laydown, but rather hard to do here. Thirteen five feels like a very nice size. It must feel milky to him right now. Like he's just trying to get me to call. Yeah, feels nice for Joe, not nice for Gomez. Yes, yeah, so Gomez might be trying to figure. Yeah, he just forced to pay off the price he's given. Here we go, Joe. Repping the Chinese flag. Indeed. And we touched on the popularity of poker here in England. That's been the case for 
quite some time, but much more recently, the game has really taken root in China. I know that there was some governmental regulatory sort of developments that maybe impeded that growth momentarily, but where there is a will, there is a way. Yeah, there is a way, for sure. We have certainly yeah. seen plenty of talent coming from that part of the world. Tan Xuan comes to mind. Tan is, he's a fun player. He really is. Not fun to face off against. No, no. Really puts you in the blender and almost like enjoys doing so. Yeah, and he's like, Chinese players that we learned to love from the Triton series, they are all like the biggest action players out there, you know, yeah. Tan Xuan, Aaron yeah. Zhang, like they clearly are good, but they put it, do it in a way where they just try to make you to fold these hands and mm -hmm. they are just so fun to watch. Don't know if we're going to see them in this 25 gates, smaller bind than they're yeah. used to, but probably in the, the bigger ones to show up later. BBB, we got a raised pot here from Roberto. Ten K to skate. And again, we see Joe squaring off. On this occasion, though, Gomez with a real stranglehold. I suppose he had a real stranglehold last time, too, but... I'll say this. Gomez is a rather tricky player. Um, you know, we saw that 62 suited, check, raise, check on an odd turn card. Here he's flopped top pair and actually checked. And he's gotten Yulong Zhou to make a stance here. I think Yulong's thinking that if his opponent had a jack, Jack would, would bet the flop at a high frequency. Trying to muscle out some like high card holdings. Snap call so far. Club does roll off on the turn, completing a flush as Gomez treads lightly. Ideally, you'd want a club in hand for Yulong Zhou to multi-barrel here, so does check. Third six, solving any prospective kicker issues for Gomez, though I don't suspect he thinks he's up against too many jacks as played. Joe's check back will now certainly rate to be greeted by some sort of value pursuits from Senor Gomez. So he's opting for a small bet here, looking for some crying calls. It's really hard to get called by worse here. I suppose maybe the pocket pair is lower than jack. Nines and eight sevens. Does ace high look, up you, look you up sometimes? I suppose with the small sizing. But regardless, just let your opponent figure out if they want to call or not. Claw back there from Gomez, as you see Kiat Lee and I was standing here and beaming. <laughs> Is that why I only play one hand? I come in like one level earlier than you, but I only played one hand. <laughs> Obviously, he's played plenty with Winford Yu, courtesy of their time on the Triton Super High Roller Series. During the summer, Randy ran into Kiat and Danny Tang. They were at World Series, right? Yeah, down in Vegas, trying their hand. Over at the horseshoe. I so believe Kiat made a final table. Danny did as well. Danny almost won a bracelet at some yeah, point. Yeah, the Badoogie event. Game. Mm -hmm. Not so, what, did you just call Badoogie some random game? It is a random Randy? game. I don't even know what a Badoogie is. It's like four different suits, correct? So I guess you do know what a Badoogie is then, as it turns out. <laughs> okay, I do. But no one plays it. But those 50 people who registered that tournament that he almost won. It was more than 50 people. Okay. Am I, I'm going to stop disrespecting this game. I'll tell you what, all of South Korea is up in arms right now, and a, quite a little bit of Vegas. South Korea loves the doogie, is that right? I did not know that. the origin of the game. Oh. I believe it means spotted dog. I 
cannot tell if I'm getting trolled right now. You have I'm, to be. I'm just telling you, that's what I heard. Somebody out there, tweet at us. Let us know. What does Badoogie mean? It really is a Korean origin game? Yeah. Oh. That's no fall in uh, I'm almost positive. So now you're one, making me second guess myself. Five, six. Okay. Guess I'm never going back to South Korea. <laughs> <laughs> An American origin raise here as Saliba with 10-9 off suit picks up both blinds for the ride, neither of which are paired, but of course spotting off with backdoor spades and a wheel gutter. A couple of checks in front of Saliba. Does not barrel, very dry texture. Maybe could have tried to represent the ace instead on the turn. Picks himself up an open ender while Bodanov improves to a double gutter. What's your place called? Like yeah, double gutter is definitely one of those hands that it's just, it, it can fire away here. And, uh, you know, you yes, you do see the Saliba see bet. No, you would imagine he'd see bet this board texture a lot, but he's actually a quite a balanced player he's that makes him tricky. So he checks back some of his weaker holdings to he's do some delayed enough? bets. What's For now, though, he is open ended. No flush draws present, so he would have clean outs. Nice thing, too, is sometimes the six drops off, your opponent's holding the five, and you just scoop a large pot straight over straight. Sure. And on the river, Saliba does improve, not in the manner that he perhaps thought he would need to, pairing the nine. Just five high for Bodanov. Let's see. He's got any sort of ideas. Not tricky because you do see some of the weaker ace axes checking back the flop. So he can't discount Saliba from having ace x, but it looks like he is still going to fire attacking the eight axes. The pocket pair is lower than ace above nine. Pot size bet. That's tough. Well, let's consider the line here. <laughs> Solid. Bet, yeah, bet turn, bet river after defending from the small, and Bodanov getting the job done. That proof. That was a, that was a really nasty that, play there. That was nasty. Obviously removing <laughs> the ability for ASEX to make a call against a sizing such as that if that's top of range that we kind of give Saliba in that spot. Yes, so that was designed to fold out the weaker uh, ASEXs. Like had he bet like half pot lower, he expect all those hands to call. It doesn't right. establish much. So that bigger sizing kind of gets those weaker non-ace hands so fold in as well as the, the weaker holdings, right? Hey, is that who I think it is? Shimeon. Ole Shimeon? That is, isn't it? Yeah. Haven't seen him in a long time. Yeah, German vet. I used to love watching Ole Shimeon. It's like one of my favorite players. It's good to see him at a Triton stop. Potentially his first. Shall we use the app and find out? Sounds like a prudent yeah. decision. It is. Far from his first tournament, of course. <laughs> his first tournament played. First hand of poker. Oh, no shot. 7-3 deuce rainbow board here. As Bodanov. Opener from the button. Drew the defense from King Jack, which is checked. We are going to come here and have a meeting to... King Jack is one of those hands you'd want to peel to flop a lot, but it's a full pot size bet. When I ask for more money from China, I represent. Wow, still calls. <laughs> got some poker happening, Ali. We very much do, as Shimeon not giving Bodanov credit 
for this board texture and recognizing that it may be a range that favors his big blind defense and as such he would have an opportunity perhaps if the turn were to go check check to get busy repping this board on the end showing a lot of foresight kind of a chess-like approach to the pot turn however does provide an open ender to Renat more important than those guys sitting in the office. He probably needs to continue firing away rather large here. Um, you know, he's got all of the clean outs, of course, but yeah. with one over card to the board, that helps to put maximum pressure in. It's another over bet turn. I don't know who this Baldanov is, but I'm liking the way he plays. It's just rather relentless. Big bets. Feels like we may need to keep our eye on Bodanov, currently 12th in chips overall. 92 total entries, 87 players at present. Back in Asia, I wake up at 1 noon. I wake up when the sun rises every time. I go to bed when the sun rises. I go to bed when the sun goes down now. Then at home, very same for me. Yeah. Very <laughs> 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 So the next time I get you more tired before you go to bed, you set up some other entertainment. A couple so fives here for Petrangelo. Premises. Flats. The king queen under the gun open. Now boating off, pocket threes. <laughs> Nothing wrong coming along here in position. There we go. King six suited for Nacho Barbero. He's in. Shemion picks up pocket aces. Just sat down recently. <laughs> Guten Tag. Guten Tag. As as. Danke. Upstairs we go to 38,500. Feels like field clearing sizing to me as fives and threes. I thought Bodenov found the muck already, but not quite yet. Problem maker. There it is. What is this hoodie? I like this hoodie. I was going to mention it's something. The Paisley cuffs. The Paisley inside, too, you s as you can yeah. see. Doesn't yeah. look cheap, does it? No. Flavorful. No. And pricey. No, for me, please. We ever get a line on what the logo on Petrangelo's hat is? I was going to ask you that too. Um, this is not some sports team. It's not. No, doesn't look like it. You right. know what? Petrangelo likes to grab the golf bag. I wonder whether or not it's a country club of some sort that he, maybe. he frequently visits or something, right. or infrequently, but okay. made his way to the gift shop mm -hmm. when he did. Unclear. Unclear, yeah. Clearly we don't play golf. That is clear, as is the desire to raise with King-Queen offsuit for Saliba. What about this ace-10 attacking? And again, it is Renat Badenov who is active. Winfred Yu might have liked this ace-queen under other circumstances in the small blind, but facing the up front open and a three bet behind puts it into the muck. Had both players dominated. But I don't actually mind him folding. I do think that's actually standard because it's early position raise and medium position, middle three bet. And the three bet's actually a little bit larger too. It's just a trouble spot there where sure you can four bet, but you know, if you get more action 
from there, then, you know, it's quite troublesome. And you note Saliba putting the king-queen into the muck. That, too, can be a holding that ends up troublesome when we get three bet as an upfront raiser. Yes, and he would have to play that one out of position. You see the king-queen offsuits start to give action in three bet pots and, the, you know, dealer small, these kind of situations. You have much better holdings to continue out of position than king-queen off. What happens if my call? Did I miss you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you look at it? Uh, yeah, you. Uh, Sorry, it came. Yeah. Are hard to what does hat? You know, does hat Valentino? Yes, sir. Yeah. We're on the same page. And, um, I, don't get any I feel like you've worked your way to the Valentino <laughs> store. <laughs> <laughs> for you or for <laughs> Selena? <laughs> like if, like it was yeah, like more for uh, me. Oh, look six. at you, you get Randy. Look at three of the and pick Gotta it. upgrade. <laughs> That's fair. Be nice. You guys just get to combine the blinds. And yeah, we'll just pick cards. one at random and you have to fold. It also works. <laughs> I don't think I would be out for the hand. I got a good idea where the Triton so checks end up. <laughs> Christian Dior. <laughs> Givenchy. That's Valentino. Right. Uh, just spreading it. Touch a little bit. It's like a little piece of everything. Not yet yeah, Amiri, yeah, though, I mean, from what I've observed. It's not my thing, personally. Really yeah. More for Nacho? It's a Nacho thing. And, and that more is what he says with Ace-10. And Shemion's got the same feeling about pocket yeah, nines. No, it was my fault, 100%, both an but ace it's his fault. And a nine. Right. In Winford's hand, so suited what, what and on the button. Like but he should, like, protect his card. Yeah, that he should like get his card. Uh, Discipline. A little fold. Uh, Resisting the temptation. Trouble spot here out of position off suit. The card haven't reached him to protect and you already took it. Yeah, I did. So he, he got no chance to protect his card. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, I don't know. Just like, uh, so Looks like he won't like defend out of position. Very tricky ace-10 so offsuit. Does flop it, though. I would never. I One of the two remaining aces like in the deck, general. working their way to the board and placing card. Barbero in front so of Shemion. I mean, right and an almost 50k pop. I'm getting strong Heath Ledger vibes. How could off of Shemion, by the way. Why is he playing poker yeah, when course. clearly Hollywood has a vacancy? Uh, in general, I mean, I the Joker? Yes, Ole I Shemian. know who Heath Ledger yeah. is. Uh, no, well, not the but most we know recent Joker, Heath but Ledger I'm just saying. Heath Ledger is no longer yeah. with us, so yeah. I don't know if Hence it's, the it's vacancy, appropriate. Randy. Okay, vacancy. Yeah, it's not a hotel. Maybe, is it Orlando Bloomish a little bit, too? What am I talking about? 10,500. The ruling will. The bet but from Ole. We're, we're back, Ole. Cautiously to flatting. No, yeah, but line. make no mistake, I may go right back okay. off the rails. Okay. Uh, always a risk. Well, two nines did bet small on the flop, ideal with his poor texture and this type of holding. I expected, I to, win. I expected to win with a nut. His opponent check calling. So two nines actually usually wants to slow this one down and hopefully just show it down against the worst kind of pair. Eight does drop off. Barbero's kicker, not so good. But Barbero actually might think that the better kickers, ace, jack, ace, queen, ace, king, would bet the turn at a high frequency with this run out. So he actually might try to extract value with ace-10 despite the weaker kicker holding targeting these pocket pairs lower than an ace occasionally like the ace-4 ace-6 ace-9 he knows that he can represent the, the busted diamonds pretty easily North of half, it seems. Barbaros 
Value efforts unrewarded, understandably, as Shemian finds the right fold. Oh, you recognize any of that wrist wear, Randy? It From was Barbara? the Shambhala jewels. Correct. I made sure to get that one right. Yeah, I wanted to keep my job. <laughs> Triton champs. Not by Saliba. Going to seek some greener pastures, perhaps the type where that river raise against yeah, Petrangelo really. gets through. <laughs> that, that was a really cool hand there. Love that one. Big yeah. slick. Loving this one is Badenov. 7K under the gun. Kings. Standard. This a little bit substandard, though, to be running into the Cowboys, which three bet. And where did you come from? Remember that... What did you have for breakfast? A vacation in northern Germany. This friskiness out of Shemi on the new arrival at this table hasn't gone to showdown every time. So there's still some mystery as to whether or not Ole is just announcing himself and maybe speeding, or if he's actually got the goods. And he just joined his table recently, so it does look very speedy, right? Like he did mm -hmm. the aces squeeze, the nines there where he mocked. Bodanov, ace king, has got to be thinking that this opponent is just messing around too much, but his opponent actually happens to have two kings right now. One of Fulton, of course, for four bet and pushing the rest in there. Playing about 75 big blinds or so to start things off. I've got a vibe update. Go, go. Kylo Ren. I don't know who that is. Come on, Randy. <laughs> what, do you ever leave the house, man? I know. It's Adam Driver in the Star Wars sequels. Oh, I didn't right? I didn't watch Star Wars. Oh my god, Randy. But which guy are you talking about? Shemion, please? Yeah, man. Kylo Ren. I really watch a lot of movies, believe it or not. I just Star Wars is one of those things I'm just not interested in. Yeah, one of those small indie franchises that you kind of skipped over. It's not an indie franchise. It's a huge yeah, franchise. Yeah, exactly. And yet you still didn't watch Pause. it. I want to talk about these kings and ace king because they're about to get it in there. And you need to call out this run out for us. Uh, yeah. Well, listen, we knew that there was a chance that the writing was on the wall and that we'd see a massive collision. And that's exactly what we've got on our hands here as Bodanov finds himself in a bad way in an almost 450K pot. But he does flop himself a Broadway gut shot. Would have preferred to see the ace. That still would be a path to the lead here as he's got seven outs twice, the four of clubs. Not going to be of any assistance. And you see Shemion anti-sweating here. All in. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. And <laughs> May I say the force was with them? Well, I get the Star Wars reference. <laughs> I'm glad that at least you... <laughs> Realize that the thing is that this character was from the dark side, Randy. So I don't think, although maybe the force is tapped into by both. I don't, I'm out. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs> well, how about this for a first orbit for Ole Shemion? That's why we have to go back to Vietnam. I can complain. Golf before poker, yeah. Yes, you can do both. Maybe someone sit here be before? Yeah. He like oh, he ordered it? Oh, I don't know. He lost them. I don't know. I don't know. Go Sliding it. it over to our no, secondary no. feature <laughs> where we find so. Bats. Mikita Batsiakuski, the Belarusian. Free food. Oh, wait, did you hear that? I didn't, but don't so tell Patrick Antonius. It just shows hole, up really in the next frame, watch. Should be, I think. Someone no, say I salmon or lamb chops? Not yet. I mean, well, that was I think it's like truly. Oh, he should okay. get a banner. Yeah. Antonius like should, poker. you know, like undefeated competitive eating you know, champ. <laughs> you know how you walk in, there's all those banners of right. seven-time trench. Yeah. <laughs> like 
50 lamb chops in one yeah, day. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like it. the reigning lamb chop champ, Patrick Antonius. <laughs> Meanwhile, Iraj ain't too suited somehow finding his way into this one. Yeah, plus two as well. Yeah. <laughs> Fairly up front, Ben Heath with the Jack-10 fails to improve. And you know what? I am almost 100% now based on this pot and the stories that I've heard that this is the Iraj of urban legend back in Vegas. Imagine the beats a guy like this can give you. <laughs> I mean, like, you. I can imagine. I mean, I don't know what kind of beats happen in mixed games, but... There's some gnarly ones this way. I think the guy, I think the guy got... Uh, did they take the food away? Not sure. They did. But we'll take an opportunity to give us a peek at the chip counts here. Blinds at 1,500 and 3,000 in this kickoff 25K GG Super Millions event. Roberto Gomez, the Spaniard, largest stack at this table, followed closely by Sweden's Robert Flink, revisiting the Triton Tour after a long absence, and Cyprus's Michelangelos. 76,000. When I say it like that, Michelangelos, obviously visions of multi-year affairs painting the roof of the Sistine Chapel begin to be conjured. Yeah. Leonardo's Michelangelos, right? Wait, is that the same no, right dude, name? Leonardo was Da Vinci. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> <sighs> you know... I haven't really. What, opened a history <laughs> book ever? <laughs> did not. I did use spark notes. <laughs> I won't lie. You did cheatsies in school? <laughs> it's not cheatsies. It's just R assistance. Oh, yeah? Is that what you told it's your like teacher? using the poker tracker while playing poker. Yeah, and um, we know everybody allows that. Oh, the tracker. I'm sorry, not the solver. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it conflated here. Parvizi. Far better than 8 do suited is kick this party off up front. Ace-7, a flat from Gomez, and now Heath with ace-queen suited. Three bets, and Parvizi, undaunted, invests another 37,000 in a very bad way. Gomez caught in the crossfire here. He'll lay it down. Yeah, he's just looking to splash and just try to hit something, make some moves. A7, by no means standard. Dryish texture. Deuce, deuce, five. Two quick checks, king on a turn. Still good. Over 100,000 in the middle. Stormy. Is that someone breathing violently into their it's, mic? It's, it's raining outside. Of no. It's just getting in here. Yes, it is someone breathing, in case you didn't realize, but. Parvizi doing the. 25K bet. Breathing here. Uh, well. Not quite as violently as whomever that is. The quarter pot sizing, though, not enough to get rid of Ben Heath for the time being. And let's see what Parvizi has in mind on the river. He checks, and the ace queen will play. Pick up there for Heath. Does not have a Triton title under his belt, which came as a bit of a surprise to me, Randy, when I took a peek at his bio on the Triton Poker Plus app. I believe he's got multiple final tables. Though. That's right, and I yeah. think that's why I had the sense that maybe at some point he had taken one down. 4.16 million in career Triton earnings, 11 caches in total. I feel like he's got like some third and fourth places in some of the larger buy-in ones, like the main or something. By the way, London was where his debut, Ben Heath's Triton journey began. Yeah, right here. Mm -hmm. 
Six five offsuit under the gun, Randy. Don't adjust your screen. Yet another raise from Parvizi, who, by the way, did show the A7 and didn't have to, if I'm not mistaken, in that last pot. And that was one in which his open got three bit. With that information, you might start to see some players play back at Parvizi. Michelangelo's pocket threes taking the high variance line. Jamming. Let's just run it. Parvizi wants to play 150k pot and a set of threes mercifully for Michelangelo's given that a five showed up on this flop. Everybody is pretty quiet right now, but they are soaking this situation up and Chance. Parvizi soaking this turn up. Has a spade draw and a double gutter. He could really spoil the party for the Cypriot. And he's done just that. Showers. I'm at a loss for words. Like, you just hit a set and you're out of there against 6-5 off. One to gamble. Really the best scenario that was able to get with this pre-flop situation. I wanted to leave. I know. <laughs> I, do, I, I can feel it. <laughs> you wanted what? I'm going to be cash game so I wanted to leave. That's why I'm going to leave. Oh. I think I'm not going to win with 6-5. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> okay. okay. So we've got a bit of insight now as to why it is that Iraj took the line that he did. Initially, I thought he said, I wanted him to leave in reference to Michelangelo. So I was like, what did that guy do to you? But in fact, Iraj apparently has a big cash game that he's supposed to show up at. So he was looking to torch his stack with the 6-5. And instead, it's running spades. Now has spun it up. Okay, so it's safe to say the ranges he's been playing recently is not standard for him. I don't know about that, and I certainly don't want to put the word safe and Iraj Parvizi in the same sentence, whether we're referring to his opponents being safe, his own stack being safe, our assumptions about how things may develop in any given pot being safe, Everything feels very unsafe. How do you think his opponent feel right now? Like, he has to report back to people like, yeah, I just got done by 6-5 off. Oh, what, he just made it post off? No, he just called it off and stacked my set. Well, everyone is aware, though, that Iraj is willing to splash very hard. So I wonder how the dynamic changes here in future subsequent hands. Yeah, if you didn't know what you were working with before, you certainly know now. A man who needs to get to a cash game. A man who's willing to call three bets with a seven. Open raise with six five. And call it off. Uh, yeah. I certainly rather be to his left than his right. I'll tell you that. Yes. Watch him be like, you know, this is a healthy sack. Now let me adjust gears, and then everyone's just paying him off. And he the perfect him. ruse. <laughs> Where he's like, actually, I didn't tell you guys. I got a text. The cash game's canceled. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. I'm back doing my thing out here. Hey. Poor Michelangelos. Back to the... Sistine Chapel, is that the right one? Yes. Okay. Whew. It is. I don't think that's where he's going. I to the red desk, I it, guess. He would be well served to, to go to his therapist and, and talk that one out because I don't think that's what he expected. A savage. Therapist Flop meaning set. other poker player friends, I assume. Bad beat stories. Acceptable in that situation. And top pair against second pair, certainly acceptable for Robert Flink up against Badziakuski. What's a new pair of Sunnies from Makita? Yeah, the reflectiveness, by the way, of said Sunnies strikes me as a bit hazardous. 
they're really going to have to do a great job of checking your hole cards in a very discreet manner as Robert Flink not checking, but rather barreling through for 7,000. A brief pause before Bats peels. Oh, and Binks, a very innocent looking six on the turn, which puts him well in front of Robert Flink, who's picked up a little equity in the form of a gut shot courtesy of that six as well. Might that be enough for him to feel good about another barrel? Yeah, he does see like these kind of middling hands out there that could pay off. We'll check and we got a counterfeit situation. Yeah. All of a sudden, tens and sixes not feeling so moisturized. Moisturized, eh? Okay. Unbothered? No. Don't Quite bothered. Yeah. Definitely bothered. You too appear to be bothered by my <laughs> moisturized invocation. So you use a lot of different words, but that one just seems odd. Choice. I can be a bit odd at times, Randy, as you've experienced. Yes. What is that? And this Sound. is going to feel maybe a little bit odd for Makita as the barrel comes in. 27,000 on the healthier side. This is actually really interesting, the way this is developed. Robert Flink value betting the ace here with a big bet near pot size, trying to get these 10 X's to feel it's polarized. It's also that Robert Flink is probably not expected at 8 X that much. Does make the call here nicely played. Robert Flink is one tough customer. Well, so is Badziakuski, and obviously when he clicks call on the river in spots like that, he's not always going to be wrong, but on this occasion, sets himself back. What was your scouting report on Robert Flink when you had the opportunity to first observe him on the Triton Tour years back? I was aware that he was someone who played the highest stakes poker online for quite some time. And when he came to that Triton stop, the first one, I forget which stop it was specifically. Did you say London maybe? Um, no, it wasn't London, I'm pretty sure. But he was playing primarily the short deck at that time. And... I believe I had a friend tell me that he was one of the best short deck players at, um, back then, and he was quite aggressive. Mm -hmm. um, in Nolan and Hold'em, known to be quite one of the stronger, crazier players out there. And so far is um, making a statement with some really nicely timed bets with holdings that can't normally get value like that. He, he's just an uh, extremely tough player to play against. King 10 8 in a three way affair here. Roberto Gomez's pocket fours started the party. Quick round of checks. Not one but two Queen Deuce suiteds in here. Volkman with the diamond draw. Hi, how are you? Oh, it's good. You're still uh, living here? Still, nobody wants yeah, to yeah. bet it, and it's nice. Home fairly turn. surprisingly, the fours are good. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. They will get to show down. Not too often, two <laughs> fours in a three-way pot that's been raised pre are going to be able to drag chips. It's a big on win. That board, but Guess when the queen deuces are blocking each other. <laughs> yeah, this queen deuce blocking each other completely. <laughs> Volkman maybe had a chance at that one with the flush draw, but the presence of Parvizi. Yeah, because like, you know, does he strike you as someone who's going to be folding a pair at this point, right? Even if it's like third, probably not. So you might feel like you're torching chips in a spot where usually you'd be able to take it down. 
Yeah, I mean, we might see some really significant deviations from expected well, courses of action as a part of the Parvizi effect. As his VPIP continues to be very high, makes it 8K to go with 6-7 off suit. Bad's on the button. Not lost on him, that VPIP and that notion that he's just looking to torch. Chooses to flat. Good price here, 5-4 off suit. You got a player who is clearly looking to get chips in there. Maybe if he flops up, then you'll get paid off more often than not. Bottom pair for the 4-5, a gut shot for Parvizi, air for Makita. Got bottom pair. You have an opponent you expect to see bet at a high frequency given what he's been saying. Can't lay down. Oh, oh my, oh gosh. where did this card come from? One that gives Roberto Gomez bottom two and Iraj the nuts. How much did he just bet with that blue I don't chip? even know if he knows. He just took a stack and tossed it in there, 60K, and I don't think one would blame Roberto Gomez for thinking that fives and fours have a chance to maybe polish off the 100K behind, specifically against Iraj, with what we know about all that he has told us. Wow. Yeah, the jam from Gomez. <laughs> this is insane. Verify. <laughs> the good news for him, of course, is that he has Iraj well covered. But suddenly, Parvizi stands to haul in a 369k pot. Oh, wow. Fives full on the end, and that'll do it for Iraj Parvizi's barrel. So. Maybe he got his wish in terms of being able to go hit up his cash game. But I wonder whether or not that cash game would have still been on his mind Enjoy. if he hauled in that 369k. I'll just say one of the few scenarios where it's a win-win situation for him. He has a stack, he plays the cash game. Yeah. It's rare where losing is okay. Also a winning situation for Gomez, who spins up even further into second place overall, 730K. Juan Pardo, by the way, the other Spaniard that we've seen at our feature tables, up over seven figures in front of him. I was driving on my friend, because I afterwards I gave the car to Fabi to drive to his hotel. Maybe he got blitz, I don't know. Got these ace nine in a bad way here against Barbero's pocket nines in the small blind as our attention does turn to our primary feature table, which appears situated in a far more quiet part of the room. Yeah, I think it's just the location of the thing. It's with the background noise a little bit less here, too. Two nines tends to three bet a bit more the shallower your stack becomes, and Barbero is playing off a 45 big blind stack. Does three bet, get it done. His hand Thank made you. no sense for anything. Sounds like a bad one. No, it sounds like a good one. You can see good when he just I don't like it. It's very stupid. He doesn't have a flush. Me. You? Yeah. Nice. Were you thinking about calling? Yeah, why didn't I just call and you squeeze and I shove? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Wow. wow. I wish you saw me. Uh, I didn't see the hand. What an idiot. So even an, I I almost did that. <laughs> Are they talking about a pot that we observed? Or ace nine. I don't think so. Maybe one that 
took place while we were away? Yep, likely. It's because it's been some time. It would make sense. Regardless, two jacks up front. Leonard. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a hand that we weren't able to observe because I don't remember Leonard being involved in some big pots as of when we were watching the stream. Ace Queen now in position. Looks like Boltonov's stack has shrunk a bit down to 200k. Note the flat with the ace queen. That does open the door for Winfred to very comfortably come along with King Jack suited. Yeah, you do actually see flats of ace queen against yeah. like under the gun, under gun plus one, a bit more. Nothing wrong with three betting two. Three very reasonable hands here. Ace, six, three, two spades as the jacks are downed by Bodanoff. Leonard does not barrel through. Ace, queen. He's got two opponents. Probably wants to extract value. Not really worried about ace, king. Ace, king bets the flop a lot. Against the 6K bet, pretty much forced to call here, even with one over of two jacks. Remember, King Jack went into the muck, so he's looking for the lone jack. Instead, it's a queen on the turn. Second over card to the hooks, and top two now for Bodanov. Is it... Too much hand to maybe fire? No, you still want to extract value from the ace x's that play pot control on the flop. You still want to extract from some spades. You know, your hand is not. Uh, you just you just need to extract. If you're not extracting value when you have too much peace, you're kind of just leaving too much EV on the table. But yes, of course, you expect these folds to happen. Bet, fold, pot over to Bodanoff. I think he P pulled the plug on that massage, and I gotta say, I'm a little bit disappointed. I was really enjoying it, and the hands weren't even on me. And shortly after those see, see, see. words were oh, uttered so by me, I realized just how creepy they were. <laughs> well, you know what, though? Like, his hair just shrunk again with his hat. It was expanding, you know, Einstein style with that head massage. I'm not on the hunt, I should step away. Just really I'm shocked he was able to fit it all underneath <laughs> that cap. I'm done the work. <laughs> fits 9,000 into the middle <laughs> with pocket tens. Little suited connector here for Ole. Mm, no set of tens coming, right? It's eight or nine? Nine. Not possible. You want it to be eight? Now <laughs> <laughs> looking for a discount. I mean, <laughs> tried. It's already betting a call in front of him. It's only an extra dime, buddy. If it's good enough for eight, it's good enough for nine. <laughs> one would imagine. As spades are a bit busy, and as such, an all hard board develops. One that Kiat Lee does not want to barrel on, despite having the only flush draw. Unbeknownst to him, of course, no. and the presence of the ace, perhaps deemed a bit pesky. Sometimes you see this 5-4 spade stab here with the little gutty this type of texture where players have to check fold on a large part of their range. Monotone does attack 8,500, two tens. Got that heart draw. Got the right price. It's 
of the check call of 8,500. Wheel. Reveals the three of clubs on the turn. Such an improbable development for Ole, who was really just barreling to take it right then and there, and instead suddenly finds himself able to cobble value. Is Keon going to be able to get away with two tens and a ten of hearts, Randy? He should be because of how weak the draw is, as well as falling, of course, to the ace out there. Sometimes he makes the heart, but his opponent's holding like a king queen off to a bigger heart. He does. I kind of slept on the fact that the straight came in. I yeah, know. The just card just looks so dusty. Your job is to announce these things for us. It shouldn't be my job, Ali. Listen, stay I on track. I know you've never overlooked anything. You're Randy. still upset about the massage being over. I sense it. Am I right? No. No, that's not it. You don't want to be the creepy guy anymore? I, I wouldn't say that. I'm, I'm ready and at your service. <laughs> Always in that respect, as we have yet another member of the Chinese delegation showing up here. First time participant, Yang Mingxin. Newcomer. Ace War suited actually like to put in chips in this spot. Does come in off call. Does invite Petrangelo to continue with Ace Nine offsuit. Closes it. Ten eight six rainbow here in the three way pot. Two fives is tough to continuation mint into two blinds at black claw on this board texture. Check through we go. Who's Nacho talking to? Unclear? So Petrangelo, he's got ace nine, little gut shot. No, cuando me cuando quiero hacer la transferencia cuando quiero hacer la transferencia tercero me pide El token móvil te permite hacer transferencia. Okay, so check through again. Ace nine does get there with the little gutty. Leonard's actually contemplating repping the nine himself. He's seen massive weakness from the pre flop razor and the big blind. And these four lines just invite players to try and attack and scoop the pot. Bad timing as Petrangelo does have the nine in his hand. Little 8K bluff into 29.5. Exercise in futility. Trangelo taking his time just in case. I win. Thought? Now you see the nine, you might feel like, oh, that's a passive weak play because he loses jack nine. But actually, this allows the original preflop razor to maybe make some crying calls as well and you extract value that way. Especially if you don't think the small blind lead will call raise with worse than a nine. So. 
If you think you're capped at 8K out of the small blind, why not open the door for the pre-flop raiser to either put 8K of their own in there or maybe even do something heroic? Exactly. Housed in one of the finest Georgian properties in Mayfair, London, Les Ambassadors offers members and their guests a service of impeccable quality. The club welcomes players from around the world seeking the ultimate gaming experience with luxury facilities, including exquisite private rooms and world-class fine dining. Les Ambassadors membership opens the door to incomparable benefits. Check them out at lesambassadors.com. Les A, as it's affectionately referred to. It was an information that you see your hand. Seven four offsuit. He, he, I limped. From Ming Xing. Okay. Oh, he just mocked. Whatever. I'm the old lady's house. I'm the old lady's. I would have. I would have tried to get his hands back. I didn't. I didn't see it. Yep. He limped. He mocked. Oh, take one. I didn't see. I didn't. You don't see that every day. No, you don't. Maybe the game's that. Winford stepping in to help advise Young Ming Shin. We do require players to scan their cards over our RFID readers so that we can. Deliver that information to the stream. I'll tell you one good one. Under the gun, first card right away. If it's an eight, put out a big blind. You free roll the. Were you really all that? Were you really? My first one. Oh, I posted it. I win. Oh, this year. But nowadays you need to you put the big blind and the out as well. And then it's a raise already. That's unbelievable. Think, oh, you're a big you, you, <laughs> you know how hoodies normally hang behind your head? Mm -hmm. Why does it feel like this one hangs in front? The the Ole Shemi on one? Yeah. It, I don't think it does, though. It feels like one of those it wasn't really a trick, right? scoop neck yeah. kind of thing. Like 8,500 to go. It's Young flats with 10 each suited. The spades are smothered here by Bodnov. Let's see if he's got evil on his mind. He does not. Closes the action. Defending his big. Yeah, of course. They see me looking at the card. The problem with this one is like it's six, six, eight board uh, does give Mingxin the best hand. It's just very fun when it works. Yeah, sure. 7,500. Two five is, of course, vulnerable. Could get counterfeited. This hoodie I, I'm into. It's Dior, right? Oh, yeah. That's not cheap. Oh, no. <laughs> That's very expensive. It looks like a white hoodie, but it's more than just that. He's in. Check raise min. Peculiar line for Shemi on the face with these two fives. And mind you, he just observed this player fold the big blind after Petrangelo limped the small. That's obviously on his mind as the ace shows up on the turn, the kind of card that Shemi on very well could represent. He could represent it. The thing is, two fives does have a little bit of showdown value, too. Of course, he was unpaired. He was most certainly would be betting on the ace. Still crossing his mind is, if I bet, maybe I can get the eight X to fold because it's quite scary. And he's going to make it 
23K. Yang Mingxing here, he's not phased. Check raise min again? The double check raise min. I don't think I've ever seen this on the Triton Tour. And I'll tell you what, Shemihan probably hasn't experienced it all that often. Such a rare line for someone to take. And compounded by the notion that Ming Xin is maybe not adhering to the same sort of understandings of the game that Ole is. Carved over several years of being a professional poker player, but well done there. Ming Xin did have the best <laughs> hand. He <laughs> actually extracted the most value yeah, of the he line did. he did. He did. Love to see it. He's like, Probably. you thought your hoodie was cool. Look at mine. You can buy multiple of yours yeah. to get one of mine. <laughs> Getting a feeling that that hardware on his wrist is quite expensive, too. Don't know if you caught a glimpse of it. I did not. I don't know too much about watches, but maybe you can take a little look. <laughs> I try, but uh, <laughs> that thing matches the the white hoodie. Not getting a great peek at it. Ace nine now. Put on off. Feeling Razy, 3.5x into Nacho's King Queen in the big blind. Mixed strategy probably here with King Queen. It's kind of one of those spots where you kind of want to pump it up to kind of extract value. The problem is when you re-raise and then get 4-bet jammed on, you feel like you just wasted the King Queen. So call we go. And top pair. Beautiful texture here for Barbero. Yeah, extremely nice. It's not too bad for the ace nine in the sense that it's one big card too little, so you can kind of just bet and try to deny equity from all the middling stuff that isn't paired. 6K to kick things off. Let's see if Nacho comes in with call or raise in position. It's one of those spots where blind versus blind, you, you do value raise a little bit wider given the w extremely loose ranges. And it looks like he is opting to raise. Queen kicker, obviously nice. Extract value from all of the worst kings. Gut shots, ace threes, ace fours. That will continue clubs. Even some pocket pairs that might see bet flop might still pay one off. Ace nine, really no business to continue though in the muck. So cobbling an extra six K off of the pre flop opener is Barbero by taking that line. Not the San Diego Chargers, right? The the hat, not close. The San Diego Chargers of football, the National Football League, Randy. NFL. Their logo consists of a lightning bolt. Now the Denver Broncos have a similar looking logo to that, but they're orange and brown. Orange and blue, <laughs> Randy. <laughs> Hmm, I'm gonna stay away from the sports. It's not really. Yeah, uh, and the Star Wars also. <laughs> and the Star Wars and the uh, painting stuff. <laughs> yeah. Not the Ace Queen, though. There's no need to step away from that sort of holding. Min raise open. Shemion's in. Defended. Three, four, six. All hearts. Bottom pair and an open ender up against the nut flush draw and two overs here. Things could get a little interesting. Yeah, a lot of fight with these two hands. 
Did we get the sizing? It was 5,500 5, on Very small. Very big card on the turn. Nestling right in between the ace and the queen, but not improving Leonard's hand as Chemion checks again. And every now and again, this check call is with an inferior heart. And if that's the case, we know that card is unpaired and beneath an ace. Every time I see and that, booty, that obviously leaves us feeling maybe comfortable firing again. And apparently that's exactly how Leonard feels as he barrels once more, 15,000. Yeah, the 15K bet is nice um, with the ace queen. It's just over card to the board. King is very scary for the big blind. 5-3 going nowhere. Don't, doesn't necessarily mean that Leonard wouldn't barrel even if he bricks off on the river. Let's see what comes. Six is probably not one of those cards he would continue on as the 6X, of course, would be going nowhere with trip sixes. <laughs> I feel bad because I bought it. I paid 2,600 euros and I used it three times. So basically, I pay 900 every time I wear it and it's just in my closet because I think it's shrink or something. From what? From Triton? No. Ah, Dior, Dior, Dior. He said that Dior's brand is the way he wears it. He wears it three times. <laughs> not sure whether or not you caught that there, but on the heels of the check down and Shemion win in that last pot. Nacho sharing that he too owns that Christian Dior hoodie, paid 2,600 euros for it, wore it three times, 833 euros per use. And then apparently it I shrunk. Know, I don't <laughs> just shrunk on its own in the closet. I mean, maybe he sent it off to a bad dry cleaner or something. Stranger things have happened. Yeah, he definitely got bad value out of it. It doesn't look like the kind of piece you're going to want to machine wash or throw into the dryer for that matter. You would think, but apparently Nacho might have did that. Is it bad that my first thought is as much as I like that hoodie, and given that I know Nacho quite well, I feel like firing off a text and being like, hey, listen, about that Dior hoodie. That shrunk. That shrunk and that you're not wearing anymore. Maybe we can make a deal. 32. Leonard going back to work under the gun with a Queen 10 suited and yeah. caught in the crossfire is Yang Ming Shin. It's only Shimyan. Wakes up with Ace Queen and three bets, helping himself to even more Mao Bucks. Ollie. Yeah. If it has shrunk past the size of yours and maybe to a kid's size, do you think I can get it? I'll tell you what, Randy. I intend to inquire about the state of this hoodie. Playing with fire. The tag is obviously not going to be accurately oh, reflective of its <laughs> current size. But in the event that it does not fit me, I will notify you. The yes. only thing is, maybe I'll buy it anyway from Nacho. <laughs> so I have to mark up. And then mark it up to you. <laughs> you scumbag. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. And you know I'm attracted to the Dior brand. Oh, this yeah. This is just dirty. I actually thought we had a relationship going on. We do. Screw this, I'm out. One in which I'm taking advantage of you, you know, on a regular basis. You know, I'm going to make you buy basis. it, and I'm not going to buy it from you. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to wait till you've got a kid that can grow into it. Now, you're unleashing your inner scumbag, Randy. I'm very proud of you. Yeah. Keep it. Looks better on me, too. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Bottom off. Really good with dark if you, when you're really white like me right now, it doesn't look good. But when you have like a tan, raise and take it. It's all about the tan. What about red? <laughs> Go good with red. You with you, it's very hard. All the clothes. No, you. You're like hopeless. <laughs> <laughs> that's, why, that's why I wear a t-shirt and shorts every day. Exactly. All my nice clothes it's I bought. Complicated. <laughs> it's complicated with, the, with that color. I don't know what much is. I never saw what would match. Uh. This one would look good on you. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be able Pink to. Pink and red? <laughs> you wouldn't be able to notice your, no. your face. I, I, 
I, I guess I'm not allowed to go outside anymore. It's just only here. Young Ming Shin limping with an ace. Mountains. I'm too close to the sun. Under the gun. Sports. You see high? Yeah, very. How high? I don't know. It's high elevation. It's like not like um, like Colorado is higher, but. A 16K raise from Jack Nine suited, which feels to me, Randy, like it may be equally attached to the holding, as well as the fact that there was a limp from Ming Shin, who has now limped three bet to 60,000 as Barbero and Winfred Yu with legitimate holdings, flatting the 16K, getting caught in this crossfire. How about it? I have no idea what the other holding is, but I can tell you these players did not expect the limp re-raise to be coming here. And Winfred with the, the prettiest of the three, he's out. He picked up a lot of blinds in this pot. It's four blinds from each player. What is that extra card? I'm dying to know. I'm <laughs> dying to know, too. I think it's good for him, too, because uh, the other players are like, we're dying to know. Oh, we will never know. That's right. Even on the delay after they do their research, and I'll bet everybody involved in that pot is going to be very keen to find out what the limp three bet came from. They're going to be equally as disappointed to never know. They have three on the case. They have, you can see there. Yeah, in the winter, obviously. But how far? There? Like, um, there's between two different really good mountains. One of them is like uh, 20 minutes, and one of them is like 45. It's not like skiing. Yeah, twenty minutes away. Twenty minutes. Oh, that's not. But forty-five for something great, and then in the region, like two hours in any direction, like the best in the world. Really? Brit Where is it? British Columbia. <coughs> oh, it's British Columbia. I'm in Alberta, but it's close. Like you could, like my brother-in-law came up and did like a day trip to the one of the I best. There, bro, it's the best in the world. Yeah. I yeah. went to do any skiing. Yeah. Yeah. It's my place is like you can both directions there's good heli skiing and stuff. But I do a lot of the stuff in the summer, like mountain biking is You don't great. go in the window, right? Oh I do. But I'm like a average skier. Man, we should hit the pl your place in the window, bro. What the <laughs> fuck are we doing? It's cold. Winfred's ace king picking up Yang Ming Shin's big blind as the defense fails to deliver anything of interest on the 10-3-3 board, oh, but that what? doesn't appear to be slowing him down as he's check <laughs> min raising again. But last time he had a like top pair, and this time just seven high on a 10-3-3. We're going to have to keep our eye on this guy this here. This is my man. Winfred unconvinced, calls, and now equity on the turn for Ming Shin as he picks up the Gut shot straight draw, but pumps the brakes. And remember, he did pull the double check raise earlier against Shemion. Not a fact that was lost on Winfred as he checks back. And now, sweet relief as the king comes off on the end. Let's see if Yang decides to turn his hand into a bluff or if he took his one shot at it. Reaching for chips, we've got our answer. And sizing here is reasonable. A snap, of course, from Winfred. Making sure that... Winner. Looks like he mucked it. Given that Winfred's mucking face down. Well, on that note, players will be heading to a break as the second frame comes to a close here. Germany's Ole Shemian at the top of the chip counts. One of two Germans here at our feature table. Yang Ming Shin, though, the man of the hour. Over 300,000 in front of him. When we return, blinds will be 2,500 and 5,000. Those chip counts brought to you by GG Poker. Of course, the partner here on the Triton Super High Roller Tour. This 25K GG 
Super Millions has delivered some very memorable moments, most of them coming courtesy of Ming Shin, who was the late arrival to this table, pulling off one of the real unicorns in poker, the double check raise. Was it a double check min raise specifically? It was double check raise min, right? Usually you see these, if there is ever a double check raise, it's not the minimum. Somehow he did it uh, with the best hand, got extracted the most value out of two five somehow. <laughs> and then he's just limp raising with the ace random. Right. We don't really know what the other card is. And uh, really just driving a conversation with the hoodie too from... Uh, from Nacho Bar Barrel, really yeah. the man of the hour, um, the last 15 minutes yeah. that he's been here. Yeah, not even an hour, but obviously we hope that we'll be able to see some more of him. We are going to bring a couple of new feature tables into the arena and, of course, a new commentator. As I will say goodbye to Randy, Maria Ho is going to be stepping into the desk. And as we make those arrangements, we will send you to the break as well. But don't go anywhere. Plenty of continuing coverage from the JW Marriott Grosvenor House in London after this. GG Poker Why? The world more so many players. This is a crazy thing to do. GG Poker broke the Guinness World Record. Welcome to the World it's Series the of best Poker. poker song. The biggest event. poker song. One larger than all of GG Poker. Wow. Traffic reaches all time high. Jump, 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 jump. No way. Trumpet is good. Are you a PKO player? Do you want to learn how to play the optimal strategy in progressive bounty tournaments? GTO Wizard has you covered. Dive into our high-level theory articles and get the optimal solutions you need. Learn to balance the lure of bounties with ICM pressure. Practice PKO spots at every phase throughout the tournament. Master the game and take home the gold with GTO Wizard. At GTO Wizard, we have all the resources you need to learn how to crush the competition for free. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top-up, up up to $250. Become a part of BetACR.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. I do strongly approve of this raise. Yeah, with nothing. 
And with so many draws out there, obviously, Seidel recognizing that with some frequency, this raise in position is going to be attached to one of those sorts of holdings, as opposed to something like two pair or a set, which have him beat. And two pair or set is a rather large part of Juan Pardo's range. Um, looks like he is going to just look to get this in and just an amazing spot here for top two. At this point, your opponent's put in so much of a stack, he's never folding. Let's just push the rest in there and hopefully hold with the 70% favorite equity. Are we simply targeting jacks through kings? Look, the guy raised to 125K, that's so, he's got 80K back. He's never folding, really. Let's get it in here and now then, says Seidel, and he's going to have five outs for the time being as a little cooler Works its way to this feature table. 465k chip pot. And unless Seidel can improve, he's going to be left with just 155k. Now a nine on the turn means the four will no longer work. As you see it wiped from the board, and it's two outs one time for Seidel. And the Jack of Diamonds will deliver a healthy pot Juan Pardo's way. Can hardly believe his good fortune, it looks like. Eyebrows raised. I mean, it's always relieving to dunk. Looks like Henrik Eklund going to be part of the rebalancing efforts in the room. I, I can do that. The way over here, it's just always sleep the entire time. The way home, it's always awake the entire time. What's it? Do you remember what it's called? This documentary? I'll I'll ask. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. That sounds like good. Uh, unwind. Aces for Nikolai Mamut facing the 4500 trip open from Haxton, who had to put two fives into the muck 14. not long ago. Here, a different proposition as he's able to open from the hijack, but again, a three bet. What he's having to contend with. Yeah, and we've actually seen Nikolai Mahmoud um, three bet at a pretty high frequency at our feature table. <coughs> Two fives going to come along. Haxton, not afraid to play a pot out of position. Should be. <laughs> He's eight threes up against top set as matters get worse for the two fives. Let's have spades and backdoor wheel prospects, hence the 5% equity. So with top set, you tend to see like really small bets. Obviously you hit it so hard, occasionally you check. Haxton contemplating maybe a raise from time to time. He's got the little backdoor spades. Uh, yeah, he's going to check raise. He's targeting yeah, these so kind of hands that, I mean, she's you know, the pocket video. pairs lower than ace. Of course, the unpaired like broadways that would attack. It sounds like his voice hasn't gotten that bad. So actually is a great spot here. You're holding top set and your opponent check raises you. You're like, well, this guy has to be bluffing or he's occasionally in some kind of lower set. I mean, Haxton really asking a big question of Mamut here, who's three bet on the button, obviously is going to contain ace X with some decent frequency. Test comes back positive as Mamut hangs in there. And now suddenly Haxton with the wheel gutty and a path to victory, but is he going to be able to see this river as he has bloated this one to 80K already? So I believe that Haxton, when he decided to check raise the flop, would likely give up on most turns, but with the wheel card or a spade dropping off, it's kind of like enough equity to continue with the follow through. Right. I'd be pretty surprised if he slows down here, especially his check raise from 8,500 to 23K is not particularly large. So, I can see how some pocket pairs lower than an ace, they might see that kings, queens, and jack would still call check raise from time to time, given the small sizing. 
and you can obviously blow those hands out rather easily. But let's see if he wants to follow through. It's a big bet here, 65K. The big question here for Mamut is, do I raise to kind of charge these spade hands? If I just call, will two spades follow through with one more barrel on breakouts? Because you obviously want to extract value, the most value you can. Haxton firing 65 into 80. He's got himself in a little trouble. A lot of trouble, frankly. Given how bloated the pot is pre-flop and flop and turn, and what they've got behind, I don't think Mamut needs to be worried about, oh, some kind of spade dropping off and I lose action against like two eights. I think he can still get action from his eights and threes regardless if a, kind of a scary card drops off. Would you mm -hmm. order two if I want a coffee? So I do like that he's just following through with a call here because his opponent likely has very little equity and can still get value from the big hands. And from very little equity to none at all as the 10 hits the river. I would love that. That would be perfect. And now... Haxton can certainly get ambitious at this SPR 260 into 210 if he thought he was up against a big ace, just one pair. Maybe we can get it through, but as it stands, a virtual impossibility. Only deuce five beats Mahmoud, and that doesn't rate to be the kind of kit that Haxton opened with, called a three bet with, and then check raised the flop with, so he knows he's nutted. Snapped and off. Yeah, Haxton gets busted. Yeah, very nicely played up just that call on the turn, allowing, knowing your opponent, right? You know your opponent's a type that potentially could just blast away of 2-5, and you don't want those hands to fold yeah. despite having... After losing that one, Robert Flink sliding into second. And welcome back to the break desk here. Continuing coverage of the 25K GG Super Millions event number one, part of the 2023 Triton Super High Roller Series London, where I welcome longtime friend and professional poker player and broadcaster extraordinaire Maria Ho for the first time to the Triton Super High Roller Series. Maria with over four and a half million dollars in career tournament winnings under her belt, well qualified to sit here and observe some of the best in the world, combined with maybe some of the lesser known in the world doing their bidding here in this very first event, which I understand you got a chance to kind of soak up a little bit of while uh, you were waiting to, to tap in. Yeah, I noticed that there are some interesting characters about already. <laughs> um, so I know that there's been already a lot of exciting action and I'm excited to take it from here and we are excited to have you with us obviously we are going to take a couple of new feature tables as we take you into the triton poker plus app to observe the way that they are stacking up 87 players uh, currently still remaining of the 105 entries total you see the blue table there where we find world series of poker main event champ espen yorstad and how about the coin rivet invitational champ sam grafton the native to the uk seated just to espen's right stephen chidwick another local legend from uh, deal england i believe officially with uh, 372k <laughs> appropriate. in front of him seth davies this is going to be a tough little table we've got on our hands maria yeah, I've noticed, you know, we're definitely lacking some of the players that might be a little bit more lively, uh, but a bunch of tried and true professionals yeah, ready not to, to go. Not to be overlooked, of course, Ike Hacks. And then a quick peek down at the semi-feature table, the red one, uh, our secondary, let's call it, Chris Brewer, the man who really had a wonderful summer and has turned it around, hasn't he? Yeah, Chris Brewer, you know, had a couple of rough goes at it in the last couple years, but as you mentioned, is coming off of a super hot summer. And so 
of course, building up all of that confidence. I'm yeah. sure he's going to show his prowess here. Yeah, new fresh face also at that table to the Triton Tour, Eric Wasserson from Las Vegas. So he's going to be playing in that Luxon Pay Invitational later on this week, getting his feet wet as we send it back down to the chip counts. Brought to you by GG Poker. Outer table coverage there. Also available. Brewer, by the way, has spun it up to over 600,000. That's going to be good for a fifth place overall stack in the event right now. Webster Lim with 633,000 at that tertiary outer table. 633K, good for third overall. Current overall chip leader, Robert, or Roberto, rather, Gomez. 841,000 plus in front of him. There is Squiddy. This is the only reason I even bother uh, to study or be good at poker. I don't, get to play uh, I don't drink that much coffee at the You're table like anymore. It's a real pain in the ass. So much support from Malaysia um, on the yeah. Triton no, Super High Roller well. Series. Yeah. Chun Tong yeah. Xiao yeah. among yeah. those who yeah. lend their support, yeah. as is Jack yeah. Seven yeah. suited, yeah. open to 11,000. And your stat? King Nine suited. Fans on the Ace Ace Three board. Yeah. Do you see that, that jawline yeah. in his profile pic? That's all I can see in your stats pick, by the way. I can't take my eyes off of it. He's all... Is that so CG? Right? That's what I'm saying. Should go get some nice Man has just been molded out of clay. Very Bond villainy vibes, by the way, with the shades. Sure. I mean, we know he won a very handsome purse <laughs> in the main... But those yeah. are rich guy sunglasses. <laughs> and a fairly rich turn for Espen here. As he binks the nine, but Chung Tung Xiao picks up the backdoor clubs. Yeah, very natural continue by your stat on the flop with King High. And now the nines and the aces are still good on the river. Yeah, no follow through on the turn, by the way, from Xiao, who did just sprinkle 8K at the flop. It might be a dinner. So much um, Saturday. You wonder if your stag could perhaps yeah, think about leading for value in really this really spot really now after the check like back on the turn. Looks like he's doing that to the tune of about 32K. The thing is with you though is just, I feel like it's like, your, a quiet night with you is like 2 a.m. Yeah. yeah. You're just, you're, you, you just, you're like me. You're like a bit better. You're like even stronger. You can't, you, you can't, it's always like, you just like, it's perfect for me. Like chatting till late, this is what I enjoy to do. Yeah. So has been hunted value against Tong Xiao. So we swing it over. To our other feature table, where we find Sam Greenwood well, this with is Pocket cooler. Kings raising to 11,000 and very much a cooler from the Triton first time. Eric Wasserson with two black queens, a three bet to 42,000 out of the small blind. Someone joins that table, I can't wait to see how they react. <laughs> and that's not enough, says Greenwood. But look at the price, just 38,000 more. Their stacks to start the hand quite similar, about 60 big blinds effective. And we're, we're talking about hijack versus small blinds, so definitely something that Wasserson is considering. You couldn't really fault Wasserson for considering putting all the chips in the middle here, but definitely going to think about it, you know, if we're talking about the value hands in Greenwood's range, certainly queens do shrivel up against the top of that range, but still, you never know. Greenwood is certainly someone who all can in. take a four bet line light and the money does go all in. Yeah, just a prudent quick check back at the holding by Greenwood. It is confirmed Kings and as such 
happy to sail his stack in the middle, and you can see a grimace on the face of Eric Wasserson, understandably. Very cold deck. And a cold flop as well as spade coverage for Greenwood. Oh, oh my goodness. Did you notice that the second that he just scooched his chair back, the queen came? You know, he didn't even stand up oh, the quite yet. Reds are I'm Complete insanity on the turn as the two outer comes in. Nary a flinch from Greenwood, but his kings are showered, and so is his first bullet, Maria. Yeah. I think so. Yes. Yeah. Just doing some quick accounting. But yes, Greenwood was covered. Good solid form on the timing, slightly. of like pushing the chips in. I don't know. I'm so tired. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thoughtful disgust. I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about being tired. A lot of people straight <laughs> off their flights <laughs> and into the fray. Jeez. Well, you definitely weren't a candidate to get straight off I, of a flight and into the fray. I was going to say, Ali, you know, if I'm uh, quieter for a few minutes, it's a power nap. You two? can wake me up when the next hand starts. Oh, really? Now, Steve O'Dwyer pictured there like handing it. Sam Greenwood something. One of the most legendarily superstitious players in poker often has trinkets of some sort. Yeah, he had a whole two fruit phase. It's only, 20 oh, fruit. it's only 25 mm -hmm. seconds. Various types of fruit being employed for a good Yeah, they give a million time banks. I'm yeah. pretty sure people can corroborate this. I want to say it's a mango. I don't know what I was thinking for serves. either. I had no thoughts in my brain. I was like, I gotta go. Not quite a mango. Something else to do. But a real peach. <laughs> the for worst use of time banks. The turn there. <laughs> it was like I haven't slept in a while. This is a nice yeah. little nap I can exactly. take. <laughs> That's basically what happened. Leaves him with a virtual <laughs> double up. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but I know I'm going to be all in in about 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> there is. Oh, Dwyer. Don't see a mango. I do see like, huh? some sort of possibly new trinket there. And as we see Christoph Vogel saying, going under the hoodie, we can expect that he will be a participant in this pot. Am I allowed to have my phone? Yeah. Six, of course. Just five. Is that okay, or you need some? I need the Ugh. Three players to the flop. Seven, five dues failing to connect with anyone as Selwan defended the big, closing the action. Steve checking it over to Vogel Singh in this multi-way pot. That makes sense. That is Let's Wolf see how Christoph will respond to yeah. the break check from the pre-flop aggressor. And he will close the action with the check back. Turn, delivering flush draws to both Selawan, a Triton first-timer, and of course, more Ooh. importantly, to O'Dwyer who now has the nut flush draw and the best hand. Nuts. That shot side card, by the way, Maria, not to be overlooked for Selawan, perhaps coming into play yeah. to embolden him to fire the 16K. Not surprising to see him take this line after it was checked around on the flop. Thank you. Uh, no, thank you. Appreciate it. Wow. Oh, Dwyer understandably flats and the nine of diamonds puts a four-liner on board, but more importantly, 
puts Rodrigo or high floor, in the lead with top season, pair. So like we're gonna be like eight. We'll be like eight and four. And now you wonder if he I would be disappointed. I is be willing to go for some type of value. It looks like he is going but to like check. Not, just feels like the board is a little a too coordinated to get called by worse. The, it, it's been a bunch of, there's been a lot of turnover. Like there's potential to be Perhaps good. now. Because yeah. like there's a lot of new players. A lot of like they. Dwyer just going to check like back the ace high showdown value. Very kind of exciting. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited, if an expression not like a could of say a thousand yeah. words there. Yeah, pretty disgusted Ultimate. is O'Dwyer, but you're crazy. We're a month away. Yeah. Didn't have so to pay a up. price to get to showdown. We got this brand new young yeah. offensive okay. coordinator, too. Good, uh, it'll be cool to. What is it, hour yeah, delay? Yeah, cool, no, you're talking about Lanning. He, he's the head coach. The, the offensive yeah, coordinator right. came from yeah. Texas San Antonio. He's, uh, he's like 33, I think. Was wants to know when you like could kind of see the that we had last replay year, of him turning a set proven. of queens. If we, if we struggle this year, I don't want to be too old. <laughs> no, no, he just, we just extended landing. Yeah. He's got an extension through uh, 2028. No, I'm excited. This is old and gently. I'm excited to see Justin Holbolt with. Uh, Dude, did you see the contract he got? Yeah, yeah. Fucking Fuck. sick. I'm so happy for him. I mean, it's so cool. He's just like a kid from Sheldon. Just a town. I mean, he's obviously super talented, but he's like a three-story crew from Sheldon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's just a townie. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think with Kellen Moore, it's gonna, I'm excited to see what it looks like. They're going to be sick. And they, just, they might have the best offense. They just drafted, uh, who's the receiver they drafted? The the TCU kid, Quentin Richardson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's like a stud. Yeah. Seth Davies and Chris dude, Brewer. They, they had him throwing like three old dumps to Eckle every, every play yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> Deep in the sports talk streets. I'm not yeah, sure if it's allowed uh, to speak about the NFL when we are in England, hey, you know. I think hey, buddy, only you. the what? European football, the soccer, should be discussed at or, the table. Or cricket. Or cricket. What, what do you have on your arm, Seth? What's that? Oh, this? Uh -huh. It's a blood blood glucose monitor. Oh, no. I just uh, trying Two to get fives and healthier. An eight. Yeah. Not exactly Pretty what Moss had in uh -huh. mind, but... See how, just learn how things, different foods that affect it, you know. Little seabed. So you'll make adjustment based on, like, the results? Yeah, exactly. And it's, a lot of it is, like, easier to improve at than you think. It's just simple things like eating protein first before you eat like carbohydrates is good for it. Okay. Um, just like going for walks after eating big meals is really, really good. Mm -hmm. That one just feels good. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> that really does help digest so much. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> like, you'd, be, you'd be shocked at how much it helps your blood sugar. I'm shocked at that. I like mean, just really, like literally from like a feeling thing. It just, yeah. that's like always something yeah, I'm just, eating too just, much is like want to go walk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just eating a giant meal and then sitting down for an hour is just like a really bad thing to do, which is what everybody does. <laughs> Guilty. Yes, yes it is. Fall, eat a big meal and fall asleep. That has to be the worst. <laughs> yeah. I love the, the eat coma. a big meal, fall asleep. Mm -hmm. It's, I sleep better after I eat a big meal. Drop a nice caloric <laughs> anchor <laughs> right into your abdomen and <laughs> down you go. Go straight to the bottom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Happily, yeah, by the way. Why you sleep or whatever, and you sleep less well. And yep, sleep worse. You're you don't digest as well. Hopefully, they don't play that though, so you get, like, clip a back bath. at my funeral. Yeah. <laughs> it just, it's, it's all Vogel about like, insulin sensitivity too, right? Like all our opening with the ace habits, queen. Like, what loss. We how we eat it, it's just like we're just all turning over the king queen. Diabetic. Yeah, I do think. I will say, I think yeah, pretty nice holding, and you, you see there. him yeah, putting no in doubt. the three bets. Certainly, ward series, it's like hand worthy so sometimes of mixing calls and three can. bets with. Yeah. Got but the nice blockers, except in this case, Vogelsang does have him dominated. Like, it's, it's really sick, you, uh, um, because so blockers like aren't real. Oh, that takes a reading every 15 minutes. So oh, wow. You, like, enter your food, so like sushi is actually really bad for your blood sugar. Oh. So it's like, uh, yeah, that's super just interesting. sees all your spikes, and yeah, yeah, yeah. the whole idea is to limit how big the spikes are and just make it as steady as possible. But yeah, this thing's awesome. 
spiking things like. with this king queen, oh, and this is going to be a very bad development for him doing, as he uh, shares top pair with Vogel saying, but no, advantage Kristoff no, 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 with that ace kicker in a 72,500 uh, chip pot, yeah. bloated really by virtue of Eric's aggressive like line. Yeah, More evidence that blockers are not real with one of the two remaining queens coming on that flop, and this is going to cost Wasserson some of his recently won like chips. Like. <laughs> just you can have fat balls. Yeah, it's just eating like bacon and eggs all day. It's <laughs> like my favorite meal, but I can't do it all day. <laughs> I love bacon yeah. and eggs, man. Why did Seth show up at this featured table and basically tell me everything I do, dietarily speaking, is wrong? But especially, you're very hungry right now. And so them I've talking about food is not helpful. Stone needle. Nice kicker helpful, though, as Vogel flats, you were saying? Yeah, a couple of draws possible, so definitely some cards that could slow down the action. The deuce of hearts is very nice for Vogel Singh's hand, though, with the ace of hearts. Still sticking with that bell, huh? I guess it's, it's kind of redeemed itself. Yeah. Not plush draw acquisition, but Vogel saying yeah, content maybe, to just check with the maybe, flow of play. He just needed to get warmed up. <laughs> Be funny if, it would be funny if a whole table had bells and do we want a big hall and they just start shaking like hold on hold on it's like uh Wasserson <laughs> putting oops um, all the chips it? in you effectively Vogel right saying called it off here is it, it's Mississippi State football it's the only school suddenly that's allowed 485 makers thousand chip pot wow. why are they allowed it, it's the cowboy going yeah. Vogel Sang's way. Cowboys. They were grand. Uh, it's, yeah. it's been a tradition for like a hundred years. That's so. It's always drawing in, lean. But it's just like non-hard. The rule king. is they ha they cannot do it until the snap. His only like path. This one about it. Yeah, yeah. You know, they don't want it to go away. So just like right when the ball gets snapped, every play is just. <laughs> it's That's so, so annoying. Funny. That reminds me of, uh, you know when the World Cup was in South Africa? The and, yeah, because yeah. every fucking game is out of like there was a fucking bee storm. Yep, exactly. Just <laughs> it, yeah, that was so funny. Thank you. Thank you. What's that? Uh, nothing. Yeah, the Vuvuzelas were, were hilarious. What was not hilarious was that beat for <laughs> Wass, of course, who's not amused, but like he's on a bit of a tournament free roll. I what it was, too. I was just like, oh, yeah. dude, is my TV oh, broken? Should have been <laughs> all but showered. Yeah, still has 74 big blinds after you that probably, hand, uh, so certainly deep enough in tune with that all, but you know, to reaccumulate. Oh, yeah. you, would, I, you would be a huge Mike Leach fan. Oh, my Mike, God, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, when he was there. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, he, he was incredible. R.I.P. I like how they would just do like interviews. Bag. They'd be like, which mascot do you think is the best? And he would just like go through if they all fought. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's just like classic, hilarious, smart guy that like wants to look dumb, kind of. You know? Yeah, and the one the one scandal he had seemed like it was bullshit. Yeah, it was the ESPN reporter song. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why it blew up, because it was his song. Yeah, and it was like it was like mostly fictitious the way it was told. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, is this like mine? Classic yeah. reporter bullshit. This is not yours, right? No. Blind versus blind, Davies able to take a breath from the nonstop conversation. <laughs> Dwyer giving up the 5-4. Yeah, he said he like locked him in the room. Yeah, but, like a bunch of but it was like right he just back told in him the to like get out of the light. He's yeah. like, yeah, you shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like you. It wasn't like he got like locked in the storage <laughs> closet. <laughs> Meanwhile, 
Elsewhere in the room, we find Ike Haxton in the cutoff with a suited connector opening to 11,500 here, just north of the minimum. Chun Tang Xiao, ace eight suited on the button. He's game. I was in Cotswolds last week. Do you know it? It's like, yeah, you've been. No, but I've been in my there. I've heard it's like every night. Yeah. Chidwick. Castro. Jack eight dominated, but sure. taking the price. <laughs> no trouble on the horizon for his holding as it comes king, queen, five. Bottom pair for Ike. The best hand. Amount of my taste, but that's like, no, I took my parents and my family. Is the preflop aggressor? So wondering if he can go ahead and see bet here. See how doesn't choose to continue with some of that back door potential and this is going to be an easy takedown for yeah. Ike. Well, nothing's ever easy, it would seem, but yeah. certainly that is on the easy side of the spectrum for Haxton, who is such an accomplished player, longtime pro, Thank you very, much. very well respected and well liked in the community. Yeah, I mean, longtime Triton participant, 7.4 million roughly in Triton earnings across 24 caches, but still hunting his first title. And with a main event title, comes a Jacob and Co. watch, specifically the collaboration timepieces earned by the likes of Henrik Eklund and our No Limit Hold'em and Short Deck main events. They are our official timekeeper at the Triton Poker Series. Not just about the diamonds and sapphires and rubies, but also works of art, truly. Now then, under the gun, King-10 suited. Your stud. Raising it up. I came back like Friday. Xiao, mm -hmm. yeah. ace, jack. Struggling like around eight, eight nine days. Like yeah, overcoming the journey. Yeah. So I thought like you guys. Just flatting. Squiddy, big blind, queen 10, dominated. Somewhat intrusive kit. I'm lucky I don't struggle too much with jet lag. My schedule is so bad to begin with, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. <laughs> Gets out of the way and <laughs> leaves this heads up. Nine five five rainbow. Backdoor hearts in the overs for the preflop aggressor. As we get a look at the view from Chung Tong Xiao's seat. My family is from New York. No C bet. Let's see if Ace Jack feels like activating. Not New York City, but Syracuse, New York, which is much less exciting. Pretty nice board for Ace High, especially when check two. Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Like halfway between New York City and yeah. You know, I have a big university there. Yeah. I have three lockdowns. He, 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 lockdown. he busted day one of the main events, and then we didn't see him for like two days. No, uh, yeah. Your stat giving Xiao yeah. yeah. credit for having a pretty strong range here yeah. to flat his under the gun open. Yeah. Certainly yeah. ace highs will be in there, but also yeah. some of the yeah. pairs yeah. that yeah. play nicely on this texture, you know, yeah. no over cards to be afraid of. So. Yeah, it's like 10s and 8s and 7s and 6s and of course you know could possibly even have a set of 9s which would be a boat actually here um, those would all easily be in Xiao's continuing range but that's an interesting <coughs> turn card Binky as it's aces up now when he was like still a bit of a wild fortune Tong Xiao early days of Vegas he'd be like like near the Sahara 
18. And you see that that turn card allows your stad to lead, feeling like yeah, that's really going to go connect outside. more with his check calling range on the flop as the pre flop aggressor. And this bet is designed to get Xiao to fold out some of those pairs I was talking about, those middling pairs. That's not going to love seeing an ace on the turn, but unfortunately for your stad, Xiao's in the weeds there with the ace jack. I'm sure. sure. Bowling and hall. It's also quality because you can go randomly and not tell anyone. Backdoor diamonds him. now show oh, up. Yeah, he's always there. So you can't come down from hall to nice. your house and be like, I want to surprise that. He might not be there. Yeah. He will be there. Really just thinking that this king high could be good. If we're talking about your stat potentially wanting to attack those middling pairs in that part of Xiao's range that perhaps can't withstand a second bullet with this turn and river bet. Looks like the sizing on the smaller side about third pot. Yeah, feels like a flick it in type of scenario for Xiao. Very much so. And I said Espen thinks that the king high could be good. Obviously the check call on the flop sure reflects that, but then he got busy representing the ace on the turn, unfortunately for him. That's actually the kit that well, Xiao's got. So right. we see him make that call, and he will be thrilled to be shown king high, as opposed to a better ace or the diamonds, or any other sort of hand that might have him beat. So small misstep there for your stud. Is that long? Dude, that's small country, bro. I mean, how far can you get Denmark? Plays under the Norwegian banner. 152,000 and change in career Triton earnings. Just one stop under his belt coming in. North Cyprus. But it stops everywhere, obviously. Isn't there like an express train to Hull? Marley Bone to Hull. Geordie Express. The Tom Mack Express. I did spend more time in Germany. I never really have. Seems like a really nice country. Bro, if, if Moss is coming, we do something flare like charter a helicopter or some shit. Yeah. yeah. Make the great man pay. That's fine, you probably should, yeah. Oh, you haven't been in Berlin yet? Never been to Berlin. Um, I've flown through a lot of German airports, and I spent like two days in Hamburg once, but barely any time in Germany at all. Everybody knows Frankfurt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might even get a focus stop in Berlin one of these days. That would be nice. Yeah, I think that might happen. Yeah, inside, it? No, just merely speculating. Merely speculating that it could happen. Heckling moving all in there. No takers. Yeah, Frankfurt's one of the oh, nice guys got dropped. Only mm -hmm. that was the UBC, that two was European drop. cities with a direct flight to Vegas. Yeah. yeah. Three Syria, then there's a guy. The Chinese people think Frankfurt is the city of German uh, capital. Post robbery? <laughs> post robbery? <laughs> yeah, post robbery. Post -robbery. You were shaking up. Right, oh, okay. yeah. I couldn't be responsible no, for how you were really yeah. No, no, no. I mean, like a couple yeah, of Yeah, I wasn't around in that. Like, oh, I maybe Frankfurt just started playing poker in the Maxine. Or Amsterdam. Yeah, it seems like. When I came to Vegas, well, Berlin has almost no direct flights to, to North pass America. By Frankfurt, yeah. I had to pass by Frankfurt. 12 and a half. There must be some direct flights from Berlin to North America, right? Attention, playing into the 25 game is you have two minutes for when you get a break. You want to walk up and start taking your seats. Please remind you that you want to. Grafton, 6 7 suited. The razor from the button. Yes. Samuel Jew. The customer defending his big blind, coming up empty on an ace ace 10 board. Grafton with the flush draw and position. Jew knuckling over.
Grafton. <laughs> Easy bet and take it. Little lick of the lips. Uh, that, 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 that one, Squiddy that one, sporting a mustache. There's a camera angle. Has to By the way, I don't think it's November. I don't, I'm not sure to what we owe the. Yeah. I'm going to say I like it, though. What do you think? I hate it. A lot it. of the euphoria is kind of taken out of it. It's polarizing. Practice. The stash is polarizing oh, yeah. on him. I'm not a stash guy, if I'm honest. For sure. At all. And then you watch it live, and it's like, what the I don't think. And there's just a lot of like my disdain for it is here, going to right? stop Squiddy. <laughs> in fact, oh, it might even embolden him to continue the process. If I know my man at all. I, right, I would, I would say the latter. Meanwhile, process beginning to play out here as Jazzy Lee has made it 64,000 to go, leaving himself 1K back. Is that right? Yeah, just. Effectively, you can, you can still fall all in, <laughs> waiting to the flop to put the last so chip in. He, he can even and face the queen turns into a hard draw with two overs. So Brewer, who <laughs> okay. yeah. had the medicine with black queens, <laughs> he's got his two More of a fair fight now after the flop. Equity is very close with two cards to come. Oh, look. Uh, Lee on his feet. I don't think he feels like he's drawing dead, but obviously drawing a little bit thinner after a five of spades rolls yeah. off on the turn in a 140K pot where he needs to improve. This is an ace or a heart. We're on order, but instead the 10 of clubs will polish off a 25K bullet for Jazzy Lee. Damn, that's a smooth swing. It's got a great swing. Off the pole, too. Lee, Sounds try familiar. first timer. Yeah, I mean, yes. Playing under the Chinese banner. Mm -hmm. We've seen so much enthusiasm yeah, coming from five. that part of the world. Yeah. Right. So we flip it back over to a pot in progress here over at the primary feature. He's Jack Seven board, top pair for Isaac Haxton. The best of what's around. Chidwick, 7-5. Appears to have been the opener here from the hijack. Presume that it was a raise and a flat from Grafton's King-10 suited, which has turned into a Broadway gut shot. Neither of the boys looking to fire. And on the turn now, Chidwick, along with Haxton, picking up a heart draw. Paxton just playing in flow on the flop, but certainly has a lot more reason to bet now on the turn. It's the type of hand where this weak ace can't go for all three streets of value, especially four ways. Checked around again on the turn, and the king comes on the river, which means Jew. Rivering two pair here. A little bit afraid of that queen 10 combo, though, with the check. It would appear that he's turning it into a bluff catcher. I don't think that he has designs to check raise this combination of two pair. Again, Afraid of someone being nutted in this spot. You know, Queen 10, clearly very likely if we see Grafton coming in from the cutoff with a hand like King 10 suited, then certainly the Queen 10 suited would be included in the flatting range as well. Two rounds of checks on the flop and the turn. And certainly one of these hands 
at some point could have been a candidate to fire, but instead, the third street of checking and Samuel Jew will take it down. He's got my vote for best sunglasses out there. Yeah. From what I've seen. I don't know, your stud. Mm. You know, flavorful. Jew, by the way, 173,000 in career Triton earnings across a couple of caches. Joined us just once at Cyprus earlier this year. Did play the 200K Luxon Pay Invitational. <laughs> Did make a final table in the 40K 8 Max. Not in Monte Carlo now, but. We call it fizzy water. Fizz water with bubbles. <laughs> fizzy water. What? <laughs> I feel like I'm getting a hearing test. I, I do too, but I think we're going to pass. Because I think if we could well, hear it, okay. that's a good a thing. Yeah, but how do we know what we're not hearing right now? That's Our apologies, truly, obviously. Right. We are efforting to address the this is what happens when tone. And remember how you would just step inside those vans? Yes, the mobile hearing <laughs> testing yes. center. <laughs> in elementary well, we school. Like, oh, well, at least we get... It depends on how much carbonation there is. Bro, Topo Chico. Bro, listen. Topo Chico is the best bro, bro, I got, you got 50 pounds. We'll go. We're going to line up three sparkling waters. You're going to do Pepsi Challenge, and you're going to tell me which is Perrier. Right. <laughs> no. You, 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 this is your favorite water, bro. If you, if, you, if you line me up with my favorite, I don't know, my favorite fucking football team or whatever, if you, you know, I'm just saying, you should be able to, you, you should be giving me odds. It's your favorite. You're not gonna make it's not, you're not gonna miss your favorite. <laughs> you're gonna just know that from the level of carbonation, this is the superior water. It has to be. <laughs> and it looks good. It's aesthetically pleasing as well. The bottle. You want you want aesthetically pleasing water now? The bottle, yeah. Okay, we're on we're on television here, well. You don't want to put like some cheap ass. Top pair against bottom right, pair right. here. Cool. Yeah, mate, we could get an endorsement. Try, try it and Perry. Should we? are going to do a synergy yeah. thing. Yeah. There'll be a Firing. fucking special edition bottle with Michael Soyser's face on the, on the cover. Quarter pot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Squiddy and Henrik hatching a plan here to exploit Michael Soyser's likeness, <laughs> perhaps, in a special edition fizzy water bottle. Meanwhile, nothing special about the turn here for Haxton, who... Did make the call. No improvement for either hand, but Chidwick can certainly pursue value from worse, you know, definitely some other 10 X's that he has outkicked, you know, hands like Jack-10, some of the Broadway 10Xs, the 10-9 suited that would continue from the small blind. And certainly some other pairs as well. We, we play poker at Orbeez with his, with his neighbor. And they play three, play three hands. Second barrel gets it done. The loser, last place, plays the winner wine bottle. It's fucking clear, right? Like, it's a good strap. Like, and they play one, two, and then goes to five, ten. Goes in two blind levels. When someone's eliminated, it goes five ten. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I won. Obviously, I won a bottle of. I won both the games, so I got a bottle. Of, well, I got a bottle of Orpi. You know, this is going to be a good bottle of wine, by the way. Loving that. So we can we can have that one evening. That's great. <laughs> I should really. Yeah. Yeah, he's. When he said, "Do you want one for myself?" I was like, "Yes, I definitely do." <laughs> <laughs> I will gladly carry that home. Don't threaten <laughs> Henrik with a good time. <laughs> Yeah. <coughs> 18. 
Craft and open the action here with the suited Jack-10, but Haxton wakes up with Kings on the button. Forty-seven big blinds for Haxton. Certainly going to be looking to get the chips in the middle if he can get Grafton to oblige. Now Grafton's hand is pretty. It's certainly you know not good enough to go all in, but perhaps would be interested in calling this three bet when it gets back around to him. Three hundred. No, much less. One fifty. Two thirty five. Two twenty five. Two thirty five including that, I think. Yeah. Something interesting to note is that Hecklin was in the big blind here with a sub ten big blind stack. Sometimes that makes the three betting range a little bit more narrow, a little bit more honest to value. Not always, but something that Grafton is definitely aware of in this spot, but of course, suited Broadway, who could resist? Indeed, extra 30K invested. 108.5 in the middle, 8.5 dues. Interaction with the eight of clubs for Grafton, but problems, of course, up against the Kings. Let's see what kind of size Ike comes with. Yeah. Yeah. It only worked for that one event. <laughs> Very safe board for the Kings. Certainly going to size it in a way that he can just go three streets of value. Set up a nice shove on the river. Two K designed to tempt. Grafton hoping that if he can't shed Haxton here, that some of his backdoor equity will come in on the turn. And Haxton setting the trap. Oh. The 10 rolling right <sighs> off. And if we talk about SPR here, Haxton with 138K back and over 200K in the middle, surely Grafton turning top pair now might feel inclined. Uh, well, I mean, listen. Can't love it, but. Well, just because the call, but remember that the sizing of the check raise from Grafton, which was obviously designed to try to win the pot right there maybe, or you know, set himself up with acquired equity to barrel once more was such that a lot of hands are going to be retained, mm -hmm. one would think. And Haxton, having played the hand in this manner with these two kings, now facing the 85K bet. You see the brow furrowing here. All in. Nevertheless, in comes the jam, and Squiddy makes the call, has Haxton well covered, and a bit disappointed, of course, to see he's up against the overpair. <laughs> Ace on the river does not help him, and Haxton is going to haul in a 484K chip pot. Take a big bite of calamari. <laughs> Squiddy down to 175. Would you believe me, Ollie, if I told you that beneath that mask, 
Haxton has a stash very similar to Grafton's. I knew I wanted a nine of clubs, not a ten. No, not that thick. I saw Haxton walking down the street no, with stop. his mask off. No, no. I'm, this is, I'm being dead serious. And this was just yeah, a couple I days ago, so unless he shaved it off in a matter of 48 oh. hours, him and Grafton are rocking the same stash. <laughs> so hard. That's insane. You got to see it to believe it, and I, really I saw do. it. I really do need to see it to believe it. They are trolling him. They gave him, like, two glasses fucking No, no, no. They were trolling It's cunning. I'm going to steal your parry, Sam. Or Espen's, whichever one of you. You ought to first, though. Oh, it wasn't you. Grafton, undaunted, right back in the saddle with the King Jack. As all I can think about is this mustache you described. <laughs> well, I mean, you have two drinks. I, I have none. We are, we are, we are missing one Terrier. Yeah, it's coming. <laughs> I hope. Wait, you're warm? No callers. For Sam? I ordered the coffee, like, also. Coffee has been good, but this one is kind of cold. Like, almost cold. It was my fault on him. Yeah, oh, your stat's going to complain about came. someone bringing <laughs> coffee directly <laughs> to his table. I had the same hand as you. <laughs> Is it good coffee? I, I would take cold coffee right now. Throw some ice in there. Make it an iced coffee. It'll be just as good. Well, I confess earlier I asked someone for an iced coffee, and they said we don't do iced coffees. Sure. And my first I'll thought was, now all I'm that's required is hot coffee and ice, is, is it not? Did you also ask if Henry was going to Starbucks in <laughs> London and I did. <laughs> just threw out the chai tea latte order as well? Yeah, I th I'm pretty sure there are Starbucks in London, by the way. The pushback I got from Captain Kilbane was savage and unnecessary. Your start? Feels like the open under the gun with pocket sixes is necessary, and Haxton in turn <laughs> feels like a flat with ace jack. Is you were rooting against me, now I'm rooting against that. In a similar <laughs> sitch. Not enough rooting. He's 10 7. Puts Haxton in front. One time Macau. So that's been <coughs> Stares at the three over cards, but obviously could represent this kid. It's known to everyone that this guy Bjorn has a piece of someone else. Check, check. Number four on the turn. I think <laughs> that a check out of Haxton actually makes your stat feel worse about where his sixes are at relative to Haxton's check back range. You would think that, you know, if Haxton had some of the semi bluffs, some of those king queens, king jack, etc. Those might have elected to go for a bet on the flop, but the check back really feels like a strong check back range a lot of the time. Certainly, you know, 10 X's can be in there, some weaker ace X's as well. Do you know why he's not playing? Won't like this turn bet out of Haxton, but 10K, such an attractive price. But yet, well, where do you really want to go with the sixes? And you see your stad just going to fold. Who do you have? Uh, oh, yeah. You know him? I know of him. I don't know him personally. But. Don't do you? It's kind of annoying, because obviously one of the best things about it was, like, I like morale. Like, I'm sure this guy's great, but 
I'd like to know, you know, and then I'll, I said I'd do it again because I was doing the dave, and then they just said, uh, but give, give him a really substitute really scene. Really but anyway, I'm sure it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Meet some of the other ones. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, mine is also well, cold. Um, I got Marius. Marius. Tobix. Oh, okay. That's also from the same crew. I'm sure little Dave's pulled some strings. Hecklin, all in with ace four off suit as Chinwick on the button has an ace five suited and a stack deep enough to get involved. Show me King Queen. DV does I guess we don't make the call, here. asks Why would you say <laughs> to show a king queen. <laughs> <'Cause I don't laughs> that's an insane thing to say. I mean, that's just, wow. Uh, it's like you've never played tournament poker no, before. No, now obviously I'm going to spike a four if I said that. Oh, that could happen. Yeah. On the way to me flopping a wheel. There we go. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> They're going to do me like that. Ace, three, right, four, so forward, Hecklin. <laughs> Makes top two. <laughs> Chidwick with the wheel gutty. 6-6 six, six in the five plays. Oh, my God. Jack in the five plays, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're that, right. That's, that's, that's the most comedy. Now. <laughs> Three. Clean river there. As aces and right? fours were what did I at tell risk. You? Deuce five or a jack. Right. And Chidwick would have showered the bullet. But instead, Hecklin able to double up. See, Sam, all you see is fear. I see opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you should post that on Instagram. Spoken like somebody <laughs> who just yeah. sucked out. Three thousand, six thousand blinds. As Ike has over half a million. Good for the chip lead at this feature. Chidwick in second. Hecklin still short, sub 20 bigs, but still also very early here in this GG. Super Millions kickoff event for our London Festival. Most of the load being carried by Grafton and Hecklin. Oh, Maria, I quite frankly am <laughs> quite pleased that we didn't lose. Hecklin. Sam, are you saying you pack differently for poker tournaments depending on the weather? Yeah, well, you're going to be <laughs> going out in the evening or whatever. What the fuck are you on about? <laughs> you're telling me you pack the same for EBT Prague as you do for EBT Barcelona. You obviously don't, right? 90%. Excluding like one heavy jacket. Yeah. If you look Bro, at my I'm bag, going you outside. would not you be able to tell the difference. <laughs> okay, I might not have like swimwear. I'll give you that. But. I mean, you might. It might be an indoor pool. Yeah, but then I'll have like maybe one or two pairs. But like, if you're going somewhere else, you'll have like four pairs maybe. Fair. I mean, you don't take shorts that you can see plug and you do take them to other. Well, if you go to the gym. I don't take shorts anywhere. <laughs> Uh, and Michael only takes shorts, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought all of these people did cold plunges in the morning, Ollie, so oh, why so wouldn't they bring their swim trunks? Five years. That's how it works. Trip tens for Grafton as he's got a nice little plunge. Did you drink the Perrier before you all in? Sorry? Drink the Perrier before you're all in. Chidwick's oh, king, queen. <laughs> After that, right? Knuckles. <sighs> Understanding that this texture can certainly connect pretty well with a lot of Grafton's pre flop 
flatting range against Chidwick's cutoff open. But Grafton got sneaky with that check back on the flop. Third club rolling off in the 39K pot here. Chidwick not biting. K on the turn. Falls <laughs> one in. Eklund <laughs> very entertained. <laughs> David. Yeah. Play down. <laughs> uh, almost coming up on the stretch. Now, see that one you want us to see it, so you're clearly not bluffing. Mm -hmm. Actually, I have a good David Yan, APT Berlin story to complete the circle, but I told it too many times, so not, maybe there's another time. Well, you can't tell us you have a story and then not tell it. It's like a, I told it the story many, I must have told you the story, though. Eklund. Jack eight suited. Early position dominated by uh, bit, bit Grafton's I think it's Jack ten suited. As he inquires as to the state of Henry Stack. Thirty five. Grafton on the attack. Three betting it. Hecklin certainly can have some light opens off of his stack size. And, you know, there's going to be a lot of hands that are just going to be in the race fold category to the three bet. Hecklin calls the extra 35,000. That's a pretty big commitment off of his remaining 97, Maria, with Jack eight suited. It, it is, and certainly loving the uh, suited prospects he sees now on that flop. <coughs> a seven five trade with a couple of hearts will suit him just fine. And one can imagine the remaining 62 could somehow work its way into the middle. Not sure how Grafton's going to approach things. Sometimes this could feel quite strong when you have somebody opening off of a sub 20 big blind stack and then calling the three bet. You know, certainly there are going to be some traps in there with the most premium of pocket pairs. That's the best result that Hecklin could have hoped for. A lot of chips already in the pot, and he's not even going to have to see a run out. And Grafton was ahead with the Jack 10. Sure was. Check jam. Picking off an extra 15K from Squiddy Stack as the Darjeeling Express appears to have arrived here. I don't know if you played last time, but maybe the last time you played the Trident, they still had the 30 second shot clock. Right. Now we're doing the 20, 25, yeah, 30. Yeah, I need to get that app actually. I've been a bit lazy, I'll get that app and then I can check it and see it enhances it better. I'm eyeballing it at the moment. It kind of creeps up on you. Have you tried updating it? 
Stop by updating it. You mean it's right now? 13? 13. Just there. Kings again. I have one without Kings. What did we do? Ah, Jack. Some high. people have Ace 4 of Diamonds. I had the same hand. <laughs> A library. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> one caller, and it's the one that has the ace four dominated. Chun Tong Xia defending from the big, understandably. 39k into the middle, and queen jack three. No diamonds. Not what Chidwick had in mind. Yeah, both players coming up empty here, but Chidwick. Because of the range advantage, might just find the natural continue. Indeed. Able to haul it in with said natural continue of 10K. Another suited ace for Chidwick, this time ace nine up front. Takers. Until now, Chun Tong Xiao, pocket 10, small blind. Obviously, a lot of hand Maria, but against the up front raise, we do see some hesitation to maybe come out in three bet. So the flat. And another table for two as the boys go on their second date. Date delivers a set to Chun Tong Xiao on a very coordinated jack high board where Chidwick has bottom pair backdoor club aspirations. Chidwick understands that there's going to be a pretty big portion of Xiao's calling range from the small blind that's going to connect, connect really well with this flop. A lot of the suited middling cards all over that board. Tens full of jacks. Yes. See how it just has too much hand to want to fire. You favor a little sprinkle from Chitwick here or just check back and then bluff catch? I mean on dry rivers. It feels like a really great hand that has strong showdown value, but what would happen if you sprinkled in a little bet and got raised? And so he is going to check back and exercise that pot control. And as you mentioned, with the plans to bluff catch, especially on innocuous rivers such as the four of clubs, you know, just one of those things where he could catch a queen X or a king X type bluff out of Seattle. And not even half pot sizing out of Xiao here. But does feel pretty value-y. You know, even a 10x can certainly go for value considering the check on the flop and the check on the turn out of Chidwick. Oh, 
and the discipline of Stevie Chidwick. Yeah. Not even a little bit curious. Not a post-flop biscuit out of the pre-flop razor to be added. You went to the Peruvian place in Malabon yesterday? Say that again? You went to the Peruvian place in Malabon? Yeah. The one we went with the girls that time? Yeah. How do you know? <coughs> ah, I got the invite, though. Not from you, though. <laughs> you obviously don't think of me, but some people do. Well, for some people, I'm still... I wasn't in charge. Charge. You're always in charge. Yeah, Malibon, it's your hood, bro. I'd, I'd forgotten about you, honestly. I'm sorry. Yes. That's all I'm just saying. Where'd you go after? Uh, just back here. Well, back to the hotel. To be honest, this Peruvian wasn't like, I was eating fully vegetarian. Then. But it's still it was, sick. It was bad for a vegetarian. Was it? Yeah, it was good. They have like. No, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. Okay. They have eight, they have a whole section on the menu called. Soil. Oh, yeah. Maybe. It was a good night, though. It was delicious. They what have a, a like whole like section a of the menu soil. Yeah. Where, right. called soil. Where land did and soil differ. Ah, because land is like <coughs> animals, land animals, oh, okay, right? Right. Soil is soil is like stuff that grows. Yeah. Soil is <coughs> inedible, <coughs> is what soil is. But I get what he's saying. Uh, we went to... Um, and now, all of a sudden, you're not so hungry, Ali. Uh, what's it called? No, nah, I'm starving. <laughs> Not to go to that Peruvian place that he's talking about, but you know. Shit, Your stud. Called, man. I haven't been there since looking night. to feed his appetite with Queen you Nine suited. You change, bro. You yeah. Mature. See how? Uh, Jack Ten suited. Clats the button. That invites Chidwick in with the pocket fours, which come up empty on an A7 3 board, but that's gonna annoy are me coincidentally moment. the best hand. Going to be tough, though, for Chidwick to find showdown cheaply. This feels like an easy situation for a lot of the other players behind him to perhaps try to rep this ace high board at some point. That could be helpful, though, to Chidwick. Just the additional equity. He doesn't know that he doesn't need it, but it helps nonetheless. Round of knuckles on the flop. Second check out of Chidwick. And let's see if your stad with the heart draw will look to get busy. Obviously, this line could certainly contain a sex from Espen, despite the ultra dry texture on the flop. Maybe, in fact, as a result, of the ultra dry texture, where he's not too worried about letting the turn card roll off. If that deuce didn't come on the turn, giving Chidwick a gut shot to the wheel, he wouldn't be considering a call against this delayed C bet out of your stad, but going to come along. His hand is still good here as Espen's 30K barrel got flatted. And remember, Chidwick was in the big blind, closing the action, taking a price. So it's not a given that he has an ace. And with range advantage, might Jorstad fire once more? Scandal. Yeah, and certainly plausible, as you mentioned, that Jorstad will check some ace -Xs on the flop multi-way. So certainly not discounted that he couldn't have top pair in this spot as played, and Chidwick understands that. is the bluff from your stat 75,000 into 105 
Chidwick a little bit curious, as you can see, but. What a relief for Espen, <laughs> by the way, once you get that curiosity vibe from Chidwick. You understand that Queen High is not going to be a winner at showdown if he clicks call. But perhaps the process of trying to work his way back up to the high water mark has begun for Espen Yorstad, who's been on the wrong end of a number of exchanges here at the feature. Obviously, he was on the right end of the lion's share of the exchanges once upon a time when it mattered the most as he took down that World Series of Poker main event title. Personal friends with our own Henry Kilbane, by the way. They spend a tremendous amount of time with one another, also creating content. I know they shacked up out in Thailand together along with some other friends. Very much health and wellness minded is Espen. He's not going to be eating a big, big meal just before bed and then passing out like me and you, no. huh? The man is all about the soil part of the menu. Is he vegetarian? No, <laughs> no, no, no. It's like, no, stop. King Jack suited turns into lovely kit here on the ace queen nine board where Grafton defended the dusty jack six. Should be an easy release here, and indeed it is in the face of the follow through. Things have been going rather well for Chun Tong Xiao. Here at the feature table, Maria? Yeah, I haven't really seen him get out of line, and he's, you know, gotten away in the right spots, picking up a lot of small pots, padding his stack without too much chaos and no big confrontations and being on the wrong ends of coolers. And that's the way you want to do it on a day one is just slow and steady. No doubt about it. Raise and take it for Chidwick from the butt. Paxton shoots it up at the jacks. What's the other place? Scott Seaver tweeted about it, and I was like, I don't fucking tweet about it because I went there. It's called, um, it's like just off strip. It's like a bar. Anyway, it's fucking good. Yeah, like it's another like little spot where they have like it's live cover bands. No, they have like cover bands or whatever. Okay. It's called. It's got some rogue vague like Americana name as well. Like, I got this. Bottom two. Uh, you make, you make, you're making me regret my phone. For Samuel uh, Jew here. Uh, as he was the lone Nick customer against the under the gun open yeah, from Haxton, who 
Isn't going to be in love with the ace and the king texture, but of course can rep that kit. A feudal 9,000. That's the only day I'm jealous. Whoever wins 10 cases for the time being, delivered forward. I have them in my sights, I think. Tournament. Certainly yeah, the potential man. for a lot of bad turn cards for King-3, and especially because you don't block the strong ace-axes. I like this fast play here, just check-raising right away. That's going to get rid of the jacks with no real backdoor possibilities. Making things easy on himself, and oh, in turn... <laughs> On Haxton as well Mate, with out, that the check raise. It's like the summer in the UK. Where do you I don't see one. I live in Rio. I mean, look at the window. You see Where, did you hmm? Where did you study? Where did you study? In which city did you study? In New York? Um, <coughs> no, uh, in yeah. Providence, Rhode Island. Where did I go to university? Yeah. Uh, in Providence, Rhode Island. It's fuck yeah, it's fucking brilliant, bro. Where are you going to go? Well, it sounds like everyone is in Florianopolis. Yeah, they, all go, they all go for it, but yeah. yeah. yeah it's not good, or? Uh, won't it be cold in the WQ? Oh. I think it might be oh. not very hot. On what side do you study? Uh, study law and business. Law and business. Cool. 12. Yeah, I would check with the guys, but I think it's like pretty cold at that time. Now it's like 22 Grafton, ace five suited, cut off open. King deuce, defense, and bottom pair. Up against top pair for Haxton. Quick check. Eight. Squiddy. Says so 8,000. Quarter pot effective. <coughs> Somewhat interesting for Haxton here with the bottom pair and the back door clubs. Grafton opened off of 22 big blinds. So an effective stack, not all that deep. And now things getting a little bit interesting for Haxton as the 8K call delivers a king high flush draw. To his arsenal, which is currently outgunned, of course, by the aces. Thank you. And when we <coughs> talk about Haxton's calling range there from the big blind, when he defends, certainly going to have all the suited combos in the mix. We'll figure it out. will remember you. I have good reports in it. After the check check on the turn, <coughs> Haxton perhaps wondering whether or not he can turn this King Deuce into something. Instead, he settles on the check. Fairly wet texture. Might Grafton do the same, or is he going to hunt a little bit of value? We've got our answer as mm -hmm. fires 31,000. That will presumably get through. The King of Clubs is so interesting, and I feel like if Haxton doesn't lead that river, certainly there could be some devilish thoughts running through his mind. Grafton, 79K back. Uh, and it goes Haxton. 
check here really punishing grass and going for value on the river though when he bet the river. So certainly not going to see Grafton mucking without some serious thought. He's trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together, Maria, in terms of exactly what sort of kit takes the line that Haxton did. Got a cutoff open. Ike is willing to defend a wide variety of hands. Against a min raise. Check called the 8K. Check, check on the turn. And this check jam on the strength of that king of clubs earns Haxton. A tidy little pot as we head to the break. Squiddy laid down the winner. One can't blame him, though. That was a lot of heat to be taking with the likes of an ace five. Good day. Remind me not to go into Haxton's kitchen. I can't stand the heat. <laughs> and you see Squiddy well aware that maybe, just maybe, Haxton was out of line. He said it could be when Squiddy asked if it was Queen 8 as you get one last look at the chip count spread across both feature tables and the outer table brought to you by Poker Stake. When we return from the break, blinds will be 4,000, 8,000. That break is where all players are headed at present. Here in event number one of the 2023, 2023 Triton Super High Roller Series, London, Ali Nijan Maria Ho back with you at the desk. Any takeaways there from that frame of play, Maria? Anything stood out to you as particularly interesting? It's about what you would have expected. You know, once we saw the feature table draws, we knew that there were a lot of great pros in the mix, players that, of course, have a lot of history together, an amazing understanding of the game, and I think you saw that play out. Yeah, no question about it. Now, I am going to work my way out and give way to Henry Kilbane, who will be taking over the duties for me. Maria, you're going to stay right there, and, of course, we hope you will stay right there as well. As In just a few minutes' time, we will resume coverage of the GG Super Millions. Keep it close. GG Poker Why the world more so many players This is a crazy thing to do GG Poker Broke the Guinness World Record Welcome to the World it's Series the of Poker, poker song. The biggest event. poker song Now larger than all of GG Poker Why? Why? Stop it, which is all time five Jump, 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 jump No way Jump, 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 jump Jump, 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 jump Jump, 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 jump Jump, 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 jump Elevate your poker skills to a whole new level with GTO Wizard's free study plans. These step-by-step -step guides are designed to help you master MTTs and the fundamentals of Game Theory Optimal Poker. Each step includes assignments, resources, and videos to help you master MTTs, implement ICM into your strategy, and help you utilize our software. From engaging drills to insightful articles, each step is a journey towards mastery. So what are you waiting for? Try it today. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top-up, up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience.
because you know you're thinking about a difficult spot and you know a large buy-in tournament. But okay. No, but you can end up looking like Albert Einstein in a hurry. I can kind of see it happening already. Yeah, uh, Froelicious here for Petrangelo, who did check the turn, a check back from Saliba, and now a four-liner shows up on the end. See how Nikki P feels about it. Yeah, dangerous four-liner too is. Um, the eight is actually a reasonable part of Saliba's range. He might come in with block bet, though. Perhaps setting the price himself. Check is pretty standard as well. The best time, the best time is like uh, when Trident time, like February, March. It's always the best. I'm just watching these hands move. It's quite a soothing sight. It is. I've been there for one year now. Winter time, I think. Still yeah, the nails now, kind of a little bit of that, just rhythmic. Yeah. That's it. Back to the poker. Nine thousand on the river from Petrangelo, mesmerized here in the booth. By oh, we still got a view. The head massage. Top left. Volume expanding. But it's yes, actually, back to the poker. okay, go ahead. Respectfully, Randy is starting to get a little bit sensual for me. Maybe not for Nick, who isn't a scumbag. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that you mentioned it, so I didn't have to mention the scumbag <laughs> part of it. You scumbag? Gosh. Well, Justin might be thinking there's something scummy about this sizing here, right? 43,000 facing a bet of 9K. Are we getting milked, or is this a cheap path to a bluff? I actually feel that Saliba is strongly considering bluff raising this, as there's a lot of 8Xs in his range. Um, check back turn, 9.8s, pocket 8, 7.8. Boom. Get to know Justin Saliba. Well, he may have yet to cash in a Triton event. It isn't for lack of heart, as we can see here. Look at Petrangelo. Not instantly convinced. So Petrangelo is just asking myself, is this ever like a two-pair value bet? Three, um, not three-pair, but you know. Two pair set, or is it only an 8x situation? Because that really changes things. Where if you're my opponent can value raise, nicely done, Petrangelo. Wow, he's good. Picks it off, and that is going to be a very unsettling thing to be shown there. King Jack for Saliba. You feel a little disrespected almost. On oh, no, like, don't you guys? What? Don't we what, Randy? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, huh? you seem to say he's from my neck of the woods, therefore we may be what friendly. Play the same? <laughs> Play the same. <laughs> same mixed games. Sorry. True. There's an excellent Persian restaurant not far from here in Mayfair, by the way. Will you take me? Uncreatively named Iran Restaurant, <laughs> by the way. It's good. Have you been? I, yeah, I have. Okay. Hossein and Son took me there. Back in oh. 2019. You guys know where to go. Robert Gomez knows what to do as he flops the diamonds here with a straight flush redraw just in case. Looking good here. Let's see if he opts to check raise or check call. Facing the 4K bet is the First timer, Spaniard, facing Yulong Zhou, also a first timer to Triton. You see the very small check raise here, it's just 2.5x despite the deep stacks. Like, he's just trying to get Yulong Zhou here to just continue with the weaker parts of his range, and he does get the 10 of diamonds to continue. You know, had he check raised bigger, that hand probably would be laying it down. Turn is the deuce. Picks, gives those ace high flush draws, or even the ace 10 like this, some added equity that may feel obligated to continue for a bit more. 
I would say that the small check raise on a flop doesn't necessarily define his opponent's range, still rather wide. And actually, check raise, check. And you know what? Like I said earlier, the small check raise kind of invites a larger continue range. He must feel like these kind of queen of diamonds, king of diamonds might continue to feel like they've got oh. a stab, but he lets them get there with the four liner. He sure does. A bit of an awkward line settled upon by Roberto Gomez, one that comes with the risks of a diamond rolling off. And now suddenly you just play the six of diamonds alone and Yu Longzhou has that crushed with the ten of diamonds. And let's see whether or not he's going to hunt value with 37.5 in the middle up against the man who did check raise this flop. Yeah, I like that he's going to go for value here when he gets checked to him. You expect the bigger diamonds to put in some value. You want to attack the, whether well, maybe some two pairs on the flop, like 5-4. Jack X is very reasonable. You give him a good price with this small bet. I can't really see Roberto laying down the six of diamonds. Yes, it's a baby flush, but when he check raises the flop so small, he invites some random floats that just kind of have to make a stance on the four flush board. It'd be an amazing laydown, but rather hard to do here. Thirteen five. Feels like a very nice size. It must feel milky to him right now, like he's just trying to get me to call. Yeah, Feel nice for Joe, not nice for Gomez. Yes, so Gomez might be trying to figure it out. Yeah, he just forced to pay off the price he's given. Here we go, Joe. Repping the Chinese flag. A very warm welcome back to the JW Marriott here at the Grosvenor House. Henry Kilbane alongside Maria Ho for the Triton Super High Roller Series in London. And Maria, for the first time, you and I sharing the break desk and ultimately the commentary booth together. I know. I'm very excited. And, you know, I would say that this is the first time that we've talked. But no, we talked for the first time two days ago. For a so couple of it's minutes. It's going to go you, great. You, you gave me a couple of minutes. Of We're ready. Time. That is true. <laughs> uh, looking at the app, it looks like the year of Chris Brewer is continuing. Obviously, very early days here, day one of the GG Millions Live Edition. But he is atop of the chip counts. 90 players remain out of a field size of 125. And Brewer, fresh off two bracelets this summer, won a Triton event to fill you in back in Cyprus. Started off the year with a bang earlier and in Paris as well. It just seems to be a different Chris Brewer this year. I, th I think it's safe to say he's running a little better than he was. Um, but also that confidence is really going to turn into more results because Brewer, obviously a huge proponent of studying and he's always in the lab. But now it's actually all coming together. It's interesting because you said the other day about how recency bias can affect our vision on poker players, especially from the, the commentary booth. Does it give you that kind of recency bias in terms of confidence, though? Like, if you're the player that just seems to be running deep in everything, you're entering these tournaments with just a different self-image. Absolutely. It's as if you can't put a foot wrong, right? Everything you're doing seems to be working. And poker is almost easy when that happens. You know, all your bluffs are getting through. You're getting thin value when you're going for it. And when that all happens for a great player, good things are going to come. Well, let's see if Brewer can keep up the run good, leading the field as we throw it down to the main stage, blue table and red feature. There were some new faces as well as some Triton Oh geez, Jason Kuhn, seven-time Triton champion. Lucas Greenwood, who looks like finally venturing out with his brother this time round. Wasn't with us in Cyprus or Vietnam. Great to see him in the mix. Cyprus main event champion from last year, Punap Punsri, leading the field over on the red table and multiple Triton title winner, Tyus Ivinger 
also over on the red feature table. Blinds 4K, 8K, an 8,000 big blind ante. And to be completely honest with you, Maria, there are a multitude of names that I do not recognize. So I'm looking forward to uh, hopefully being thrown off by some of these new players' play styles. And maybe thrown off with the pronunciations yes. of some of these last names. But it, I'm going to let you take the lead on that. It is <laughs> in my contract to butcher at least 60% of surnames. I was kind of hoping that you'd be able to assist with... Uh, I, I'm new around here. That's going to be my excuse. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, you can use that one for about two days. And then uh, that'll be old news. There he is, the Ivan Liao Player of the Year champion, season two champion, of course, here in London. Things go back to zero. Leaderboard is reset. Probably some speculation as to who we should keep our eyes on over the series as potential front runners for that Ivan Liao Player of the Year leaderboard. Drew Gonzalez with the, the swag, Maria, he, you know? There's not such a thing as too much drip, you know? He's really got okay. it going on. I, I mean, when in London? Yeah, you know? London is calling. He answered. Fantastic. Just rocking up. 25K. I did it. Finally. <laughs> me out. Kuhn still keeping with that fresh-faced look that he's been rocking Do all summer man. long. Yeah. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Uh, yeah, math is how Fresh on the outside, <laughs> tired on the inside, like perhaps, <laughs> baby boy. <laughs> yes. Uh, to the Coon family, of course. But we do know about new baby run good. That is true. So, you know, you got to have a little give and take, less sleep, but maybe running a little more pure in some all-in scenarios. Did win two titles back in Cyprus. Beautiful tattoo. Baby run good is real. Yeah. I'm a big, big fan of tattoos. Tattoos of kind of my life experiences. Cool. I remember kind of specific periods. Can you just fill them in? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This one is the Thirst Bomb, the Bill Perkins Thirst Bomb. This uh, one on the wrist here is kind of an ode to that. Oh, legit. Yeah. We got cool. the islands and How that was playing like in the big? on his Twitch stream. Like 10 bigs. 10 bigs? Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. Where are you? Yeah. Um, what was that about? Uh, the Thirst Bomb. Back in June 2000. 19, Bill put out like a video competition on Twitter to have somebody go run his Twitch stream. You know, he was like streaming on his yacht playing like high stakes chess games. Oh, I don't. I don't Henry, this is where you say and folded to the big blind of Rollins. Ah, you got you. You lucked yeah, out that he time. had seven deuce and had to I fold. Keep his channel going. And so you went there? Me and nine other people. It was ten of us. Sick. Yeah, did it, yeah. How long were you guys there? One year. No way, it was that long? Yeah. Wow, that's good. One year. We got a house for us. We got, like, a, we had a food budget and everything. We had no expenses. We just had to stream, stream on a Twitch channel and make YouTube videos for us. Oh, yeah. Legit. Yeah, yeah. So cool. Yeah, it was cool. Why do I feel like every cool Bill's poker story involves Bill long Perkins long. to some degree? <laughs> He's a die, die with zero guy. Yeah. That's, that's how you die with zero. Take a lot more than that. Welcome to the table, Pedro <laughs> Garrick Nani. Is indeed the Dime of Zero guy. Always offering up prop bets to various <laughs> players. I'm just saying I'm open for the call, Perkins. I mean, I would love a weight loss bet. I would love, you know, I don't know about the a get a tattoo bet that I think he did with Jeff Gross. I'm not sure if I would be in for that one. Is that what JG did? He got I a tattoo. I believe so. That doesn't surprise yeah, me. That was, oh my god. Is it crazy to wipe some shit out? Yeah, like I don't I didn't I don't know if anyone was I mean some must have got hooked, but like it looked like it could have been a lot worse, but just see the like a uh, Nothing to write home about on, like, a couple of raise and takes yeah. since returning from break. Perkins, by the way? considering running the entire length of Thailand. So, you know, any financial in incentive, throw it my way. Now 
a lot of these newcomers, of course, no strangers to the allure of a Triton Super High Roller series. The bright lights, the cameras, the stage, potentially going to get under some people's skin, nerves, Maria, for the first time playing at a Triton event. Definitely some intimidating players that they find themselves up against as well. I remember the first time I ever played on a live streamed feature table. It was incredibly nerve wracking. It definitely threw me off my game. It's something that you have to take a little time getting used to, but you also have to remember that uh, at the end of the day, what really matters is you committing to focusing on your thought process in the hand and nothing else. Everything else is just a distraction. Easier said than done. Pedro going to complete from the small with the suited queen. Some options for Drew opting oh, to check and to a flop we go. 24k yeah, in the middle. Manning. Incredibly deep stack, oh. these two. It's Petro like the main ones. They can coming up best them. on the 10 8 4 rainbow. Bottom pair, Maria, backdoor clubs, one over to the board. I feel like a few options here for Pedro. Yeah, definitely. I think yeah. pretty standard would be just to find the check call out of position. We'll see if Drew wants to put in a better check back here. Oh, so talking about the swag that he's wearing, he's also got a Grogu card protector. Love it. <laughs> Love Drew already. He does come out firing that five of spades, somewhat wrapped around the eight and four, as well as that one over card as well. Pedro Garagnani, of course, an online phenom, as well as a live crusher. Going nowhere with bottom pairs. Backdoor clubs do materialize as well as that gut shot. 6,000 in the middle and does Drew now opt to wave the white flag here, not picking up any additional equity on this turn. We talk about TV time, about running, you know, a big bluff. First <laughs> Triton series, you know, clip it for the family. Hey, mom and dad. Oh, I've been uh, on both sides of that. <laughs> I've had people try to bluff me because they wanted that, that shining moment. And I also have fallen victim to wanting to have that viral clip. We've all been there. 15 minutes of fame, if you will, as Pedro does. Check call cool on the turn, almost 100k in the middle now. As the clubs do brick out, board pairing. Again, another one of those cards, Maria, that potentially expect Drew to wave the white flag on, but that shirt and tie, the sunglasses. <laughs> I, I that doesn't look like a guy who gives up easily, right? Yeah, I got a feeling uh, Drew's here to uh, add some spice to this feature table. Yeah, as you mentioned, that 10 of hearts on the river really seems innocuous you don't expect 10 x's to barrel both flop and turn you expect some 10 x's to check back the turn the ones that obviously don't improve but okay maybe we read drew wrong he does end up checking and giving up here we went for the live read okay all right bad we're off to a bad start together I, I hope so, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's that's the best place to play poker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my. Beautiful, yeah. I, I love Montenegro. I was been in Montenegro before, like, like two weeks. Oh, yeah? That's so How weird. is it? I heard it was kind of sketchy for a while because of COVID. No, no. It's, it's good? It's normal. It's good? Yeah. It's you hear shit all the time. It's yeah, yeah it's good. just like normal. There's going to be a Montenegro... <laughs> stop next year? I'm not supposed to say I that. think one of my funniest know, interactions I've had with... Lucas and Sam Greenwood is that yeah, we, <laughs> we meaning me and Maria Konakova, yes. were walking <laughs> at a tournament Maybe, series uh, and like we passed by and Lucas and Sam and uh, Maria was like, so hi Greenwoods. And <laughs> without even skipping a beat, away. Sam was like, hi Maria's. And we just, and then we looked and we realized, oh yeah, we're walking with <laughs> someone with the same, yeah, same name. That doesn't happen very often, you know, for 
a woman in poker. But there's actually a lot of Marias. The Maria space is kind of crowded these days. Yeah, so. oversaturated. A little yeah, bit. Yeah. I mean, one of us has to go. It's got to be I mean, Hunger Games style. Yeah, I was about to say deathmatch. I mean, that's gross. <laughs> but in the form of a sit and go. <laughs> Champion takes all. If I ever go back, that's where I'm staying every time. I'm that's up 20 bigs. <laughs> to apologize, just north of 20 bigs open for Danilo. We'll be met with a three bet and a sizable one at that. Pedro on the bottom with the ace queen out. This size, Maria, kind of just <laughs> signaling to Danilo, hey, I'm happy to play for it all, leveraging that 160,000 chip stack. Yeah, Danilo can't love the ace six suited now and doesn't feel like. Is your name Drew? It's a good enough hand nice to, see you again. to continue I with against a three bet. I think if I think it we were more of the I Broadway you. I was sure and, uh, suited saw variety, it could Jeff potentially. Jeff video and you qualified. I was very happy for you. I could tell it was like an emotional moment. Yeah, yeah, it, it was. Yeah, I get it, man. That's amazing. Yeah, and I figured I'm going to wear, I got three different suits for the three events I'm going to play. Nice. Uh, I'm going to rock out, you know? Well, what if you just win a bunch of money, then play more events? I gotta buy more suits, I guess. Well, you're in London. <laughs> you're in London, you go buy suits, get yeah. tattoos, too. Yep. Do, uh, actually, I think I want to do that. Yes. I win a Triton event, I'm getting some sort of Triton memorial tattoo. Fuck, I hope you win. Let's hope you it. win this tournament. I'm here for it, too, Jason. <laughs> well, yeah, and just well. said it on TV, so now you can't take yeah. it back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Is that Thanks, binding? Lucas. I'm I mean, it, sure. feels, it feels it's binding now that Lucas has uh, made it very yeah, obvious. And in other nice, news, like the There's about Drew has one less like suit here That's than you have, like Henry. There's about six people in here with Triton Pets. No shit. Huh? Is you one of them? I'm actually not, which <laughs> I, I should be. Hey, you got a Triton Pet? Let's get one, you and me. <laughs> Do you have any pets? I used to. I got my shit removed. Nah, we got to go more discreet. Oh, there must have been a story behind those tats. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know that about Jason. My stomach. I'm not kidding. I had a stomach tat. When I was 18, I thought I was a hard ass. <laughs> didn't we all, Jason? I heard, it hurt. I heard it hurt worse than getting a, the tattoo. It does, but it's, it's not that bad. It's just, yeah. like, annoying because you have to go back so many times. Yeah. But I'm super pale, and apparently that's really beneficial for having. It's like, oh, this is coming off easy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the contrast helps a lot. Yeah. <laughs> what was the tattoo about? What is it? <laughs> was it yes. That's my. Somebody secret. get to the bottom of this. <laughs> but you can know I had one on my stomach. One day. Probably some gang shit. <laughs> no, no gang shit. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> okay. Who said that? I'm not gonna tell that you. That escalated you quickly. Really? No. Oh, you make me want to guess it more. Oh, Petro, <laughs> really dig it deep here. He got my text message. I was no like, pictures? pry. They may be out there. I don't know. On MySpace, maybe somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> check, check his MySpace. Hey, you know, when we were in Vietnam, I was hanging out with MySpace Tom. It was so cool. Really? Was like, what a full circle life moment. Oh, wow. Yeah, he was at the Triton in Vietnam. You're not old it's enough, Henry, to remember MySpace. I remember my first song I had on your... Don't your want you to you know, yeah. feel old, Maria, but you're right. I'm doing the reverse. You know, I'm making you feel bad for being young. Exactly. Oh, I don't feel bad it's about <laughs> being young at all. I love it. Enjoying it whilst it lasts. Jason Kuhn. Ace King. Table's gone quiet. Upstairs to 17k from under the gun, opening off around 25 bigs. A couple of playable hands, Maria. Options here for Oliver. Although he is up against an under the gun open and a potential trappy hijack flat. Gonna yeah. have a little multi way flop action. These yeah, hands could collide, Maria, ah, on certain board textures. Okay. We know that's what oh, the viewers sorry. want. All the viewers oh, want blood. Entertainment value, yes. Uh, could I just get the so we see the ace like jack, the four water. boards, a middle pair, backdoor space yeah. for Pedro. Jason with top, top. Oliver Great, thank you. Appreciate that. with a swing and a miss. 71K in the middle. Yeah, not, you know, this isn't a complete massacre. There's a slight smattering of blood on this. 
still potential, you know, Kuhn and Garagani both with a piece. Jason opting to knock all this one over. Is this just leveraging the SPR here? 71K in the middle, opening the door for a flop check raise, play for it all, deny some equity? Yeah, certainly potential for that. And you see it does get Garagnani to bet middle pair in a spot where you would think sometimes the Jack-10 would just find a check as well with a player to act on the button, but of course the sevens get out of the way against the 21K bet. Just comes with call, Jason setting the trap. 113K going to the turn as the Queen of Clubs now reverses the outs for Pedro and Jason. If you're looking for a Jack or a King. Jason's still way out in front with his top pair, top kicker. Yeah, certainly. There could have been some brickier turns. There is the possibility for, of course, Garagnani to have some two pair combos. Oh, reaching for a double barrel. Looks like north of half pot. Kind of surprised, personally, Maria, should Jason now come over the top. Feels like a spot where we could have checked back, realized some equity, but Pedro's out there and I'm in here. Jason just going to check call. 237 in the middle, less than... Point five back as the nine of clubs bricks out. Pedro with just third pair. Does have that very key ten of spades in hand blocking the nuts. Yeah, it feels like based on the way that Garagnani has chosen to play this hand, it seems reasonable to assume that he's going to want to try to go for it all here. Kuhn with less than half pot back. Jason just staring Pedro down on the river as he puts Jason all in. And you know, you Henry, when you... That's certainly yeah. a potential. Mighty fine price. Well, insight into the seven time Triton champion's mind. But does that mighty fine price level Kuhn maybe into a fold in a spot where. Ah, oh, there, there it goes. You got one of the spades, <laughs> right? Show him the Jason. Jack of spades there we go. First, make him sweat it. <laughs> <laughs> is you know I love how at Triton the stakes are so high, but these guys know that they've got to have banter in the process of winning and losing I hands. We I knew we were friends like that. I thought for sure the ace was behind that. Exactly, my thoughts exactly was what Kuhn expressed is, you know, it takes a certain kind of player to really slow roll you though with the winner in that spot That's when true. they show you the jack of spades first. That is true. Well, with that double up, Jason Kuhn out in front at this feature table. Chip counts what you buy GG Poker. Jason with 55 bigs. Pedro, a little dent in his stack, but very healthy 50 big blinds, along with Drew Gonzalez and Oliver Vihal on 46. Lucas Greenwood on 39. Danilo on 17. And Roland's in the danger zone. Sub 10 big blinds. Gonna look to get his chips in the middle sooner rather than later. That aim to spin that wheel of fortune. We've seen it happen before. I'm sure there'll be several storylines throughout the series of short stacks spinning their way 
to final tables and perhaps to Triton trophies. Is there any spin-ups that you can recall in recent history of your career where it, you were down and out, down to sub-10 bigs, and a few hours later you're nursing a healthy 50-big blind stack? I know people are going to say that you only remember the bad beats and you don't remember the good things that happened to you. But honestly, Henry, I can't say that I have. I don't know what it feels like to go through a spin cycle from a chip in a chair. I want to know what that feels like. And I don't care who doesn't believe me. It's true. I I've nursed short tish stacks, but a severe short stack, no. Uh, there's no coming back from that for me. It sounds like you need to <laughs> work on your short stack game, Maria. Oh, yeah. That, that uh, must be it. <laughs> I mean, I agree. No one's got time to study, you know, three big blind stacks, but these guys do. <laughs> Not me. I need sub better card distribution off of sub five bigs is what I need. Sub 20, I'm already, like, <laughs> selling action for the next bullet. I'm like, hey, guys, I'm probably busting in the next orbit. 44k <laughs> in the middle, King 9-5. JK with the big blind defend against the button open. Jack, six of clubs. Oh, yeah, at the series, when I was short stacked, I would just immediately open up the schedule and see what was next. I was like, okay, I will be playing the eight game in 30 minutes. Curious to hear what Elliot Rowe has to think of our mindset here in the booth. I mean, maybe if I've spun it up from a short stack, I could afford True. more than one session with Elliot Rowe. True. <laughs> Jason... With the check call, that six of clubs wrapped around the nine five. Some backdoor opportunities, the three of hearts not presenting any of them. And now, surely Jason would be getting out of dodge should he face a double barrel. Lucas Greenwood with options on the button, 72,000 in the middle. Got a knuckle back. A potential opportunity here now. Maria, that six of clubs in hand. Jack Kine, no showdown. Unblocking ace highs, unblocking diamonds. See if Jason leans into this turn passiveness. Betting a healthy size there on the river. That's going to shed the ace high. Greenwood didn't, didn't even look that interested. He just looked away from the table. Maybe he ordered something to eat. Maybe wondering if it was coming. Can I have water? Can I have water as well? Do you guys want anything? Excuse me. Yes. Excuse me. I think we have a few more. <laughs> okay. Okay. For a few of the viewers so over on YouTube saying, hoping that that is Maria Ho <laughs> in the booth. It <laughs> is <laughs> indeed a very warm welcome, not only uh, from me and the viewers, but also the entire Triton do team. Maria Ho is going to be with us for the entirety yeah. of okay. the London Triton okay. Super High Roll Series. And Maria, to be honest with you, after just, what, 30 minutes, yeah. uh, I hope you're with us at future stops. Okay, well. that is binding, everyone. Everybody hear that? Anybody powers that be? Does, does Henry have a say in this? Oh, I wish. <laughs> I wish. No, but in all seriousness, I'm happy to be here, and I feel very welcomed, and I'm glad that the viewers are excited about me being here for the first time. Very jet-lagged as well very jet lagged on about two hours sleep if i'm not mistaken yeah i feel like <laughs> such a noob i'm not a travel noob but for whatever reason i can't shake it and i came here two and a half days before the first full broadcast day because i was hoping that'd be enough time to shake it but it's really not spin the wheel maria as roland's will with the two red sixes as us travel noobs in the booth look on to this classic flip. Oliver looking to send Rolands to the rebuy desk. 112 in the middle, five cards to come. As we head to the five, four, three, couple of hearts board. So far, so good. 
for the Red Sixes. Well, the Brit was looking for paint, but not quite the paint was looking for in the form of the Queen of Clubs. Six outs once. The bit how does ah. get there. King of Diamonds corner pocket. That's what happens when the flop looks that good. It never holds up. I want to test that theory this series <laughs> because I, I there's something to what you just said that I believe in. It's very similar to having too many outs, right? It's It just seems like too good of a flop for sixes. Well, what might seem like too good of a flop for aces, the jack 9-7 isn't the case as Johannes Strava has flopped a middle set. Hijack v small blind. Kat Lee Chun, part of the Malaysian contingent here. Potential showers, especially with this many draws available, Maria. Is this just an unavoidable decision as things stand on the flop, potentially get away from certain turns, but that ace of hearts in hand? Yeah, I would definitely have a tough time finding the fold button here with the aces. Definitely some action killer turns. Oh, well, that's not one of them. If anything, that might be the nail in the coffin for Kiat Seven of Diamonds, pairing the board now ahead of hands like Jack Nine suited. One eight two in the middle. Oh my. <laughs> Snap jam over the double barrel of 80k and Maria Kiat with two outs once for a 750,000 chip pot. Almost a hundred bigs in the middle. Already taking the mic pack off. Resigned to his fate. Black ace needed. The three of spades seals. Kiat Lee Chun's first bullet. Johannes Strava scooping a monster pop to 803k. Moving up to ninth so in chips. All they, heard the rest of the day was that eagle. <laughs> they weren't even paying attention to it. Sounds like the buffalo machine. Oh. I bet it's a buffalo. Yeah. The eagle scream. Oh. Is it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. There you go. I, I would bet some money on that. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing you I'm know that. I'm not sure either. I'm not sure. <laughs> Is that the Richard Krako? The man, the myth, the PLO legend showing up for a Triton Super High Roller Series? A bit of... Canada v. Canada, ASEX v. ASEX violence. So we head to the 9-7 tray board. Ace of diamonds in hand for Richard. Big fan. Mm. Gets a fanboy from the booth. Will remain impartial for the rest of the series. You play much PLO? I was going to say that I am not big into PLO, but... Obviously, I know just what a popular game it is. Anything that ups uh, the variance yeah. it's a little more fun for most. But uh, yeah, I play a lot of different variants. Uh, I'm a mixed game player, but PLO is probably the game that I have played the least. Yeah, I love it, especially in the summertime. I love it so much. Well, how about that for a run out? Yeah, I know. But <laughs> Single race park checked park all the way down. And the kids here yeah, are Greenwood's going to look to extract yeah, some value. And I spot like cool. The 10 high straight. It's met with a snap call from Richard, who shows a jack of hearts. Reading a book, man. Back up to north yeah, of actually, starting stack. Sitting in the park reading a book, like 16 year olds. Like, I never see that shit in the United States. Things unheard of. Yeah. Of yeah in the States. It's like, like some movie. Yeah, I was just like, damn, it's 
made me want to be 16 and in that bar. You know? <laughs> Maybe you wouldn't gotten that tattoo in your belly. Yeah, I was 18, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta read this comment from Max Valley Max because he had a great saying for what we were talking about about the sixes losing on the end because of what a good flop it was for the sixes. He says the cleaner the flop, the dirtier the deck. We might have to. Oh yeah, we might have to use that one. Are we gonna funnel him royalties? No, I think everybody knows whatever they type yeah. into chat is not protected. Okay. It's unprotected IP, guys. Feel free to continue to send us your ideas and your sayings. We will definitely be co-opting it and uh, not giving you any credit. But the shout out, but the shout out, Max. I don't think even they would have, like, it seems like honestly the story was like, they said the wrong thing and some cops just beat the shit out of them, you know? Damn, I got filleted on a face Looks mask. good. <laughs> looks good. Uh, we didn't, but I mean, that looks yeah. off the chain. I think so. Yeah. Can, can I, I might keep it. Was it seat seven, maybe? Possibly seat maybe seven. No, I don't think seven would have done it. Maybe they moved. No, they, they changed the table. I bet that's what happened. I bet it's uh yeah. it's quite confusing. So we already know that the food takes like what? An hour? It <laughs> yeah. looks pretty damn good though. Yeah, it looks sushi and it was like you know, quite good. Like that it's definitely everything looks really good. I have, oh. like I've seen a lot of people get a lot of different stuff on the oh. menu and all look good. Yeah. Ollie's probably glad he's out of the booth and doesn't have to listen to this food talk because he was extremely hungry. He had not eaten all day. He was borderline hangry. I'm, oh, he I'm was glad hangry. that we uh, s got a little switch out. I, I don't want to be on the wrong end of Ollie being hangry. Self-inflicted. <laughs> it's been around the block. What time did we start today? Oh, did they start? 1.30 p.m.? One yeah. would assume yeah, I definitely remember my that time no, I mean, to grab I a snack. I think if the call time was 1.30, then Ollie probably showed up at 1.59. So Sounds about right. He might have had time to eat before. <laughs> Manual, for sure. Yeah, yeah. My dad oh, limped part, blind v, blind, nothing to write home about just yet. Although both players yeah, got no, shot to Broadway. He's a Marine, so yeah, there's a certain mentality. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad I learned on the stick. We didn't have automatic cars in Brazil, only for a very rich people. 8,000? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've noticed still in, like, Central America, like, like in Central America, a lot of cars are stick, like... Greenwood, Greenwood going to get to betting, though, once checked to him. Yeah, getting busy with that Ace of Spades. One over, has equity, of course. Rarely yeah, going to get check raised. Four K in the middle. I've got, I've got to ask. Given the conversation at the table, can you drive stick, Maria? Or are we going to be taking lessons together whilst you're here in London? So funny thing. Uh, no, I did not know how to drive stick shift. But then when I got the call to go on the Amazing Race, if you had seen previous seasons, you would know that. Most of the time, the car they give you is manual. Okay. And so I had a couple quick lessons in some parking lots, never on a real street. Um, and then off I went on the amazing race. And then they gave us automatic. So thankfully, I never had to really put it to use. And I would have failed miserably. So the answer is no. I've had about 45 minutes of practice. And... Uh, the clutch is not my friend. Room temperature well, the dealers had practice uh, chopping up the pot, given that run out, both players with Broadway. So kicking things off here with the 25k GG Millions Live Edition here at the JW Marriott. 
We're over in the house, 134 entries so far. Kiat Lee, they even feel 211 bigs. And I tell you what, Maria, someone you might be unfamiliar with, but a strong member, part of the Malaysian contingent, has been knocking on the door, especially this year, for a Triton title. Final tabled the 200k Luxon Invitational back in Cyprus. And I want to say in Vietnam, I'll double check, but four final tables with like three top five finishes, I believe three pole positions, if I'm not mistaken, and just really coming up short in those final moments of tournaments where you really do need that run good. Drew Gonzalez going to look to run good here. The suited ace against a couple of hooks, the Brazilian. Does allow Danilo Velasovic to defend the big, the off-suited connectors. 60k in the middle, three cards to come. <laughs> oh, I'm not the only one who's jet lagged. It's good to know. <laughs> you know, for a very split second, I thought that was coming from your side of the booth. <laughs> Ten nine six. <laughs> Danilo, bottom pair and a gut shot. Pedro with the over pair. 60k in the middle. Potential danger for Vasilovic here. Vlasovic, I do apologize. We'll see how many times you pronounce his name differently. Feel free, <laughs> Maria. Give it a go. No judgment. All the options on the table again from the big. Just on to check calls. A turn or to the turn we go, I should say. Serbian looking for an eight, seven, or a six. Ten of hearts pairing the board. 100k in the middle, 84k back. That's not a bad turn card for him to perhaps find the lead, but does just end up checking. Garrick Nani himself can certainly have some 10x's in this spot. But might the Jacks not love the top pair from the flop pairing up? Pedro's not scared. Putting his man all in and action back on the Triton first time up. Delino from Serbia. Venturing out to the Triton Super High Roller Series here in London. Do you want to start things off in his Triton career by putting on the cape against one of the most feared tournament players from Brazil? Well, that depends. You know, how much does he want the 15 seconds of potential infamy online <laughs> if he were to be correct? It's always a little enticing. Especially against that man, a man that is capable of having bluffs here. King Queens, King Jacks, maybe some turnt hearts. Quite the sight. Yeah, but certainly also capable of having a lot of 10x here, as well as all the boats possible in his range. Obviously not to sleep on Danilo, qualified over on GG Poker through a 10k high roller online, so no stranger to the highest of stakes, and I'm sure has plenty of history against Garagnani as he does make the call, Maria, and he finds himself drawing to six outs once. Two, six, eight in the middle. Triton first-timer 
Looking for an eight or a six is the jack of clubs. Boats up. Pedro on the river and the GG qualifier. It's going to hit the showers early on day one. Been working hard lately, huh? I know. I'm keeping an eye on you. Brother, I see you right there. Yeah, you're damn right, I'm sure. Keep it. Open, table nine. Can you get me uh, the sushi? Double that up. The sushi sounds like a good idea. I don't even know what it is. It sounds great. Well, silver lining. That's fine, yeah. If um, any, I to that bus down. Maria for Danilo is. Yeah. It's yeah. got 3K spending here, money. No, okay, yeah, so in that, that London, package. that'll buy you a, a cheeseburger. Sure. <laughs> It's hotel covered. I think you should order now. Has other tournaments that he can jump into as well tomorrow. You order now, gets here by dinner. Could also re-enter. <coughs> Could also go inside, go outside and take in the nice weather. Oh wait. Oh wait. <laughs> We're in London. Yeah. What happened to, to sunshine mm. in July? I know, and I came from very extreme weather being in Vegas on what were some of the hottest days that Vegas has ever seen, and now here. Hot weather, not your cup of tea? Uh, not anything over 85 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. I'm sorry, you guys don't use the... Uh, I'd appreciate, the real it. I'd appreciate it whilst you're, you know, metric system here in <laughs> the UK. But you talk in Celsius. I have no idea how to figure that out, but it sounds hot. It Lines going up. It's something yeah. that uh, I still have to use Google every time to convert it. I'm sure chat will help us out. 85 degrees, it sounds like. So it's 100 and. Something mean, I mean, Sounds like a mean? cold sauna. 110 or something. <laughs> it's 135 entries, 32 re-entries, but some of those are the same people. So it's like over 100 unique, pretty sick. The blinds going up to 5K, 10K, the level that Maria and I love because we look like geniuses in the commentary booth. Just calculating the amount of big blinds like that on demand. I still remember my 10 times table. It's the next level that catches me out. Greenwood jamming over the top of an open, if I'm not mistaken, just waiting for the graphics to catch up. Tens against ace queen. We find ourselves racing Oliver With the roll reversal, finding the pair himself this time against the two overs. 511,000 in the middle. Five cards to come. Yeah. So it comes 10, Nine. 8, 6, and all of a sudden, a fair one Greenwood four, reduced right? to running yeah, cards. Yeah, the jack, but this guy's well, it's been a while, guys. I need to uh, know which cards to call. Well, <laughs> dead bro. on the turn as four of clubs just... A waste of time. <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't even know yeah. why we deal rivers when he saved me. we're dead on the turn. But Just to make sure there's not a foul deck, right? True. Just in case. I'm always praying when I basically get flopped dead that <laughs> it's a foul <laughs> deck. I'm like, please put the same card out there on the river. Save me. Not so far. So good for Oliver. Flips one. Two of two from what we've seen. I've heard. I've heard, and correct me if I'm wrong, Maria, but apparently winning flips is a good strategy when it comes to winning tournaments. That's the part that no matter how much I study, I can't seem to perfect. I, I don't know why. I, I put in the hours. 
but uh, it hasn't really materialized for me. I can confirm you lost the flip just yesterday, last <laughs> night? <laughs> yes. That's unfortunate. Do appreciate dinner. Drew Gonzalez getting a bit, bit frisky here under the gun. 4-3 suited. Man in the suit. The suit connectors open things up and gonna tangle once again with Pedro Garagnani. Ring the bell for round two. So we head to the ace jack five, two diamonds board. And I've got a funny feeling, Maria, that this hand is over and done with. Drew with the diamond draw range advantage. And that. Yeah, really making a case for opening 4 3 suited. <laughs> when you flop this well, but action five-handed at this table as they had just lost Greenwood and uh, hasn't brought anybody to replace him just yet. How was Cyprus? I mean, I know for you it was very good, but in general. It was really good, yeah. It was great. All right, mommy, take care. No, it was really good. Quality of the fields was awesome. Hello. Currently five-handed yeah, here, and I spy with my little eye. Is that Mr. Ivy jumping in the mix? Well, for the players at home looking to brush up on some of the wizardry that Ivy brings to the feature tables, how about GTO or Wizard, the number one app for poker players? You can take your game to the next level can start crushing today at gtowizard.com. You can analyze your played hands, practice by playing versus GTO, and solve any spot in the game with GTO no, Wizard. Once again, start crushing at gtowizard.com. We're playing on the GG thing. And how about this for your first Triton experience, Maria? Phil Ivey takes a seat, two to your left. Drew Gonzalez, <laughs> what an experience. Yeah, definitely everything that he could have hoped for and more coming to fruition. Now he just has to win and get that tattoo. <laughs> okay. I definitely want to join for that. Just for the experience, quite the story as well. Oh, and just the first hand that Ivy sits yeah. down. <laughs> Drew just gets to get in the mix here with 9-8 from the big blind. 59k in the middle. He's going to flop best. Maria on the 9-4 deuce rainbow top pair. Ivy with the one over. Backdoor diamonds as well as running straight cards. Not very smart. Pretty sick to be able to hopefully by the end of this hand. I was about say, to say. <laughs> hopefully. Uh, okay, maybe I just rode the broom on Drew oh no. a little bit. We shall see. He is a favorite. First ever hand against Phil Ivy at a Triton Super High Roller Series oh, and I Maria. Oh, all right. Ace tag me hearts. out, somebody. Tag me out. Rolling off right on cue for Ivy, turning top pair. 95k in the middle and now one of those annoying spots as well for Drew. A, a turn card that you could argue you would expect Ivy to potentially barrel with broadways, maybe some hands like fives, sixes, sevens. Certainly mm. Ivy making it a size that could be enticing to Drew, but the question is, you know, if unimproved and on the river and you call here, are you prepared? Does make the call. Six of spades <laughs> rolling off on the river as things get from bad to worse. For Drew Gonzalez, an undercard to his pair of nines. One, seven, five in the middle. 
I know that Ivy's going to seek to extract more value on this river. Yeah, and in this particular run out, when faced with the river barrel from Ivy, Drew just has to ask himself, does he have an ace or not? Because that's pretty much all that Ivy would be repping here with the bet on the turn and surely the bet that is going to follow on the river. What sizing though is Ivy considering does feel like his opponent has 9x here a pretty high percentage of the time. So because of that, you certainly want to pick a sizing that's going to keep that in, but also make them curious as if you could potentially not have the ace here when you take this line. Ivy going for bigger sizing. Around 75% on this Six of Spades River, and we've heard the likes of Ivy and Negrano talk about, well, what we touched on earlier on. It's Ivy. <laughs> he has the Ivy factor if there's ever a time to cool someone down, try and be a hero against the star power. Kandrew. Avoid falling into that trap. First time at a Triton series, first ever Triton event. Well played, sir. Yeah, very Manages nice. to get away on the river. Not falling into. <laughs> and you'll see it in 45 minutes. I can't go. We are, of course, oh. on a delay. King five of clubs, yeah. <laughs> Behave, Jason. Come on. <laughs> let, let Drew think that he made a good fold. We obviously know that he did. But don't immediately start listing potential bluffs that Ivy could have had. Planting that seed of doubt. <laughs> The most oh. intimidating thing about Ivy is that he just always Bring looks so far. uninterested. <laughs> it's like. Okay. It's strong. Yeah. Damn, that was fast. Who was it that ordered that? You? Both of you. Yeah, but wasn't there one other dude? Or that yeah. guy? It was you, yeah? Have you, did you get yours? No, oh, he's, I think he's getting it. Hell yeah. Can we just eat it? That's like three of those or something? <laughs> yeah. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Excuse me. Should I order? Well, should I get the filet mignon, uh, medium rare, with a side of fries and a side of broccoli? Ooh, that sounds like a good order. M make that too. Okay. You know where to find me. It does. I rate the broccoli and the protein. Oh, okay. The fries, though, yep. it's like, might fall asleep at the table. <laughs> You're just sluggish, upset he didn't call it chips. No, no, no. Come on behave. I'm also thinking of the carb overload. I mean, steak and fries. There's really one of the top tier combos. Thank you. Right up there with peanut butter and jelly, cookies and cream, Ooh. pickles and Nutella. Okay, no, that one. Guys, I'm, <laughs> I'm not that adventurous with my food. Now I want some ben, <laughs> ben and Jerry's cookie and cream. Ice cream. JK with the discipline fold suit connectors. Ivy with the straddle, apparently. We know it's obviously an open from under the gun. Note the sizing, by the way. 22K, Maria, with the deuces. Here in Brazil. Michael Rossi is coming to the feature table, playing a, a million chip stack and flopping best on the ace, ace, eight. I think we're getting a glimpse of how he got all those chips. He's one of the tournament chip leaders. 
Triton first timer. And then they just bought tickets and went in the middle of the placing a holy shit. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm to apologize. Leave the graphics are off. Yolo by Max. Yeah. Max Yolo. A bit. 38k from <laughs> Ivy met with a call from Michael I mean, Rossi. Was terrible. Like, everything was shut down. Jack on the turn. Yeah. Will Ivy look to That's empty nice. the clip yeah, here? Kind of a, like a the deuce is going to check back. He's going to break out. But uh, I mean, I have fun Five of Spades now. River. of that trip but like most of them were like just sad stories <laughs> yeah ivy not quite a believer but as you mentioned Maybe not having a lot of history with Rossi, not knowing his opponent too well. Just going to give it up. Give him the benefit of the doubt for this one. Michael Rossi, first time at a Triton event from Tampa, Florida, the United States. 219000 in career earnings and the lion's share of those total live earnings, 134,000 coming just a couple of months back in the Moneymaker main event. Came first for 134,000, shout out Mr. Moneymaker in Palm Beach and maybe kind of using that 134K as a uh, little satellite into the Triton Super High Roller Series here in London, why not? Beach town, which is very big. So we went there for the New Year's Eve, and we were in this shitty Airbnb, like far from everything. This just does not sound fun. Doesn't and sound we fun. We didn't have anything to like to, to eat, like for dinner and the New Year's Eve. So we just went to the supermarket and bought a bunch of like chips and sauces, spicy stuff. Like, that's what we had, like, tortillas with cheese and spicy sauce. So we went, like, partying in the middle of the streets. We got there, it was, like, a bunch of people, COVID. How about that for a flop for Mr. Anton Morgenstern? The like, 6-4 of clubs to apologize for the graphics the team are on it. I mean, it's after midnight. I got my phone. Open ended, so straight flush draw. Ivy and with a wheel draw. Oliver continuing with the ace ten of like hearts. Two overs, first backdoor first hearts. In the middle of the <laughs> feel like there's <laughs> a lot of ways, Maria, where money could go in from a few people later, at this table. Ivy like with the option. Like I was I had massive. Yeah, with pain. Ivy calling and so then, like, much money in the middle very drunk and high and anton with all of that equity oh. double checking <laughs> just making <laughs> sure it's <laughs> there it's giving me anxiety man <laughs> yeah it was it was terrible but now is a now is a funny story three diamonds on the turn well that's a gross turn for the straight flush draw, it's not going to like it quite as much now because certainly in Oliver's calling range, Pre can contain quite a few pairs. Now you're really going to need that straight flush as opposed to the straight or the flush when you think that it's highly likely that you could be up against full houses and Oliver coming again with a second barrel. That's obviously 
have hands like sixes through tens. And it gets the open-ended straight flush to hit the mark. And Oliver is really shifting up through the gears since joining us at this feature table. Winning two flips, scoring two eliminations, and now picking one up with the ace ten of hearts. You're using the stick shift analogy just to make me feel even more inadequate for not knowing how to drive stick shift. This is not going to work on me, I Henry. Wish I know you don't know me very well. I wish well, I was that petty. But uh, I'm not easily intimidated here in the booth. <laughs> this hazing shall not continue. I thought we were a team. <laughs> I feel hazed. You say fries, I just smile. All right, I'll throw my, uh, I'm not even going to use that example, actually. I'll throw this in the trash afterwards. <laughs> there you go. Are you happy? Use the word <laughs> trash. <laughs> Hold on. You shared the booth with a few Brits. Over the years. So. Yeah, no, I know all the I know all the okay. sayings. Okay. I know all the common sayings, but honestly, it's more from watching Love Island than <laughs> it is from <laughs> okay. sharing the booth okay. with, you know, the likes of James Hardigan, of course. But uh <laughs> I mean I wish I was joking, but really I I watched I'm all caught up on Love Island because I'm here. I mean, I don't know if they're gonna I'm going to get canceled for saying this, but usually when I'm in America, I have to VPN to get Love Island the, the day that it airs. But here, don't even have to do that. It's all right. We all have our vices. No judgment in the booth. <laughs> Jack 10-6, open in the for JK after defending the big. Pedro, a couple of red sevens. I can't Two resist overs. watching people have to graft, if you know what I'm saying. Okay, well... Ah, oh, right, right, sorry. Y I don't, oh, I don't, you don't live, you're I pretending don't like you don't watch Love I, I Island. I firstly, oh, I, I don't live in the UK, so I haven't used the word craft in a long time. <laughs> Secondly, it's been a few years since I've watched Love Island, I'll admit. Jason, a few options. 40 bigs effective here. Against the under the gun, Seabet. Can I just proceed with call? 102 in the middle. Jack of spades, there's the board. Completes the rainbow. <laughs> See, you've got people popping off. <laughs> you poked the bear whilst it was sleeping and now YouTube chat. <laughs> it's gonna antagonize us as Jason gets there on the King of Clubs River. Again, gets that under the gun range. Does he want to give Pedro some rope to potentially bluff on a perceived scare card, or does he want to go value hunting himself? Gonna go for oh, the latter. Yeah. And also, quarter pot sizing here. <laughs> I mean, is this just extending the invitation I to Pedro? I think so. Get out of line? Yeah, when we talk about Pedro being very capable, I think he's one of the perfect type of player to give a little more rope to. Let's see how well Jason really knows his man here. Pedro going to take this bait, fall in to the trap that's being laid by the seven-time Triton champion. I'm sorry, I said quarter pot, but it's not. Guys, I'm tired. It's okay. But I caught it. I caught it. So I am still a little bit awake. Just off <laughs> the call doesn't fall into the trap and 132 K pot going Jason's way. Look, math. Is hard, it and when you're jet lagged mm -hmm. and on two hours sleep, 
Yeah. And it's raining outside. Thank you. Thank you. Know? you. It was like I've a sixth you. of the pot. Thank you. It's like, you're about 10% off, but what's 10% between friends? <laughs> Jason scooping in a nice pot there. How about this for a feature table for our opening event at the Triton Super High Roller Series? And how about a couple of queens? Drew Gonzalez, we heard him say earlier on, he's got a suit for every event that he is set to play. Right. Went out yesterday, pick out three fresh suits. A couple of queens here, has promised that if he takes down a Triton trophy, we'll get some form of a triton tattoo and no action the raise and take with the ladies i'm sure happy with the result nonetheless just easing himself in to the experience of no him and a couple of his buddies that are here for the first time were voicing their excitement on twitter Something I love, you know, people that, no matter the stakes, they're not too cool to get excited. You know, it's like, oh, you know, I'm a regular in these 25Ks or these 50Ks. No, you know. Yeah, definitely. There's just no reason to front. It's nice to see somebody authentically feel the joy of having these new experiences, even though most of us are dead inside. Well... That is true, especially in the booth. <laughs> and Drew. now you got Jason raising your big blind, Drew. How will you respond? Squaring off against the champ. <laughs> Both players connecting with that seven that they share in the form of bottom pair on the ace eight seven. Two tone, couple of hearts. Jason with the only heart, gonna check back. King of Diamonds rolls off on the turn, changes nothing. Drew still out in front. There are some chop opportunities now. This one looks like it's going to check down potentially all the way to showdown, but with that Queen of Clubs improving Drew to two pair. Although, again, kind of a scare yeah. card. Jason, I cannot beat that. not taking the bait, just happy to check down his bottom pair. And Drew, going to scoop a pot. 55k pot against the seven-time Triton champion. I don't know how familiar mm. you are with those last two trophies that Jason won, really, came at our last stop in Cyprus, where the only way to describe it is Jason was at the Everest base camp, staring up at the summit, and basically said, I'm going to climb that in about four hours. That's, that's the task he had ahead of himself coming in. Called his shot said he's going to win two trophies in order to steal that Ivan Leal Player of the Year title from Stephen Chidwick. And it literally came down to the final event. Came down to the final table, which Stephen Chidwick made in the short deck. There was a world where he could have taken it back away from Jason. Ultimately came up short. It's real nail-biting as <sighs> the 10-5-5 five, five board... Keeps us on the edge of our seat here as Jason set to lose potential sizable pot here against yeah. the big blind of Oliver. This is going to spell some trouble for Kuhn unless he improves. Now these low card board pairs certainly going to favor the big blind, right? And also opens the door for Oliver to attack precisely that train of thought, if I'm not mistaken. 
just given that he's going to have more 5x from the big. Yeah, and you know, even some 10x's are going to play this way as well and go for the check raise. So because of that, you know, a little mix of Oliver having hands that Kuhn could have beat at this point, but also Oliver electing to try to bluff in a spot where he's going to have more 5x's than Jason. Disaster turn card for Jason as the rainbow completes. And also the suits that Jason has in hand, spades unblocking all of the flop backdoor flush draws, just really feels like a mandatory call on the inevitable turn barrel and then decide on river. A sizable bet at that, Maria. One, two, five. Really looking to set up. Very natural river jam. Should Jason tag along? It's been all Oliver so far at this feature. Yeah, just one of those cases where your hand is too strong to fold at this juncture. Oh. Three, nine, five in the middle. SPR of 0.75 going to the Ace of Clubs River and Jason with aces and tens. Is this an unavoidable exit, Maria? He's certainly going to hear from Oliver very shortly, but he's already thinking, what will he do? Double you up hard, unfortunately. I think you got it, but this is the absolute best hand I can have other than trips. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta be lucky, but you got it. I mean, there's not a world I fold this hand. Well, that's music to the ears of Oliver. He gets called, and Jason Kuhn gonna be exiting early. Oliver. Bit hell scooping a 999,000 chip pot, eliminating a seven time champion, and not only scooping in the pot, but has a few stories to tell the friends and family watching back home after a tremendous start. The Triton first timer, three eliminations. For all of us so far, two flips, and now eliminating one of the greatest as we head back over to the red feature table. 227 in the middle. Unsure how there's this much money <laughs> in in the middle. Maria, oh, give it, given how. the two holdings. I know how. It's Tim Adams. The man has no fear. Tim Adams, just someone that I love to watch. <laughs> it looks like Adams opted to get frisky with the high card, low card offsuit <laughs> variety from the big. Seabet on the 10, seven, deuce mono. Check through on the ace of hearts turn and now four hearts on board. Sorry, five hearts to apologize. In the river. Oh. <laughs> yeah, see? I mean. Okay, well, okay what did Timothy. I tell you? Welcome no back. <laughs> this man making it exciting. I mean, he has a flush. Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, ace high flush at that. Not not just any flush. Ace king high flush. An <laughs> ace king 10 high flush. Is this value jam? It's life. Anna Strava. If the blender could only win half of the pot. Yeah, something I learned very early on is don't call for a chop. 
<laughs> Maybe, you know, this is what Johannes is thinking, you know. Do I want to call when potentially at best I am going to be just getting my money back? <coughs> Sounds like the way Ali Najat trades. <laughs> Do I really want to keep putting money in to just, you know, get the money back? See if uh, Johannes doesn't opt to Timothy Adams up to 427,000. Welcome back, Timo. Eight weeks between London and Cyprus. Hopefully some of the players have had some time to freshen up, recharge the batteries, come back and do it all again for the next 16 days here. The JW Marriott this row or this row? Grosvenor House. This one, oh, okay. I would say that, you know, one of the silver linings to potentially busting is you could go for a wonderful stroll in Hyde Park, but I believe it's been rain on the forecast up until now and for the foreseeable future. I did get you an umbrella that you happened to... Uh, Leave in the room upstairs, but I know exactly where it is. It's I not... Know, I know hold who on. I'm never buying a Christmas no, 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 present no, no. for. Hold on. I put it there for safekeeping. Okay. We all know that if I brought it down to the booth, right. it would inevitably get taken by Ali on his way out. I, okay, I see the logic and find zero flaws <laughs> in it. Now that's all you have to say. You should have started with that. Put up points three. Thai superstar number one on Thailand's all-time money list. Going to defend from the big. These hands could. Clash on certain board textures, Maria. The Queen Jack 10 9 connection. And then we head to the A7 6 two tone board with zero collision. Yeah, and this will just very likely be Ibinger's pot to take down with a very easy C bet. I played with Punsuri actually this summer out at the series and it was my first time playing with him. And obviously I recognized him from the Triton broadcast and he was a pleasure. Uh, did I also mention that I... Busted him? Uh, it, close, I, I basically... <laughs> <laughs> I basically uh, got him down to just a big blind, I think, and, and he did not spin. So, uh, you know, I want to hear the hand history, <laughs> but I'll save it for another time just in case you got lucky. And also, a fan of fine dining is Mr. Punsbury. So, any uh, any questions that you may have about fine dining in London, he'd probably be the man to ask. As we see the chip counts, the feature table. And opponents are leading the field. Johannes Strava, 62 bigs. Rodrigo, Seliman, 57. Enzo Vito, 46. Ivango, 45. And Timothy Adams with 41 bigs. So we are coming up to a break, I believe. Looks like it's folded to the blinds. Punzer is just going to limp in here from the small with the suited queen, and Johannes going to check back here with 10 9 off. Ace high flop. 
certainly Huntsry could have limped in from the small with some ace X's here. Johannes with that gut shot equity. Yeah, this is a fun one. I, I really am a fan of these more intricate parts of the game tree, just as a, a poker fan in general, getting to watch some of the best in the world navigate these, you know, simple on the surface, yet some of the most complex parts of the game. Yeah, and certainly, you know, the blind versus blind strategy, oh, especially, <laughs> yeah. Hello. Well, I think we're about to see Punsery punish this bet from Johannes. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this blind versus blind strategy, especially when you're deep stacked, you know, wasn't something that really came to light until post solvers, you know, before I think people were folding way too much from the small blind and people were not really diving deeper into this part of the game until the last few years. Johannes making the call, Jack of Diamonds on the turn, not presenting any of the back doors that Plunsry had available to him, and little does he know, has the best hand, one, two, two in the middle. I get to tick off the word solver on my Maria Ho bingo card. Didn't take too long. <laughs> May have a full bingo card. What, what else is on there? I don't think, I bet crisps aren't on there. Fries. I bet. <laughs> jet uh, lag. Jet lag. Fine dining. James Hartigan. <laughs> The oh, list so, continues. So, so you almost have a bingo then, I feel we're, like. We're getting there. Checks, <laughs> checks through. There's the ace, eight of diamonds, rather. Pairs the board. And is this, you know, one of those funny ones where Strava potentially gun shy, but 10 high, unlikely to win a showdown, is similarly to the queen high of Pernat. It's going to knuckle it on over, and what does Strava do here yeah. with just 10 high, Maria? Yeah, it, it's definitely not unlikely here that Johannes could have continued with some 8Xs on the flop against a check raise. That seems like a very natural combination to perhaps bet second pair on the flop, call the check raise, check the turn, and now rep it here on the river. <laughs> I feel like potentially playing to the clock as dinner break is just round the corner. That five of spades, kind of a bad card to have, right? Blocking hands like five, four, seven, five. Let's it go and Johanna Strava. <laughs> a little oh, come on, that smile, definitely. Now, Huntsry knows he, he got away with one. That, that was the classic. Sorry. Sorry, dude. I had to. Chip Counts brought to you by Poker Steak Players going on a dinner break, and it's going to be Johannes Strava from this feature table leading the field when they return, hopefully with full stomachs. Don't want anyone... Playing high stakes poker and getting hangry out there it is Roberto Gomez from Spain as we welcome you back to the broadcast booth. Henry Kilmain alongside Maria Ho. Uh, Roberto Gomez leading the field overall with 1.4 million, absolutely cruising along. 140, yeah, 140 bigs. Can't say that I'm very familiar with him, but I did hear that he played a couple of interesting hands earlier on, so definitely would be. Interested to see him at a feature table after dinner. Oh, rocking the Spanish flag. Now, obviously, I do want to let the viewers at home know that through the power of production and technology, that dinner break is going to be spliced. So Maria and I are only going to be stepping away for a few minutes. I just wanted to kind of let out a big sigh of relief. We survived together. Things went well. There's plenty of action. Things went well according to... You, okay. I, I, the jury's still out for me. Sure. I think we need a couple more levels for Cu me to. A couple more events. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. 
the verdict <laughs> will be in. Well, don't go too far. More coverage of the GG Millions 25K from the Triton Super High Roller Series here in London. When we return from break, be end of late, Reg. And once you lose your chips, that is it. No more super high stakes until tomorrow. We'll see you, right. uh, see you guys very shortly. What's the best way to master GTO poker? At GTO Wizard, we have blogs that will teach you the art of learning poker, starting from the big picture and working your way down to the finer details. Then we teach you how to implement these new skills at the table, step by step. At GTO Wizard, we have all the resources you need to learn how to crush the competition for free. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live action prediction options on the Triton series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top-up, up to $250. Become a part of BetACR.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. Very warm welcome back to the break desk. Henry Kilbane alongside Maria Ho here at the JW Marriott Grosvenor House. The 25k GG millions players have been fed. Late Reg has been closed. We're up to 156 runners in this 25k with, well, my man Kiat Lee at the top of the chip counts. I have money on him to win a Triton event this series, and he's 
leading the field with 114 bigs as we take a quick look at the Triton Poker Plus app to kind of look at those chip counts. Maria, obviously you've been there before nursing a healthy 100 big blind stack, but still very early in the day. Nothing to get too excited about, but at the same time, the ability to leverage that monster stack in certain situations. Yes, yeah, certainly right now you do want to make sure that you are not overpacing with that type of stack. You know, certainly has a lot more playability than some of the other stacks out there, but you still want to pick your spots well. Well, it's a couple of the newcomers that have been making a name for themselves so far at this broadcast. Oliver Bithell currently second in chips, three eliminations during his stint at the feature table, including the elimination of our seven-time champion, Jason Kuhn, who has re-entered, as you can see, on table three, a fresh 250K stack, 21 big blinds, joined over there by a couple of other newcomers, Zaita and Masashi as well. So looking at that table on the blue feature table, I feel like Jan, Masashi, Zaita, Jason Kuhn, chips more likely to make their way into the middle sooner rather than later, just given how shallow they are, with the exception of Ben Heath, of course? Yeah, definitely. And of course, you know, a lot of these players, Kuhn, Yan, Heath, they all have a lot of history playing against one another, and sometimes that could lead to bigger pots as well. And the thing that we really do kind of lean into at the Triton Super High Roller Series is that these guys, if they deem a spot profitable, regardless of the buy-in, whether we're playing, you know, a low stakes 25K or a 200K here, if it's profitable, they'll take it. And, you know, for the, the casual viewer or a fan of poker such as us here in the booth, you know, there has been spots in the past where I'm in the booth thinking, you know, I would pass up on this Jack-10 suited rejam. But these guys, like you said, they have history, they know the charts, they know what's profitable. And from an entertainment point of view, to our benefit, can lead to stacks just flying into the middle. As yes, and especially when we're talking about the very high level, elite, best of the best, cream of the crop players, they will push those small edges because against some of the best, you have to find those small edges and you have to take them when the opportunity arises. I want to jump over to the red feature table now. Kulev, Bazikuski, Kim. Mizuno, Savannah, Santosh 2.0. I saw and heard Ali and Randy touching on the potential software upgrade in Mr. Savannah, potentially upgrading to Santosh 3.0. We'll fill you in on that gimmick. He has just been an absolute breath of fresh air to have at the Triton Super High Roller Series, always with a smile on his face, whether he's scooping in a pot or on the receiving end of a bad beat. Won his first title back in Cyprus, and I mean, 26 bigs, he knows what to do. He could potentially do some damage over there. We've got KT as well as Orpin all in the mix, regular names at the Triton Super High Roller Series. But it's Kulev that I am excited to see again. Someone that you'll be potentially familiar with, a bracelet in Vegas, fresh off that victory, number one on Bulgaria's all time money list, and has a sizable chip lead over everyone else over on that feature table. But not to be slept on, Makita Baziakuski as well, as we look to throw it down to the blue and red feature table for some more action here. Late Reg has been closed. The players have been fed 25K by, and it is the GG Millions Live Edition event number one of the Triton Super, Super High Roller Series here in London. Cards will be in the air any second now. We got there. Chip counts brought to you by GG Poker. Is Ben Heath way out in front on the blue feature table with 80 bigs, and there's Alex Kulev way out in front with 84 bigs and north of a million. Four starting stacks for the Bulgarian. So we got we got Squiddy as well, so that means our job's done here. Maria, we don't need to commentate for the next two hours. Power nap time. Power nap time indeed. 
I don't watch Dennis. You asked her what she did? You asked her what she did? No, shut up. I did. <laughs> so what you did. You're well, exact as that. well. You were like, Squiddy looking like a re entry. So that's what kind of name that 250k stack. I was shocked. At. And they were just like, Where are you from? I was just like, I don't know. Mars? Yeah, I'm not dogging. <laughs> you guys intimidate me. <clears throat> so this feature. There he is. What's up, bro? It was more your crowd than mine, Sam. You would have fit. You would have fit right in. No, you would have fit right in. Our it's problem. actually because all of them were like artists. And potential good start to this feature today. Ways King O from plus one. Just going to open jam. Sub 15 bigs. Cool. Yeah, cool. David Yan, Maria, just wants he over with the decision himself. Let's go with the king queen suited. Yeah, gonna respect. Did you dance? I did a little bit, yeah. Open nice, shoving uh, range out of lady. Masashi. <laughs> Steal your red chips and I'll give them back just yes, so I can post my you. big blind. Thank you. Don't forget that. That's your oh. Picking up the blinds in the big blind ante. Sure, he would have not minded spinning the world, but with late reg closed and well, once you hit. Zero chips now, it's it showers for the day, both in the tournament and outside the walk home. One that one can find themselves getting drenched in. I have an umbrella for sale, anybody? Um, I'll take uh, a hundred euro, a hundred pounds, yeah. That ought to work. Anybody want it, go ahead and DM me. That is quite the upsell. <laughs> oh, blind v blind. Action, Ding Biao. Fresh off a Triton title himself back in Cyprus, taking down the mystery bounty. And then went on to pull some of the biggest bounties on offer. But complete from the small. Flops best on the Queen 6 4. Nothing to write home about. But Jason in the big, believe, rocking a custom one of one Triton hat. Biao going to look to extract some value. No value to be had from the eight deuce. Now, some of these first timers, of course, no strangers to high stakes poker. Talking of Diego Zaita. First timer at Triton, but over a million in career earnings, 1.2 million to be precise. Best life cash of 135,000. That coming way back. I'm scrolling. I'm still scrolling. 2017. Yeah, I have like 10. Came third in a 10K. In Sochi. Six years ago. So you would be on the same table together. And just like that, it happens. Ben Heath, table captain. Jack Nine suited. <laughs> Keith just always composed at the table. Really is. Great table presence. One of the nicest people <laughs> in the industry as well. JK, potential spot from the small. As for 
Masashi in the big blind. 15 bigs. A raise and a flat in front of him. 54k to fight for in the middle. Have a little three-way affair here. As Jason has both his opponents dominated. So all three come up short on the eight, eight, four, some back doors full of diamonds and spades. <laughs> Somebody at the table sounds like they are breathing directly into the mic and running a marathon. Yeah, let's try and <laughs> figure out who the culprit is and put a bounty on their head. The commentator run bad. <laughs> you did it to Drew earlier on. Yeah, everyone should know my powers by now. Oh, I think we found the culprit. It might be Mr. Heath. As he scoops in that pot. To one million now. One of the front runners in the tournament. Leon Sturm. Seems like a really flashy guy. I'm surprised he didn't win. He didn't wear the WSOP game? bracelet he won this summer. Just at the table, flexing on everybody. You know, Doesn't he look like showboater to you? Not at all. <laughs> and they're going all the way back home? That's um, another one of those newcomers but a force to be reckoned with. Fam, got a one month old, so not happening yet. See Maria referencing that 50K bracelet event that he took down this summer for 1.5 million just a month ago. No stranger to high rollers online as well. Masashi. Oh boy. Yeah, this is going to be trouble for 14 bigs. Potentially Xiao as we saw one queen folded. As Leon does make the call, of course, with the ace king of hearts. 352,000 in the middle. Actually going to need to find some diamonds, spades, or a lucky lady. It's going to stick around in this opening event. Oh my god, dude. Eight, seven, six, a couple of spades on board. Some opportunities as well. Certain run outs. And the three of clubs not presenting any of those. A queen and a queen only needed for Masashi to stay alive as the Five of Hearts completes the run out and the Ace King high for Sturm. He's going to hold. Yeah. Ray's now up to a very right comfortable 37 ish bigs. Removal, we so know that that man with oh, chips certainly knows how to close out there. tournaments. Oh, I wasn't listening. You said you had a six up. Yeah, yeah that would have given me an advantage. Whatever. Get up and play. <laughs> Sturm assessing where he's at after eliminating. Masashi in that yeah. last hand and up to a much more comfortable 37 big blinds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Leon's turn from Germany. Calls Vienna home, if I'm not mistaken, in Austria, as do many German pros and, well, not just German pros, poker pros as well. Diego, we're we going with Zeta or Zeiter, Maria. Your call. My natural inclination is Zeiter, but okay. I, I mean, I could be way off. I mean, I, I like how you gave me the options so that if I am off, you can just blame me. Uh, I'm contractually obliged to. Butcher, at least, I think I mentioned earlier on 60% of surnames, but here we are. Zyter, 25k. Heath, going 
to tag along and Sturm again with a hand in the big as both his opponents dominated but it is an under the gun open off of just sub 25 real three way affair here certainly room for these hands to collide on certain ball textures and fireworks to ensue as we head to the king six five couple of spades Heath with the advantage, one would assume. Maria. I'm going to hedge and say Zyter now, but then Zeter on the next street, and then <laughs> go from there. <laughs> yeah, Zyter yeah, does really check it over to Heath. Didn't love the prospects like of him you get older. putting in a C bet there, multi way with no yeah. real backdoor potential. Like, I don't know. You just don't feel bad the next day. If you don't notice it or something. Yeah, Sturm with that one over, mace of spades in hand. Potential bluff card for him to consider on certain run outs, but also. As the pre-flop aggressor, Diego Zaita, really to worry about. I mean, I played it, you know. I just started trying to learn it. It's really fun. <laughs> and things still coming up. Heath continuing to add to that big stack. Yeah, ben Heath, one of the few in conversation, is the best in the world without a Triton title. 11 caches, just shy of 4.2 million in Triton earnings. He's had a few crossbars over the years. Two final tables back in Madrid, 2022. The fifth and an eighth place finish over there. Second place finish in the 50K Turbo in Cyprus of 2022, a third in Rosbadov, the 100k, a third. Last time we were here in London in the 100k main event, cashing for over one million pounds. It has come close to clutching gold so far, has come up short. It's, you're what a time you're to do it stuff. would be know, whilst back on weak. home turf. I don't have the vengeance in me anymore. Here at the JW Marriott, Grosvenor House yeah. in London, Ding A Couple of sixes from the hijack, a few options. Still getting a few text messages that was Anton Morgenstern, <laughs> not Richard Grieco. Do apologize to both. It's weird because I've gambled and drunk alcohol to the early hours of the morning with Morgenstern, but you know, my eyes a bit glossy. Ding Biao making the call. Yan at risk. Button. David and Both you flush know. cards if you look down, there's two hands. covered. One of them is pretty bad. Look, oh, there he is. This is how, how does he do it? Wow. <laughs> Squiddy yeah, knows. just up. knows. Stand up, you know. Wow. Okay. okay. Well. All right. All right, Squiddy. Quad trays for Mr. the hand. Leaving Dink out. So I feel like I cost you that pot by pointing out how badly David plays, but. <laughs> Savagery. <laughs> David Yan, a GG poker qualifier. The story is probably much better if I tell it right, but basically I got in behind and then, like, <laughs> I was just like, somehow I get there and I'm like, never. Yeah, I'm, I'm already over this story. David. <laughs> Sorry. He might not be the best so storyteller. Right. Yeah, He's great at commentating. Yeah, Jumped in the booth. Right. In Cyprus, qualified to this event over on GG, the 3K Road to Triton, 30K package. Yeah, spending money and now has 310,000 in chips.
daily quads. If anyone comes into the chat asking if we've had quads today, you all know the answer. 162 runners in this one will be getting the prize pool. Official payouts shortly. Cantley still leading the field. Yeah, and with the raise and take. Shout out to all of our viewers across the board over on YouTube and Twitch. Currently have 4,000 of you watching over on the Triton Poker YouTube channel. Would love to get up to 180k subscribers by the end of the series. Currently set at 170,000. We'd also love to cross the 1,000 like mark on this live stream. 910 currently, just 90 away if you haven't already. Please, for Maria. Okay, take a couple of seconds out of your day to click that like button, help us continue to grow the game that we all love, but more importantly, put out world-class production to the poker fans around the world, free of charge on our platforms. We do appreciate you all getting involved in the conversation as well, keeping both Maria and myself entertained. Keep it PG, you know? It's too early in the evening for shenanigans. Although the Ma Maria needles have been relentless. <laughs> I mean. But I'm, you know, s starting to get more and more tired as evidenced by my poor math earlier and the needles will uh, slowly dissipate as the jet lag sets in. I'm not so sure they I mean, if you sit in German, maybe. Really robotic, aren't they? At least the poker JK plus one against Big Blind mm. makes the call and well. I think no one doubted your explanation. I think it was. I think no, I mean I was worried. David's yeah, you could see David's by Jason's face he didn't love it, but Fair. still felt like it had to go in and he's going to be looking for a jack. Kind of full circle to that conversation we had on break about these players just taking the spots as and when they're presented to them. Ace nine eight rainbow. But anyways, EQT Berlin sounds like a lovely place to ever meet you there. Yeah, it was. Six of hearts on the turn leaves Jason drawing to three outs once. Doesn't find it. Ben Heath eliminating Jason Kuhn. As him out pipped by one, and Heath now climbing up to 1.3 million to second in chips overall. And I don't think I don't think Squiddy took a breath in between all ins there, between the quad threes and the ace queen v ace jack Maria. I thought fuel prices were at an all time high. Squiddy with plenty of gas <laughs> in the tank. Have you ever managed to get a word in whilst doing commentary with <laughs> with him in the past? Like, how how do you yeah, navigate I, that? Yeah, it, you know, when he's in the booth with me, I just treat him like a player because once he talks, I just lay out. You know, I'm I'm just sitting there, um, and and I've played with. Sam plenty of times and definitely, you know, if people wonder if he almost always talks that much, the answer is yes. <laughs> it is not just some feature table persona. Oh. This is just everyday Grafton. Oh boy. Well, everyday Grafton perhaps. How about, it feels like everyday coolers. 25 big blinds or so, Jan. Opening from under the gun yeah, with the aces. Uh, sorry, plus, plus. Just a couple of seats over. In fact, I do apologize. Just one seat over, if I'm not mistaken. As we are short-handed, going to three bet to 65k with the tens. And do the chips always have to find their way into the middle here? I think when you look at the effective stack, the answer is yes. But how will Yan respond in the sense of, you know, does he feel like... Sturm ever has some light three bets here. And if he does, if he comes with the four bet all in, will that perhaps scare his opponent off? Would a call maybe keep some of those inferior hands in that don't want to get it in? 
does look like Yen chooses that option. Oh, yeah? 160 in the middle. Oh, great. Yeah. Is well, the I flop texture the, uh, gonna cost Yan a full double as we head to the Jeez, jack? 9 5. Couple of spades. Yeah. One over to Sturm's 10s. Maybe it's a bit played out. SPR yes. less than two. Do apologize, Maria. Still pretty safe for 10s, but also he is aware that when Yan raises and calls a three bet off of that stack size, there are going to be some of these uh, Broadway combinations kind of in here. And those but, um, connect pretty yeah. nicely with this flop, but Sturm still gonna go ahead with uh, uh, yeah, a I small C bet. It's like a very good production of the crucible if you haven't happened to. Continuing small and wide quarter pots Gee, as expected. I mean, go yeah. These positions, action back on Yan, Ace of Spades as backup, as well as the American Airlines. Is he going to announce himself here? The answer is yes, north to 107. Wants to play for it all before a potential scare card rolls off. Yeah, some hands that, you know, naturally would open and call the three bets are obviously some of these traps that we see that Yan actually has, but certainly hands like Ace Jack suited, King Jack suited, Queen Jack suited, perhaps would all find their way in there. And those are going to be ahead of the tens, but there are also some combo draws. Sturm doesn't block the flush draw. He doesn't have the spade, but he does block some of those straight possibilities. Well, if there was a world where Jan was check raising with one of those draws that you mentioned in the form of spades, now get there. On this four of spades turn, has Sturm now found an exit for just half the price of what could have been had Yan announced himself pre-flop. He's asking for a count. As you mentioned, blocking some of those, you know, that ten of hearts, very key. <laughs> blocking king ten, queen ten. Yeah, there's certainly a portion, though, of value hands that he doesn't block and hands that could have potentially gotten there on the turn. But not a terrible price that he's getting. But as you mentioned, maybe Yan flatting pre-flop. Again, Sturm's three bet might have cost him a full double. So tough. You're playing at the highest level that <coughs> tournament poker has to offer in some of the best in the world. These spots where you know compared to the average player, they're more than capable of having these semi bluffs having these more obscure bluffs, but it does ultimately find the fold and immediately texting the boys in the group chat, hey, play the hand, let me know what he had. Good news for Sturm, he was up against the bullets. Let us know in the chat, whereabouts you're tuning in from. Do you have any only one friends, family Square back makes home? It look bigger. But tend to tune in and watch your yeah, broadcast? Yeah, I do. I have uh, really good friends of mine. Going to give them a shout then since you brought it up. There Kim and Vinny mm. Caramelli. They, you know, always watch a lot of the streams. They're big poker fans, very close friends Love of that. mine. Um, can't say any family members tune in on a regular basis if I'm honest, but I'm not going to hold it against them. <laughs> but fans of poker, but also your broadcasting. Yeah, I, I would hope so. I, I hope that they're more here for me than for the poker, but we're not sure. You do know, you, never do really you think that would <laughs> ever come up around the dinner table at Christmas you know, or Thanksgiving? But hey, Maria, we actually love the poker. Mm, yeah, well, then I'll just have to go to more therapy then. <laughs> you and me both. Savannah Santosh, the only Indian player with the Triton Trophy. Complete from the small the square off against KT. Flops middle pair, but KT 
also known as Tent, with the open ender. And a few options. The other Thai superstar that frequents the Triton Super High Roller Series. To a turn we go as the Nine of Hearts does present an overcard to Savannah's flopped middle pair. Some concerns as a couple of straights do complete. Hands like 10 9, 9 8, 9 5. Now improved to second pair action on 10. Just five high and 62,000 to fight for. Going to put in 16K. You had asked me, you know, or maybe wondered if I knew about the living legend himself, Santosh. And I do. I am familiar. Uh, you know, word has traveled back to me in LA, despite this being my first official Triton series. And so I'm very much looking forward to seeing him play and here certainly checking that showdown value on the river with the pair of sevens. saying that the rumors of Savannah 2.0 have spread far and wide across the pond to the west coast as you mentioned Savannah looking to show this one down KT just five high it's like a nice hand to empty the clip with as well it's like sub half pot and is this just few pips too shy to shake off the flopped middle pair. Listen, I don't know about Savarna 2.0 or 3.0, but I feel like from what I've seen, he doesn't like to fold. Um, but we shall see mm -hmm. if he decides he wants to look him up here or not in this blind versus blind spot. Absolute savagery from Maria in the booth. As oh. Savannah finds the fold, he did that out of spite. He did. Okay, well then clearly he's not at 3.0 yet. I mean, how could he be? Not yet. Not quite upgraded. The download still in the tank, about 80% of the way there. We saw him in Cyprus just putting some of the world's best in just the blender. Consistent basis. Now peaking in terms of viewership over on YouTube. Those of you just joining us, event number one of the Triton Poker Series here in London, live from the JW Marriott Grosvenor House. GG Millions 25K is Triton first timer and Brit on home soil. Oliver Bithell leading the pack. 73 players remain out of 162 runners. Of course, Oliver we saw at the feature table earlier on, eliminating not one, not two, but three players, including Jason Kuhn. As it looked like there was a limp from an earlier position. I may be going blind. KT completing from the small. Ike opting to knuckle this big blind option with the King 5-0. 36K in the middle. Maybe I stand corrected to apologize. So it's KT that flops best on the seven tray deuce. Middle pair backdoor diamonds after getting one through against Savannah. Now, a bit of breathing room. Still sub 20. Action on Ike. Happy to just check back and now finds himself drawing dead as Tent turns trips. 
he wants to start building the pot here, trying to extract some value from precisely these types of holdings, maybe some curious king highs, queen highs. Sizable bet. Two thirds pot. Wouldn't fault Ike for keeping you honest for at least one street here. Could have the best hand. Good things can happen in the form of rivering top pair with that overcard as he does continue. Fortunately for the Prince of Darkness. Does not improve. Action on KT. Six thousand in the middle. Sixty five. Sixty five. Sizes up again, this time seventy five per cent pot. 65 into 83. Sorry, 65 into 86, I stand corrected. Ike, curious, cards haven't hit the mark, but they do eventually as he lets go of the King five and a nice couple of back-to-back -back hands there in these blind v blind confrontations, four tenths. Bit of breathing room north of 20 bigs now. Still has a lot of work to do as I refresh the Triton app. Do you believe? None other than Eric Seidel leading the field. 10 time bracelet winner, if I'm not mistaken. Checking out his profile on his Triton track record. Nine caches, 1.9 million in earnings. One of his largest caches back in Madrid of last year. Came second in 30k7 max. I want to say came second to Jason Kuhn. If I'm not mistaken, I feel like that was Jason's fourth title, but I may be mistaken. We'll have to double check that. Savannah looks to get involved from the cutoff. Let's see over. Tent on a heater. Is this one for me? Yeah. Could you actually bring it to the table 25? Sure, there is a there is a girl in uh, in yellow. Table 25. Okay, okay, just, just, just give it to me. I'll, yeah, I'll producer hear, James, uh, okay, uh, okay, just no let me know that it might be nine. And the moment I said 10, I must say that, I'm not mistaken, that, <coughs> that legendary status belongs to the recently departed Mr. Doyle Brunson. Rest in peace. And yeah, James, let me know. It's only nine bracelets, you know, only nine. Mr. Seidel, still kicking it with the cool kids, showing them how it's done. The highest echelons of the game. Honestly, three of the most riveting hands I've ever commentated on, Maria. I know <laughs> you were busy solving today's wordle. Mm. So you stepped out and there. I, still I, look, didn't I know. Get it. I know you've got that that record to to keep up. What are you at now? Seven hundred days in a row. Yeah, I mean it's it takes a lot of dedication and 
I can't afford to break that streak, not even for this. Full-time Triton champ, Bats. Not one to shy away from getting involved when the opportunity presents itself, but Jack Dusoff from the big, not going to cut it. So I brought my attention back to our viewers at home. Not seeing many people. Let me know whereabouts they're tuning in from. But glad to have you all here, both on Twitch and YouTube, been told by One of the Triton team legends, Jerome, said, Henry, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to generate at least 2,000 likes on every single YouTube stream. And I said, get me more viewers. And his response was, shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, you'll land among the stars. If you haven't already, you are watching over on YouTube. Maria's job is on the line. <laughs> Wow, just hey, using me hey, as look. emotional clickbait. I'm just saying I'd love to have you back as Enzo <laughs> looks to spin the wheel against his fellow Brit, Squiddy. The ace, eight of hearts, looking to just hold here. Enzo, king nine of clubs. 60-40 to potentially send Squiddy packing as we head to the Jack-5 tray mono board so far. So good for Grafton's ace high as the ace of clubs seals it on the turn. Vito drawing dead and Squiddy going to double back up to starting but still has his work cut out. Sub-20 bigs with work to do. Certainly, as we came back from the players' dinner break and Max Late Reg, you see a lot of action as the short stacks are moving it in and some getting consolidated, but some finding the double. I'm playing no antis. Average stack is 11 big blinds. I'm trying to play my rent out of this comp. Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Sam. I took it 25% every time I won. I mean, it was a fucking disaster. <laughs> Have you ever been there, like upstuck, where you know you've you've had a great couple of I'm sessions, really you're feeling a bit flash on the cash side of things. You go to dinner and you're all of a sudden tipping 50% instead of <laughs> instead of your usual 30. I just, I know in America it's what, 25? Um, if for exceptional service. We've all been there. Got some answers. Ghost of M saying, tuning in from the hot suburbs of the USA. Shout out to our friends from across the pond. Got Chad saying, tuning in from San Antonio, Texas. Appreciate you guys and gals letting us know as we head to the 9-7 tray two-tone. Complete swing and a miss for Jan's big blind defense, but Squiddy, a couple of overs and the betting lead. As he did open from the hijack, 68,000 to fight for. He's got to opt to knuckle it back and potentially allow Jan Still this one away on later streets. Do some clubs. Yeah, I'm going to check for a second time now. I just have to put it out there just in case Squiddy busts. <laughs> Big fan of the stash. <laughs> oh, I said way, that too. The, the I was stash pro glasses, stash. Yeah, 100%. The glasses stash combo? Yes. I'm here for it. The king of clubs improves Sam to top pair, top kicker. Not that it was needed. Will likely look to extract some value. 
It's the only time the table gets quiet, Maria, it seems, is when Squiddy's in a hand. So I'm hoping the poker gods may be dealing some more top of range so it allows us to get in a few words. So the blinds go up to 10,000, 15,000 with a 15,000 big blind ante. How about this? BetACR.e. You can check out the all new website, your exclusive hub, to predict your favorite players' live action outcome in Triton events. Receive a 15% bonus up to $250 on your first top up. And join now and start engaging the sporting world today. You know, I've been asking for something like this to be created for Triton for a while now. Talk about sweating along with the live stream. A little, you know, a little $20, $50 as you, you got the stream up. That 15% bonus, you know, make some money. Good things can happen. Obviously, as no. always, gamble responsibly. Yeah. There's no such thing as, you know, having too much action. Everybody wants some skin in the game. I get it. Nobody can have a brooding interest just because. It sounds like you've got pieces <laughs> no. out there. You've been on poker stake buying up some action. <laughs> so I, I have had some good luck, actually, buying, here, here buying some pieces. But we'll, we'll, uh, we'll exchange notes. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see. I mean, you, you've been doing it a lot longer than I have. Yeah, I get it. You're young, Henry. We wow. know. We wow. know. Playing that card. Diego opening from under the gun with the suited ace. 14 bigs. Sturm. Another short stack. I come along for the ride with the 7 5 0. Both players not connecting with the 8 tray tray, although you could argue Maria Diego with. Incredibly strong range at this stack depth from under the gun. As the overpair range advantage is going to leverage that continuation bet of 30,000 met with swift fold from Sturm. Thank you, chat. Maria equals clickbait, exactly. <laughs> Hopefully, if we get to 2,000 likes be invited back to future stops oh no what happened did a little post dinner break food coma set in it just got very quiet at this table, and <laughs> Sam's not even in a hand. I told you, you load up on carbs, give it 45 minutes or so, and then you just crash. I thought you listened to Huberman. <laughs> Vito. Pretty looking hand. And a sizable stack to get involved with. And how about even prettier for the short stack, Sturm. With the ace queen, <laughs> as Vito dominated and is likely well going to get to spin the wheel here, given he's playing just 113,000. Vito priced in, he knows it. Cards on their backs. 276,000 in the middle for Sturm to get right back in the mix. He can find the hold here himself in great shape against Enzo. <coughs> Still out in front, Maria, but that Jack-9-6, couple of hearts, does now give Vito an additional four immediate outs as the eight of hearts increases. <laughs> uh, seven outs. We all know it's never easy. Oh, is that too Grafton many outs on the turn? Yeah, and Grafton's back. He, somebody woke him up. Like in my brain. Chirping chips for Squiddy after doubling up. 
Nice little double there. Four stern. Fresh off that $1.5 million dollar cash during the summer. Are you enjoying to play home? Yeah, of course. Home court advantage, bro. Love that. <laughs> How long is for you to ride here? Uh, it's like, uh, like 40, 40 minutes. It's like uh, not, not close to my place, but uh, so I'm staying at the hotel some of the time. I'll go back home, you know, I don't care. Yeah, 40 minutes at 1 a.m. is kind of rough, man. Oh, it's less than 40. At 1 a.m. it'll be less. Oh, okay. <laughs> Should have qualified on GG Pokers, I mean, Woody, and my apartment's you wouldn't have had to commute. Uh, my apartment's nice, but it's not quite as nice as the, as the Park, Park Lane uh, Intercontinental anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> if, they, if they were putting me up in a, you know, in a fucking... Thanks for doxing everyone, Squiddy. Right. <laughs> just like this guy. Just putting everyone's what business out there, you know? This guy freaking Bye. tagging everybody on Instagram, <laughs> location. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm talking to Squiddy, he's going to tango with his fellow Brit and good friend, Ben Heath. You know, we've had hands that could potentially you know, collide or interact, you know, the, the King Jack 3 board type of potential situation, but so far the flops not cooperating with us in terms of players locking horns and this ball texture however one that Heath is going to opt to check back yeah not a lot of coolers shall we say post some pre that we saw some big hands run into each other but yeah as you mentioned nothing like top two against bottom set post yeah. or, you know, straight draw, flush draw against over, over pair. pair. Oh, yep. yeah. Jinx padlock. One, two, three. <laughs> 85k in the middle. Oh, Squiddy. See, that's definitely uh, some type of British slang. I, we don't we do not do that. We, we do the jinx thing. I don't know about the padlock part. That, that part was, that threw me off. That's a good thing. We do buy you a Coke. Have you heard that? It's a good thing we're in London then, <laughs> isn't it really? We don't do that. The audacity. We. we. <laughs> the audacity. Oh, the viewers will agree with me. You, you guys are all from. <laughs> you asked where they, they're watching from. We're about to find out. <laughs> really, really sus behavior from my co-commentator as Grafton gets there on the river in the form of uh, inside straight draw. 85k in the middle. See what. Check, check, flop, check, check, turn. Feels like a small bet spot, given that Heath hasn't shown much interest in the form of, you know, strength. Yeah, especially against an under-the-gun opening range, certainly trying to keep in some ace highs that could get curious. That's going to be a big part of Heath's range between the position that he opened pre and the way that he chose to play post does feel like <coughs> there is some high card showdown value perhaps for Heath. Oh, I stand corrected. Squiddy making me eat my words as he <laughs> goes polar and Heath says queen does eventually find the mark. So a nice little stint on the flip side of dinner break for Sam Grafton. Trying to come up with a triple crown for high roll. You need 50k plus World Series, 50k plus EPT, or like the main one at EPT, and try it then. And the only person we could come up with who'd done this is Chris Brewer. And then someone said, you did it. So we were going to call it the Brewer. We were going to name it the Brewer. No, I'm small bro. We were going to call it the Brewer. <coughs> Has he done a Brewer? He's only one tournament away from a Brewer. If he wins this, he's done a Brewer. But it's actually doing you a disservice because he's not the only person who's done it. I cannot believe there's no other people. I mean, there, there must be. What is it? Well, it, dep it depends whether you count like the one day 50K at like World Series or whatever. Like, my, I think 
Michael might have done it. It depends. It's hard to say. Because uh, Adrian doesn't want to try. Yeah, anyway, it's harder than you think. I know for you, Makia, you've really done it. Like, maybe done it three times. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of us, no, not everyone's done it. A million times. So, sounded like they've coined some no some new triple crown-ish type of term. Well, who do you think anyway, actually draw. has the authority the to do that? Well, the if anyone, <laughs> Grafton, I mean, <laughs> he'd probably be a politician if he hadn't discovered poker, well, right? So. Easier than do a regular, regular triple crown. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I, I guess I guess we're counting any triumph, but I guess maybe you could say make it higher. Then, then Burrow wouldn't have done it because I think he won't like the PLO. Then it would be a Makita. You should, you could, if we look for higher the standards, we bump Burrow out. He's the underdog. <coughs> I only, I only done fifty at the WSOB. Never done bigger. But I mean, I think fifty at the WSOB is fine because there's only been like. 11, 12, 12 ever. Well, as riveting as this new triple crown concept from Grafton is, there is poker to be commentated on as Diego does continue on the button, running into the top pair of Heath in the big 10. Three deuce. Good things can happen, though, for Diego. One over, backdoor diamonds. But maybe no opportunity to see a turn, Maria, as Heath looks to take it north. Yeah, certainly going to try to deny some overcard equity with this raise. But also, you know, keep in some of the hands that, of course, he has beat and some of the hands that could potentially turn backdoor equity, as you mentioned, and that is going to shed the King X. Yeah, Heath happy to play for it all there at that stack depth. Quick update from the outer tables. Cat Lee still out in front up there with Eric Seidel, Chris Brewer. Those three been chopping and changing. It's just as I say that, Danny Tang surging up to second in chips. Overall, 69 players left. Danny did voice you know, his hunger to really go for that Ivan Liao player of the year leaderboard this time around. Obviously one of the top pros that is not only world class at Holden, but also one of the short deck elites, as well as you know, a bit of PLO here and there for DT. Certainly one of the names <coughs> in the ballot early is one of the players to keep an eye on for this season. Busy on the button. Ding Biao facing a more than min, but incredibly short here. Maria, and if I'm not mistaken, th this concept of the shorter you are, the wider one wants to defend as they get to realize their equity a bit more. Queen Drac Trey. Players whiffing. <coughs> and naturally, off of Biao's stack, Grafton knows that there's going to be a lot of the better hands that will have shoved pre, and a lot of the better hands that contain perhaps a good Queen X or a good Jack X would have already been in there. And it's also nice just to find those spots for an easy pickup against what you mentioned is a wide defending <coughs> range from the big. Oh. 
appreciate all of the love and support coming in. The players try and we're back. A couple of weeks. We're here. The stakes get higher as the series progresses. Much love in the chat for us in the booth as well. Don't make us blush, you know. Give us a few days. As the battle at the top continues, Eric Seidel now edging his way out in front again. Dethroning Chris Brewer as things stand. Just a big blind between the two. And as always, you can follow along over on the Triton Poker Plus app. If you haven't already downloaded the app, you can quite literally follow along every hand from every table of your favorite poker players whoever they may be you can get the notepad out see how they're playing hands st study up brush up try to really offering some unique insights yeah i gotta say that this is you know my first time <coughs> really playing around and utilizing the app and it certainly has upped the game in terms of being able to follow along from home, but also for us in the booth. I mean, it definitely makes our life easier. Look, I'll be the first to admit that there are times where, you know, maybe your attention slips you and you don't see a flop or a pre-flop action. You can just quite literally open up the app and like, oh, okay, I'm caught up to speed. I don't have to come off as an amateur in the booth, but you know. Yeah, if only it just said it was a six pot size <laughs> bet versus a quarter. <laughs> you know, maybe somebody wants to put that function in and help a jet lag girl out. That would be great. Come on, share hands. Help a girl out. Queen six four. Again, just no real modern day coolers, you know. Like give us a couple of clubs and a five as things check through on the queen six four eight on the turn does now give bats inside straight draw Ben Heath with nut second pair eighty five to fight for yeah you wonder if Makita wants to start getting busy with <coughs> this turned equity, start representing some of those hands that connect quite nicely yeah. from the big blind. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Maria. It's a sizable bet to get busy with as well. 60 into 85 with just 95,000 back and should Heath call that idea of following through on Brick Rivers? Really a daunting one to be faced with, given the SPR. The board does pair, hearts do Brick, as do the hands like Jack-10, 10-9. Does Bats empty the clip? 205,000 in the middle. Or is this just a one and done? Yeah, it <coughs> might be a little bit problematic that even though Bads could have defended from the big blind with a lot of the 4X combos, a 4X is likely just going to check the turn instead of bet, especially that sizing. And so it would be a little bit hard to represent the trips portion of the value range here if he decides to follow through with another river barrel. And Heath, really nice bluff catcher once the four pairs, you know, doesn't block the flush draw that from the back door and yeah. also, yeah, so it does um, feel um like blocks a everything, right? Yeah. 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 Great point as Makita just waves the white flag. Heath just seems to be pretty much winning every hand he's been getting involved in so far. Playing well and running well. Lethal combo as he climbs the ranks into the top 10 chip counts now. 66 players remain. The plan 
to play 10 levels today. <coughs> Back tomorrow, same time, same place. We'll be playing all the way down to a champion. We will be awarding the first Triton trophy of the series to one of these remaining 66 players. And we do now have the official payouts. Over 4 million collected in this one. <coughs> Eventual champion will be going home with just shy of 900,000. 897,000 for the eventual champion. Not bad, Maria, for a 25K. I mean, north of 30 buy-ins is pretty ridiculous. <laughs> Given the turnout here as Sturm calls off the opening, the King Seven from under the gun. Akita finding the Ace Queen. And a small gonna spin the wheel. <coughs> Certainly someone that knows how to spin the wheel. Flashbacks to Madrid. It came back from a twenty to one chip deficit to win his fourth Triton title, one card away from doubling. Dealer had other plans, Maria. <laughs> that king on the river perhaps becoming a theme of this tournament as lightning strikes twice. Bats will not be winning his fifth Triton title in this event. Yeah, How about them payouts? Maria, 26 places paid, min cash of 40,500. About a just shy of $300,000 heads up match that we're going to have tomorrow. Obviously, we do allow and facilitate four deals to be made at the Triton Super High Roller Series, but more often than not, <coughs> even though it is very top heavy. There's, uh, there's a lot of pride in these high rollers, you know? These guys, you know, they want to play for it all. Fair enough. But as you mentioned, we still do have a couple of qualifiers in the mix, and perhaps they would be keen to make a deal <coughs> if they could find themselves there. My time to shine. She just start. You know, everyone's, look at David, he's dropping off, actually. He's still be blind. <laughs> Oh, you never, you never unamused oh. <laughs> Sam at the table, just reiterating how jet lagged everyone is, and you know he's got the home court advantage, being just 40 minutes away from home here. <laughs> Some people, of course, flying in from. West Coast of America, Southeast Asia, Yan from New Zealand, if I'm not mistaken. <coughs> it's the longest flight you've ever taken. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's got to be like direct flight, Australia, but longest travel day has to be when I went to South Africa. Okay. Direct flight? How long was that? No, there's no di direct. No, to sorry, the one oh, to Australia. Huh? Yes, that was a. Oh, 16 hours. Okay. Four. It's got some legs on it, for sure. Yeah, that one... <laughs> that one took it out of me, but... I hope you treated yourself to business. <laughs> had a little lay down. I, I, I've gone several times, and I feel like the very first time I went, I couldn't afford Fair. business class, but uh, <laughs> definitely on the, some of the subsequent trips. Yeah, 100%. Feels like a no-brainer for those 16-hour... Flies Diego in the big. What's he thinking? He's going to just come with the defend. Made us sweat for a bit. Yeah. It's usually the standard line, but it did look like he was considering some other option. 115 in the middle as it comes. Ace, Jack, 10. And how about that for a flop, Marie? A little something for everyone. Top pair for Jan. Backdoor hearts as well. Heath with bottom set. Diego of 26% of the equity due to that open ender, although he can't be thrilled the prospects of the higher end of 
that open ender as it would put a four liner on board for Broadway. However, does hold 26% of the equity three ways. Yeah, and even though Yan does have top pair, he can't be thrilled <coughs> either. Quite a bit of coordination on this flop. Certainly, he can absolutely have all the sets here opening from plus one as well as king queen both off suit and suited combos there you go avoiding disaster Backdoor hearts not materializing for Yan, but still has top pair, 175 in the middle, and Heath is going to look to build this pot up here. Flop bottom set. My second favorite set. Huh. Unblocking top pair, of course. Feels like one of those ball textures you'd expect Heath to really lean into after opening from plus one. But Jan with the discipline. <coughs> Letting go of top pair. Not something I'm a fan of myself and something I really need to speak to my therapist about, to be perfectly honest with you. Yeah. Jan. Made a little easier Thank you very much. Thank when you. he doesn't turn any additional equity with the backdoor flush draw. But still, as you mentioned, quite disciplined. You know, good to see that uh, 25K still means something to some people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Heath continuing to reign supreme on home soil here. Chip counts brought to you by GG Poker. Here you go, Zeta. Gonna look to get busy sooner rather than later, and I sing a eight big blind stack. And I spy my little eye, Mr. Patrick Antonius, getting comfy in trap seven. Arguably the fittest man in poker. I mean, that man is a machine. More often than not, at the feature table, we see him consuming broccoli, asparagus, salmon. Yeah, we all Paul? know that that uh, fries Chicken. slash chips orders is not coming from Antonius. <clears throat> not in that man's body. <laughs> no, no, no. His body, it's his temple, Enzo Vito. Got a tango, his fellow countryman, and potential for a three-way standoff. Yeah, it's oh, okay. Not this time, Squiddy. Getting out of there. With the bullets, 100k in the middle, Enzo with 281 back. He's going to be curious, potentially see future streets. He's picked up a will draw, the 10 5 tray rainbow. Yeah, I was about to say, potentially a board texture where Heath isn't too concerned about checking this one over and giving off a potential free card given how dry and disconnected the board is. Does also open the door for Enzo to just come out firing. <coughs> he does accept the invitation extended from Heath, 32K. Heath with a little check raise. They're dangling the carrot. In front of Vito. Is Enzo going to level himself here? It's not giving Heath credit for much, but does get out of the way. It's going to stick around. Sometimes it's hard to know if <coughs> the table captain is just trying to bully you around because he has a big stack. But sometimes it's really just because they're making hands. I, I couldn't agree with that. That is a fantastic rule of thumb. It's so easy 
to take it personally, right? You know, you, you you lose a big pot against someone, whether it's a cash game or a tournament, and then just like a couple of hands later, they're, they're three betting you or they're, they're check raising you again. And it's very easy to fall into the trap of like, is this guy just picking on me? Like, am I the target? Am I the spot? And in my case, the answer to those questions is normally yes. But in this situation, just has the goods. Fold and on to the next one. Yeah, certainly haven't seen Heath get out of line. And frankly, he doesn't have to. He's just been picking up the right hands and getting the right flops. And not to take anything away from, obviously, what a skilled player Heath is. But sometimes that's just the way that it works out. <coughs> yeah, Heath, of course, as mentioned earlier on, on the list of best in the world without a Triton title as he heads to the 874 board with Leon Sturm. Both players with the gut shot. Sturm with the advantage, heart in hand, ace high to go along with it. What are we thinking on this board from the big, Maria? A few options? Yeah, definitely. And I think it is one of those spots that you feel like you can perhaps leverage that type of texture somehow. Sturm with the check back. Given the check through on the flop, that open the door for Heath to now probe. Try and fold out some of these ace highs. The answer is no. Gonna check on once more. Eventful in terms of chips flying into the middle across flop and turn. It's one of the brickiest of bricks rolls off on the river in the form of the three of spades, and now Heath would just king high. Has to know that it's no good. Happy to just wave the white flag. Sturm going to be really happy to be able to show this one down and have a winner. Yeah, Heath with one of the few hands it feels like that that do just show that one down. Sturm pouring his way back. A few notables still in the field on outer tables. Danny Tang, Henrik Hecklin leading the pack. The mediocre Dane, as we like to call him here at the Triton Super High Roller Series, as he doesn't want to take away the title of the Great Dane. Alex Kulev, Chin Wade Lim, JJ, Jonathan Jaffe, Nikki P, Nico Coop, Stephen Chidwick, Drew Gonzalez still in the mix, Bruno Volkman. See, the Brazilians have shown up in force here. Arguably the most aggressive and most feared demographic, I would say, in the modern game are the Brazilians. Dan Smith, Phil Ivey, Seth Davies, Oli Shemian, Pranat Puntsri, all still battling. Michael Soizer. Again, you can check that all out over on the Triton Poker Plus app. You can sweat along with your favorite players for now. Our attention on the blue feature table. And Jan with the loose-ish open. <coughs> the ASAO connecting with bottom pair on the Jack-10-8, but it would be difficult to get this one to showdown should Sturm opt to play this draw aggressively once being checked to. 
I think the poker gods heard you, Henry. It's not perhaps the coolers that we were talking about, but just a little bit more of a, you know, multi-street post-flop poker that's going to happen when we see these types of hands, you know, players with a little bit of something to continue with. Yeah, and, you know, for, for the people at home that are looking to, you know, treat these streams as a, a study session, these more intricate parts of the game tree are uh, certainly a, an opportunity to get the notepad out and see how some of the best are navigating these spots, even a spot as simple as that King 5 A6 hand, you know, <laughs> asking yourself the question, why did Ben Heath opt to wave the white flag with that combo? So plenty of value to be had in terms of study material as well as entertainment value. As he hand does opt to check call. <laughs> yeah, I think people forget that, you know, sometimes those big pots, they play themselves. The hands play themselves. It's actually the nuance lies in these small pots. That's certainly how you get to this level. That's my understanding these more nuanced spots. What is it that you call this? The, the domination <laughs> rotation <laughs> double? <laughs> yeah. The DRD? <laughs> we call it a. So, normally in, in uh, the other broadcasts that I've done, we'll go domination, rotation, and then restoration. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, James and Joe, they've got, they've got a name for everything. <laughs> I'm not trying to still, you know, I'll stick with the DRD. Oh, look, look at this. Is it, I mean, see, now. Now I really don't know. Is this like a bluff? Is this mergy? Like, <coughs> really curious about this best. Um, finding the 50% barrel on the river with a four liner on board, and third pair. Yeah, this is very, very interesting to me as well. And he's had enough. He's had enough of your randomizer. You think it's over for you? I would love to I, pick his brain. I mean, Sturm is probably one of the no, most no, well-studied younger players in the game today. So I feel like he's got a really good reason. And hopefully we'll get a chance to ask him. Yeah, I'd love to. It's one of the privileges doing commentary. But it should be named after you, Patrick. That's what I'm saying. It should be the Antonius plot. It's 15 and under. You know, when they bring it in, he bequeathed. And hundreds of years from now, they're like, why is he called that Antonio's book? And they don't know. But they're like, where's this guy back in the 21st century, you know? When they're playing fight in season 137, you know? Like, now remember, he was the guy. I don't think people like it, though. I don't think anyone likes it here. Sorry, I'm going to bubble in. No, he? No, no one. <coughs> no, no. What was that? Triton season 137, currently at season three. Hopefully I've retired by then. I can't think right now. Today is not the time to... Producer James, just let me know that I'll be fired long before then. <laughs> <laughs> who, needs, who needs enemies? Seat open. <laughs> yeah, with the raise and take. Also something I forgot to mention to the viewers at home as well, that Triton Poker Plus app has all of the payouts as well. For those of you that have only joined us within the last few minutes, to reiterate, the champion of this 25K GG Millions Live Edition will be crowned tomorrow. <laughs> we'll be going home with $897,000, the lion's share of the $4,050,000 prize pool. 26 places will cash here, min cash. 40,500 and you know, not only a min cash to be secured for some of these qualifiers, but you know, that Triton cash on your hand and mob really does does things to your opponents across the globe. It sends out a, a message. He can just snooze. He can just snooze. Patrick, sit this one out. Let the Brits play. <laughs> 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 
Patrick, playful as always with the banter. Right, and you know who doesn't have that post dinner break lull is Antonius because he's eating so clean and living so right. Yeah, honestly, any questions that you have ever had about health and nutrition, he is definitely the man. I, I once made the mistake of asking him, yeah, what time of the day I should have my first meal. We ended up getting into an hour-long conversation. But here we are. Not something I take for granted. Squiddy, top pair. Oh, hello. Hang on. Just when I thought this one might be over and done with, Enzo catching us off guard with the check raise from the small. Yeah, in a way, not really surprised, though, because it did feel like there were a couple of spots where Vito did find the discipline and fold it, and sometimes you just run out of patience. Mm, I couldn't agree more. Certainly something we've all experienced at some point in our career. Is okay. Well, that for a turn card. Top two for Squiddy. Does now leave Enzo with four immediate outs. Just a little bit more than half pot for the effective stack, which is Vito. <laughs> <laughs> Grafton with a 25k bet. Gets a nice smile and a call out of Vito. But bricks on the end with the King-10. Yeah, a rare comment there mid-hand from Squiddy just... Responding to the smile of Vito, you just goofing around. As Senzo beat him to the pot on the turn with that 25k call. Kind of gifted, sizable pot there for Squiddy. Up to just shy of 500k now. We play honest poker, I didn't bluff him. We just, we just play honest. I needed a gut shot. It's too cheap not to do. Enzo being honest. Yeah, there we go. Blinds going up to the <laughs> 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 I feel like, I was about to say, I feel like chips are going to be finding their way into the middle from that seat sooner rather than later. Does have a hand to do it with, of course. Ace on the button. Just five bigs for Enzo now. Yeah, and in the big. Thinking this one through. Can't resist the price. Instead, opts to just realize his full equity. Wants to see five. That's queen high is good enough to spin the wheel for five bigs. Is this Enzo's way back to this 25k? I got root for the Brit. <laughs> Let's go. Flop him dead. A side board. Jeez, Sam. Flop him dead. That's what he tried to call for. No, uh, queen high <laughs> flop. <laughs> Looks very promising. Uh, yeah, Vito with three outs once. Queen three, is that even a call? Jesus Christ. Oh, four of diamonds completes the run out. We're going to lose Enzo Vito on the home soil. A couple of annoying spots then. Opted to get frisky <laughs> against <laughs> Squiddy. <laughs> I couldn't I find the hold. I told you, if you look up and there's some terrible hand, the worst hand on the table is always David's hand. Right. Literally, yeah. you, you know what? You know which hand this is. He hasn't got the ace deuce, has he? <laughs> Just know. <laughs> uh, you know Full pot blast. Pot, Just. Don't, oh, that is no technical fantastic. terminology, bro. Pot, potters, by the way, these guys. Like they swallow the dictionary with these names. Potters, they didn't call it that back in, back in me and Patrick's day. Maybe they did. 
No. It, that, that was Patrick, Patrick New Pods. That was it. He just won eight bazillion dollars because he because he didn't fold to like quarter pot bet. He was like <laughs> became one of the richest men on the planet. Texting a security to get you. Yeah, shit, Bob. He's stuck. This is the great thing. He's stuck here. He can't go anywhere. I can say, look at this. He's captive audience. I this is. <laughs> there you go, I've kids. I've got a headache from looking at this just for 10 seconds, by the way. Don't expect Patrick to fold for quarter pot. <laughs> There's the secret. Oh, dear. Highly entertaining, as always. I do feel bad for the jet lagged players out there, though. And for the jet lagged people in the booth. <laughs> Sam with chirping chips now. To 25 bigs. It does feel like quite a few players did fly in today, which is, you know. Brave. Brave, yeah. yeah. That's the word that I would choose. Uh, I mean, I've certainly gotten off of the plane before and jumped straight into a tournament, but I don't know with uh, this much of a time difference, though. You know, maybe from <laughs> L.A. to Florida, you know, four and a half, five hour flight, but mm. uh, with a three hour time difference. But this is a bit of a different ball game as I'm finding mm. out the hard way. Is that the time? The three hours? Coast to coast? I didn't know yeah. that. I mean, I could see that being tiring. You know, five hour flight, three hour time difference. I guess if you catch a, a red eye and get some sleep, who knows? Leon taking a stab here with the rags. See, a lot of good things can happen. Just win the hand right here, right now. Also, one of those hands that if you get check crazed, yeah, it is what it is. You've just got jack high. You tried and failed as Yan takes it north. Up to 728k now. I mean, if Grafton saw that hand, Yan had the best of it that one time. <laughs> he doesn't always have the worst hand, see? <laughs> being doxxed on YouTube. Thailand is far away, but I had, I had, uh, <laughs> had 10 days to beat the jet lag. And I, you know, I'm a veteran, okay? So what I did was I started going to bed at 5 a.m. a couple of days leading up to before I left. Started waking up around 1 p.m. Thai time, of course, and then when I arrived, it's like, oh, okay, go to bed at 11 p.m. Wake up around 8, 7. Expect my co-commentator to already know this trick, but here we are. My usual tricks of uh, wine and melatonin really hasn't been working for me, you know? Got to switch it up. You have 75? Two different mix, the big bed. Mix is different, uh, it changes all the time. Uh, we lock the mix in for all summer, like, like a standard with a potential re jam spot. No, Seems like or to be thinking this one through. Not one to waste time pre you know just for the, the sake of TV. Yeah. Certainly yeah. an option. Like 22 and a half bigs. Button open. And then we added part limit. Yeah, suited and connected. Game is like Could seven play rats. quite well. Post as well against the button opening mode. range. Where straights count against you? Yeah, it's a deuce to seven. Yeah, we call it has been so patient. Just hasn't been getting the card distribution, not through it being shy to get involved. Just. No real opportunities. Does he want to take the 10 9 multi weight facing just shy of a 3x? And you can see 
that the card distribution definitely hasn't favored him in this spot. He doesn't even have two live cards. Just dominated by both opponents. Yeah, it's pretty brutal. Is. <laughs> really is brutal. That small blind flatting range as well. Got to contain some of those 10x, the queen 10, jack 10. Makes the discipline fold. 150k in the middle. Six, six, five. <laughs> Jan's facial expressions, he's so, he's just over it. A long flight. Checks back and turns top, top. A welcome sight. This also closes the door on Sturm's potential backdoor equity from the flop. Off of a 20 big blind effective stack for Sturm. He would have likely jammed all of his pairs from the small blind against a button open. So not really going to have, you know, many boats here or over pairs. Yeah. Yeah, and Diego's going to be kicking himself a bit there, <laughs> thinking that, right. you know, he would have turned top pair. Spot to potentially triple up, but actually would have been hitting the showers. <laughs> and he opted to the fend. Just like, uh, just like the online rail burning, I just like to scroll through the big pots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slow. Well, you sat next to one of your greatest friends in life. Why would you, what, you, you're more interested in a fucking hand than, you know. Tim Adams has played on an outer table. That's pathetic. Come on, boy. Sad. Sad to see. There he is. Gentlemen, is all in? It's all in. Tempo, four. Ten four. All, ten all in. All in on the... All in. Under the gun. Yeah. Finally finding a hand that he's happy to put his remaining eight bigs in the middle with. So we see some curious gentlemen on the rail stand up out of their seats. Potentially friends of Ding. Looks like they've got a second player all in. Charlie, Charlie, over. Second player all in. Squiddy. Showing us he knows how to commentate as well. A classic flip. It's a flip. Patrick Antonius, a slight equity advantage here, Maria, holding the pair Patrick, of sevens. Who do you want to win? Who do you want to win out of the two of you? I feel like it's not, not. I'm pretty neutral. You win either way. You win. Here. <laughs> it's a win-win. If I lose the hand, I get to go to bed, <laughs> says Patrick. Seven. He Ooh. called it. Nine, seven, five, things looking bleak for the mystery bounty champion. Finds himself dead on the turn. So Patrick with a near on double up there to 360k. The shy of 20 bigs and eliminating Biao in the process. Full house. Let's go. Two more, two more double ups. Sorry. Two and a half more levels of play today. Don't think we'll get anywhere near. The money, 26 places paid. Minkasha, 40,500. Still around 60 players or so left in the field. Is the Malaysian contingent out in front? Catley in first. Chin Wei Lim in second.
Yan now playing a very healthy 40 big suited king in the hijack. Okay, this is it. Zeiter has waited long enough. Now has just a little bit over three bigs. It's been so patient. So patient, Heath. Looking for confirmation from the dealer. I don't know if the dealer's actually allowed to actually confirm that or not. But he is allowed to confirm the raise amount and the re-raise amount. So Heath knows that Jan can't reopen the action. Jan, I do apologize. That's a tough one to get wrong, Henry. <laughs> Good luck, bruv. Jan, Jan. Squiddy hitting him with the classic. Good luck, bruv. Really like, leading does into he the really hole. mean it? I oh, I think so. I think he's no, genuine. Come on. <laughs> right. I mean, this isn't the final table where, uh, you know, it's yeah. you or the guy next to you. Well, it feels like Squiddy's curse because the good luck, bruv, has found the King 5 deuce board and things be looking bleak for the Triton newcomer. Two outs twice as one of his aces. Busy in the hand of Heath. Two cards to come. Seven on the turn does now present an additional two outs for Diego. Doesn't find any of the necessary cards on the river. And after being so patient, just couldn't hold with the A7. Would love to see him return to a future event with a healthier stack to give us an idea of just what he is capable of. But for now, showers for the Swissman. He's actually had only one seven. Keep up, Henry. As, as if we needed an introduction to flop with the man himself at the feature table, first land of poker, Mr. Patrick Antonius, proving a player experience with the flop app. Flop app is developed by the first land of poker, takes the live poker player experience to a new level, solves a common issue many live poker enthusiasts face, finding, running games, and securing a seat. This tool uses advanced algorithms to match players with active games that suit their preferences and skill level. It's a digital concierge of sorts. It takes the hassle out of finding a game, allowing players to focus on what they love most, playing poker. For the regular players, you can find in real time running cash games at every casino, partnering with the first line of poker through the flop. App. I don't need to sell it. That man is the face of it. And given the tenor and experience, and just how many hours of live poker he has played, if, if I'm going to trust anyone to develop a, a, a poker app that assists live players with finding games, it's going to be Patrick Antonius. So, haven't already. Bigger. Keep you out, Patrick. Check out the app. So what? This 55, huh? You have a lot of chips. Grafton and Antonius pretty close in chips. So you would have had longer to talk, but you introduced, it, introduced Antonius clock. Now maybe you've made a mistake. I will... <laughs> Close to a 3x on the button, just really dissuading the big blind from defending as wide as it would against the min open. However, Patrick just drilling this flop, Maria. 140 in the middle, flush draw, inside straight draw, as well as an over. So much so that Antonia started <coughs> talking, saw the flop, and 
stopped. <laughs> That's true. I don't know. If, that feels like a live read to me that you picked up there. Rear, although Patrick strikes me as the okay. one of the most unreadable live live <laughs> players in the world. Yeah, could definitely be balanced in this spot with staying quiet versus finishing his sentence. behind lots of chips uh, squiddy thinking of just floating in position here potentially looking to outmaneuver antonius on future streets here we go hello <laughs> How about this option? Upstairs. Antonius with so much equity. All you can eat. Met with a snap <laughs> fold. Antonius up to 600k now. He's never ever successfully bluffed him, you know. Ever. Never. A very familiar face joins the feature table. Trap six, number one on Bulgaria's all-time money list. <coughs> Bracelet winner, Mr. Alex Kuliv. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, ranked number one in the world online, as well as number one in the world live, as things stand quite the force to be reckoned with. Just 27 years old. Very quickly <laughs> making a name for himself on the live scene over the last couple of years. In fact, I would say maybe as recently as the last 12 months. Yeah, even as the night gets later and later, these players all have to keep their wits about them and stay sharp. This is becoming an incredibly tough table. It really is, actually. I, I didn't even think about... I mean, it, you know, it's a Triton Super High Roller Series, but, yeah, this is uh, <coughs> quite the treat for the poker purists out there in terms of the caliber of player at this feature. 162 runners in this 25K to kick things off here in London as Heath takes things down with a button open. Open. Talk about killers. Killers row. What did Why you get all in? I was, 46. I was playing online. Yeah, I, I think you deserved it. I was playing online recently. I had a 2.3 button. Recently? Yeah. 4.2 thousand. 4,200 4, viewers. <laughs> this is what he does. This is what he does. Over on our YouTube channel. Appreciate yeah, all of you keeping us company. Regs. You know, they're trying to fucking earn a living. Ben Heath's there, like, practicing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Heath has been grinding 200 soon, but, you know, you never know. Maybe. <laughs> Can you just imagine? He's just multi-tabling 200 on L just to get some reps in before Triton. 1K likes over on our YouTube channel. Okay, sure. Would love to see that number increase. If you haven't already taken a couple of seconds out of your day to show some support as we find ourselves here at the JW Marriott in London for the next 15 days. Just nosebleed stakes with millions of dollars on the line, bringing it to you live throughout the series, free of charge, of course, on our YouTube and Twitch. And you know, there seems to be a bounty on Maria's <laughs> job in the form of likes. Not to pry, but if you enjoy Maria's been delivering so far, click the like button. It's appreciated as Heath keeps us intrigued with a mystery card. Interesting one, Maria, because Sam is opening off of just 13 bigs, so... I feel like less traps in Heath's shoes here. Yeah, I think there's definitely the possibility for some suited connected type hands. Mm. 
to be coming along. Well, if it is suited, there is another spade. <coughs> it would be the <coughs> 10 or 9 or 8 of spades tucked in there. Yeah, we know what it's not. It's not jacks because that would be an easy get in pre. It's going to take a little tickle here. It's a single big blind. Grafton with the ace of spades and ace high and quite a strong range when opening off of that stack depth from under the gun. <laughs> yeah, Squiddy just noting precisely that, Maria opting to leverage his significant over pair range advantage, just his big pair range advantage as well as bigger Queen X. Certainly has all of the Ace Queen and King Queen suited, whereas he probably feels like Ben doesn't have many of those. Or at least not as many. He's gonna stick around. One nine five in the middle, less than pot I do apologize, two twenty in the middle. Less than pot going to the five of hearts turn. Heath was on a spade draw. <coughs> Doesn't get there. The ability to bet call, though, as Heath certainly does narrow down the range of hands I think he could have. Small pocket pairs, maybe some offsuit Queen X. Doesn't deter Sam Grafton. Firing twice. Already 310,000 in the middle. Should Ben Heath call the SPR, going to the river would be less than 0.25. Incredibly uncommon spot to find oneself in as Heath lets go of at least the Jack of Spades. You, Patrick, are never going to <laughs> Straight away. You like to fight for the pots. <laughs> the chirping chips, really scooping in a pot. <laughs> you make one joke. That was a that was a speech yes. of a man who was very lucky to win it. There. <laughs> <laughs> Good read, Patrick. This is We think we can't play online. You, you, what side? He wants to know what screen name, where? You play the they want to know. You know, they want us to buy. It's fucking disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> and they're hunting him down. Oh. That's why you can't it just go sees, online Imagine through his glasses, play. it's just a table oh. of old men. It's old men. This is, <laughs> this is just, even David Yang doesn't respect him. You know? Can you imagine? Why not? Oh. Cool, of straight away. What's your screen name? Oh. <laughs> I mean, let me make sure I, I tag you properly, you know? Fantastic banter. <laughs> Exchange between some of the world's best. <coughs> no, sometimes the old guards have to give way to the likes of Kulev. Some of the younger players making a name for themselves in recent times. Did day once upon a time. Limped pots. Grafton dominated, but potentially going to find a way to win this hand. Flops an open ender on the 6 5 tray. How are we holding up, Maria? You've you've slept <laughs> two hours. You told me you were awake at, I want to say, 3 a.m. It's now coming up to midnight, meaning you're closing in on the 24 hour. I got to tell you, it's getting a little rough for yeah. me okay. but just trying to soldiering stay on. alert it's it's a little easier to be alert when you've got such high caliber players mm. at the table keeping us intrigued I, I thought that was like a rare compliment coming my way there uh, oh uh, no, no, no. high caliber it's too early for that co-commentator but you know it's, it's yeah. too early in in our 
working relationship not not too early in the day obviously <laughs> well yes yeah, it's, definitely, it's definitely, definitely not, not that <clears throat> they're uh, really throwing you in the deep end you know just uh, testing the grit 21 hours awake two hours sleep <gasps> You sure you didn't have a little nap when you you headed back just before we jumped in? No, I <laughs> I knew that if I tried to take a 15 minute nap, it would be game over. So but that we wouldn't we wouldn't see you. Again. No, and and that would just really be a bad look for my first day on the job. And even I, I knew that. I knew I had to just pace around in my room <laughs> for 20 minutes before walking over here get some more <laughs> steps in. That's a good point. How busy did we get on the step count today? We're nowhere near enough. Okay, ten and a half k. Give my little self a pat on the back. Yeah, I think I'm gonna this? make it to the. I, I same. Did we go to all the exact same no. places? I have ten thousand five hundred eighty steps. There we go. Did you guys ever take more than a month off? We don't have the same stride. You are yeah, I think I took a month significantly off. taller than I am. Sure. Who is like now? Oh. A month, over a month's hard. I've got 10,525. So you're outpipping me by 50. It was that pacing instead of napping I did. <laughs> you would Eight. come in handy. Just, um, no slow pace on the bottom here. Yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to keep each other accountable. Long days in the Did booth. You go fishing with Orpen? There is a story there, I can see. No, I didn't. He gets up too early, bro. He's like, I'm getting up at five if you want to go fishing. I'm like, <laughs> come on, bro, chill, chill out. He's fucking legend, though, by the way. Fucking legend. Man. What a Orp life. the Turk. He's so cool, like everything he does. He's fucking such a cool guy. Number one on Turkey's all-time money list. Triton champion. Good friends with Ben Heath and Sam Grafton. On the business side, but certainly enjoys competing at the highest level. Comes to one of his biggest passions in life, poker. He knows how to Stern do everything. Continues. Very like, cool and classy. I, I believe that. He's just, like, got, got the fucking... It's very, very educational to be around him, you know? Sure, yeah. I'm just video recording the for my blog. <laughs> <laughs> that is the fourth one of those that Grafton has had. What do you think table. that is? It's uh, is it so, a juice, juice of some sort? Yeah, mango juice. That orange juice. It's got to be a lot of sugar. Bob Haddon in the chat saying it would not be a poker stream without Henry Kilbane talking about the in brackets, long, hard hours <laughs> of work. Bob, listen, feel free, come down. Okay, we'll lock you in. Get you locked <coughs> in. A jest, of course. No, literally, they, they're, they, they're locking us in here. <laughs> I'm also trying to point out what a trooper Maria is on two hours, Kip. But I must admit, I am notorious for <coughs> probably exaggerating how tired I am. <laughs> Small blind, big blind. Really nothing to write home about again in terms of collisions. It's been a very you know, steady pace <coughs> of nuanced spots. What we've seen so far. Still the Malaysian contingent out in front in this field. Gatley, the only player with more than two million in chips. Followed by his close friend and fellow countryman, Chin Wei Lim, in second. As Robert Flink opting to bet close to pot. With the four deuce on the six tray tray.
Gets the job done. It's the Jack-10 would have potentially called with that one club. Two overs against a smaller bet. The Swede had other plans. As he scoops in his first pot at this feature table. Just a few minutes left on the clock for this level before we head into the final frame of the evening. Don't forget, if you haven't already blocked off your calendar, same time, same place every day. Triton, YouTube, and Twitch tomorrow. We're playing down to a champion. I said champion. We're walking away with $897,000. For their efforts, Ali will be back in the booth, hopefully with a story to tell. I know he also enjoys fine dining. I believe he had dinner plans. Curious to hear what he got up to. See, so he was away. Yeah, I think Ali and Randy had themselves a nice dinner while we hopped in here. I hope he stayed out of trouble. You know, Randy is very good at keeping, you know, Ali out of trouble. But, you know, Ali on the loose in London, <laughs> especially in the evening. I don't know. I have to, I don't know, slip an air tag into his pocket or something as Antonius potentially sets fire. 30,000 chips. On the 9-6, Deuce, two overs, backdoor hearts, Kulev flopping top pair. Seventy. There is that check raise, and given how deep we are, I feel like we're going to be seeing another street here. Antonius... Opening from under the gun, continuing for 30k, facing the check race of 70. Two overs, backdoor hearts. A lot of good things can develop for the finish. Superstar, 250 in the middle. Jack of clubs on the turn. Changes nothing. None of those backdoor draws developing for Patrick. Yeah, and you wonder for Kulev up against an under-the-gun opening range and Antonius coming along against that check raise on the flop. If that might slow things down a little bit for Kulev, especially with no improvement. 45. Doesn't look like it, though, as he cuts out a bet. But it is small sizing. Yeah, continuing for around 15% after check raising flop. I'm a big fan of this. I think a lot of us are guilty of check raising and then seeing the overcard. Maybe monsters lying under the bed in the form of the fear of overpairs. But Kolev finding the bet, finding the turn barrel, managing to keep in the customer. Patrick Antonius with six outs once. Obviously more than one way to win this hand as the board gets worse for Kulev. Two overcards now presenting themselves across Turner River. Is this perhaps the door that Patrick was looking to sneak through, Maria? Especially when Kulev takes that smaller sizing on the turn, it certainly does allow Antonius to stick around with a lot of those overcards. You know, perhaps the king tens and the king queens are able to see that river and certainly could go for value if those were the hands that Antonius did continue with. And now Antonius just left in actuality with ace high, but understanding that he should be facing a lot of these 9x type holdings, but doesn't try to get him off of it. Yeah, Tony is happy to take his showdown. Perhaps a hand that he could have managed to fold out had he shown some aggression. But I can see, you know, 
a lot of the obvious flop check raises, some of those gut shots, bricking right. ace 10 with plenty of showdown. Is looks like we've got a 15 minute break on our hands as Kulev scoops in a pot against Patrick Antonius. Real treat in terms of the field and the players we've had at the feature table so far. Chip counts brought to you by Poker Stake. It is Ben Heath that is going to be leading the pack when they return from break. Alex Kulev on his tail. Leon Sturm at the bottom of the chip counts. Going to have some work to do along with Sam Grafton and Patrick Antonius as the blinds will be going up to 10k, 25k. So all three of those players dropping down below 20 bigs as we welcome you back to the break. That's Henry Kilbane alongside Maria Ho. Maria, some really nuanced spots throughout that frame. A lot of, you know, blind v blind, button v big blind. And these players just giving us a bit of insight as to really what is required and what you need to navigate to make it to this level. Absolutely. And I think that we were talking about just how tough that feature table was. And I think it was very interesting and insightful to see the way that they approached those spots. I think for me, the most interesting one that I got to witness was Sturm with that bet on the river of half pot with the 9X mm. holding. So just want to keep that fresh in our yeah. minds because that's something we want to ask him about. Well, talking of tough... 21 hours awake, two hours sleep. <laughs> Appreciate you keeping us company. I believe you're going to be bowing out and getting some much needed shut eye and hopefully coming back tomorrow a bit fresher with a bit more uh, sleep under your belt. Randy Lou coming back to jump in and close out the final two levels of play here. Day one of the GG Millions 25K live from the Triton Super High World Series. Don't go too far. We'll be back very shortly. <laughs> Take your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Practice against GTO on all your devices. Study any situation from pre-flop to river, we've got it all. Upload your hand histories to uncover your biggest leaks. We have hundreds of hours of coaching from top pros, cutting edge theory articles, and custom study plans to help guide your poker journey. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top-up, up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience.
Oh, crush the blue more. So many players. This is a crazy thing to do. Broke the Guinness World Record. Welcome to the World Series the of Poker. poker song. The biggest event. poker song. It's larger than all of the GG Poker. Stop it, which is all time five. Jump, 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 jump. No way. Jump, he's going to hit you. Short-handed, kind of three bet to 65k with the tens, and do the chips always have to find their way into the middle here? I think when you look at the effective stack, the answer is yes. But how will Yan respond in the sense of you know, does he feel like Sturm ever has some light three bets here? And if he does, if he comes with the four bet all in, will that perhaps scare his opponent off? Would a call maybe keep? some of those inferior hands in that don't want to get it in. Does look like Yan chooses that option. Oh, yeah? 160 in the middle. Oh, great. Yeah. Is well, the I flop to texture going to cost Yan so a full double as we head to the jack? 9-5. Couple of spades. Yeah. One over to Sturm's 10s. Maybe it's a bit played out. It's it's less than two. Do apologize, Maria. Still pretty safe for tens, but also he is aware that when Yan raises and calls a three bet off of that stack size, there are going to be some of these Broadway combinations in here. And those connect pretty nicely with this flop, but Sturm still going to go ahead with a small C bet. Continuing small and wide quarter pots as expected. These positions, action back on Yan, Ace of Spades as backup, as well as the American Airlines. Is he going to announce himself here? The answer is yes, north to 107. Wants to play for it all before a potential scare card rolls off. Yeah, some hands that, you know, naturally would open and call the three bets are obviously some of these traps that we see that Yan actually has, but certainly hands like ace-jack suited, king-jack suited, queen-jack suited perhaps would all find their way in there, and those are going to be ahead of the tens, but there are also some combo draws. Sturm doesn't block the flush draw. He doesn't have the spade, but he does block some of those straight possibilities. Well, if there was a world where Yan was check raising with one of those draws that you mentioned in the form of spades. Now get there on this four of spades turn. Has Sturm now found an exit for just half the price of what could have been had Yan announced himself pre flop? He's asking for a count. As you mentioned, blocking some of those, well, you know, time. that 10 of hearts, very key. <laughs> blocking king 10, queen 10. Yeah, there's certainly a portion, though, of value hands that he doesn't block and hands that could have potentially gotten there on the turn. But not a terrible price that he's getting. But as you mentioned, maybe Yan flatting pre-flop against Sturm's three bet might have cost him a full double. So tough. You're playing at the highest level <coughs> that tournament poker has to offer and some of the best in the world. These spots where you know Compared to the average player, they're more than capable of having these semi-bluffs, having these more obscure bluffs, but it does 
ultimately find the fold and immediately texting the boys in the group chat, hey. It's like, uh, like 40, 40 minutes. It's like uh, not, not close to my place, but uh, so I'm staying at the hotel some of the time. I'll go back home, you know, I don't care. Yeah, 40 minutes at 1 a.m. is kind of rough. Yeah. Oh, it's less than 40. Uh, at 1 a.m. it'll be less. Okay. <coughs> Should have qualified on GG Pokers I mean, my, for the end. You wouldn't have had to commute. My apartment's nice, but it's not quite as nice as the, as the Park, Park Lane uh, Intercontinental anyway, so. <laughs> if, they, if they were putting me up in a, you know, in a fucking... Thanks for doxing everyone, Squiddy. Right. <laughs> just like this guy. Just putting everyone's what business out there, you know? This guy freaking tagging everybody on Instagram, <laughs> location. <laughs> well, I'm not talking to Squiddy. He's going to tango with his fellow Brit and good friend, Ben Heath. You know, we've had hands that could potentially you know, collide or interact. You know, the, the King Jack three board type of potential situation. But so far, the flops not cooperating with us in terms of players locking horns and this board texture. However, one that Heath is going to opt to check back. Yeah, not a lot of coolers, shall we say, post to some pre that we saw some big hands run into each other. But yeah, as you mentioned, nothing like top two against bottom set post yeah. or, you know, straight draw, flush draw against over pair. There we yep. go. Jinx padlock, one, two, three. <laughs> 85K in the middle, oh, squiddy. See, that's definitely uh, some type of... British slang. I, we don't. We don't do that. We we do the jinx thing. I don't know about the padlock part. That that part was that threw me off. That's a good thing. We do buy you a coke. Have you heard that? It's a good thing we're in London, then, <laughs> isn't it? Really, we don't do that. The audacity. We. we <laughs> the audacity. Oh, the viewers will agree with me. You, you guys are all from. <laughs> you asked where they they're watching from. We're about to find out. <laughs> really sus behavior from my co-commentators, Grafton. Gets there on the river in the form of uh, inside straight draw. 85k in the middle, see what. Check, check, flop, check, check, turn. Feels like a small bet spot, given that Heath hasn't shown much interest in the form of you know strength yeah especially against an under the gun opening range certainly trying to keep in some ace highs that could get curious that's going to be a big part of heath's range between the position that he opened pre and the way that he chose to play post does feel like <coughs> there is some Well, a very warm welcome back to the JW Marriott here at the Grosvenor House in London. It is day one of the Triton Super High Roller Series here, and we're about to head into the final frame of play in event number one, the 25K GG Millions Live Edition, as Maria stepped out. Welcome by my, my partner in crime, my, my boy, okay. my dude, Randy okay. Lou. How's it going, man? You've been, you've been hitting the town, you've been out. Things are good. Yeah. Um, London's obviously a, gr uh, a lovely city, um, both day and night. And, you know, uh, I, I kind of crave the poker. I, I wanted to give a little bit more of a uh, commentary in the booth. So here I am, back at it for the last one. Oh, so you've just locked yourself in for the next two weeks. Like you. Uh, I'm you're not going to leave this seat. You guys will rotate that one, okay. all three of you, and then, easy, um, easy, then I go home. Easy for us. Randy Lou is locked in for some Triton Super High Roller Series here. Listen. 25k to kick things off. The Malaysian contingent out in front. Kat Lee, who, you know, we've been talking, he's knocked on the door. Vietnam, Cyprus, a few crossbars, a couple of third place finishes, just getting closer and putting himself in a position to finally get that Triton title. Is he just going to come out of the gates firing first event? 
Well, you know, Kiali is one of those guys who has played a lot of the Triton events, and I feel like he knows it, that he's gotten better from series to series, um, has made many deep runs, um, hasn't been able to close out just yet, uh, but really a love player from all of the original OG players and, um, you know, a force to be reckoned with in, in this game. And, you know, he even went out to Vegas to go play some events over there. So you can know he's very hungry to just grab a title. Yeah, and, you know, he'll be the first to admit that short deck is his main game, but his improvement in Hold'em, man. He is good in knowing the Hold'em. Well, we're going to be getting to see some of him as well as some new faces at the blue and red feature table. We're going to throw it down for the final frame of the evening here. Day one, the Triton Super High Roller Series is the GG Millions Live Edition. JNT in the mix on the blue table, leading the field with 1.3 million. On the red table, Alex Pefley, a name that I don't recognize at a Triton Super High Roller Series. Looks like a potential newcomer leading the field over there with 50 bigs. Yeah, he dropped the ball. J&T. You make 20 face, 20 face. I'm being done. No, 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 not big blind. It's your turn. Not yeah. big blind. Oh, okay, okay. So okay. Yeah, you make 20 face, 20 I face. I was thinking I had, you... I thought you were saying that. That was all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so some antics to keep us on oh, yeah. the edge of our seats to kick things off. We're good. Uh, JNT in trap one. It can be difficult, Randy, as you know, playing live poker to to see what's going on in seat nine. Don't need to talk about it any further. Folds round to Who, Vogelsang. Where'd he go? Wait, where where did he go? <laughs> where did he go? Hang like on a is the shadow is just perfect with the color. Wait, of Christoph was just sat there. What's hang on? I just saw a hand come from underneath the table. Some Darth Vader stuff going on there. We jest, of course. A lot of love for Vogel. Suited connector here for Rodrigo Seiji. He's in. He's in. He's going to flop an open ender on the Queen 8-5 mono. 1-3-5 to fight for. Of course, the open and the straight draws on these monotone boards is not as enticing as, you know, the nine and the four. Two of them are hearts. Ace three, it's not that interesting in the board, but he may still fire on these monotone quite small. There's a lot of just check folds that just exist from a big blind defending range. Don't yeah, that's think a this is one of them, though. Just gets to fold out those, you know, random two cards with six outs and whatnot. Yes. Rodrigo, part of the Brazilian Armada. They are so tough to play against, Randy. Widely considered as the toughest nation in the world at present to play against. The Brazilians have shown up in force, and Rodrigo... Forcing his way to victory in that one with the flop check raise. Oh, maybe he just thought he had 7-6 of no. hearts. I mean, who knows? No, no, for sure not. Um, he's he's very well aware that players like to continuation bet on these monotone boards uh, very small. And if that's the case, then you can just check raise at a re rather high frequency. He's aware that, you know, like two of the outs he's looking for does bring a four liner, um, not four hearts actually, and that's clearly troublesome, so looking to just take that one down on the flop, which he did. Not see Reezy in the chat saying Heath went from chip leader to busting in one, <laughs> one hour. No, no, no. He's still in. Okay. Very healthy 1.3 million. We just switched things up. We thought maybe the fans would want to see some Phil Ivy, perhaps, some Brewer, you know, some Chidwick. Look, I don't know what table you got before, but this table is... Pretty fire. We got J and T to mix things up. Uh, Phil Ivy, Chris Brew, who's been on the run of amazing run lately, just, right? Two bracelets, um, some other big scores, and had a Triton Trophy at our last stop. This is a this is a table you want to watch. Chidwick, who almost won Player of the Year uh, last season, yeah. got out done by Jason Coon, but not his fault. Just Jason Coon just performed phenomenally, of course. He just came in clutch at the precise moment that was necessary. 
For me, I'm actually uh, also a little excited to see uh, Kanapong, uh, Tanarachuko, right? Because he did not come to the last That's stop, right. if I'm correct. That's right. Um, so, you know, one of the Hin and Punat Ponsri, obviously, uh, two of the Thailand players who come to the Triton stop. Uh, we, you kind of first hear about them from, from here, and they've done extremely well. Fun to watch. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. KT was with us back in Vietnam, and I think just a lot of crossbars there as well didn't really materialize into any deep runs, but glad to see he's back. Of course, that Ivan Liao Player of the Year leaderboard resets here in London, Season 3. And we've all been throwing names forward as to you know, who to look out for, who's our pick for this season. There, there are a lot of candidates, that's for sure. And have you just, well, who are some of the people you, that you mentioned might Danny be Tang. I, I think that's a nice one. Kiat Lee, uh, these guys that are just competing. How about Jason Kuhn? Is that a good good choice? Let me, uh, let me, let me check that one. <laughs> maybe. I think he's qualified. <laughs> As always, uh, you can... Look, it wouldn't surprise me if we start putting Chris Brewer in the conversation, right? He, he plays short deck. He plays no one to hold him. A little confusion going on. No, no. Uh, Chris Brewer just saw one of JNT's cards. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, the year of Brewer. I mean, it's been uh, <laughs> recently engaged as well. Massive congratulations to Brewer and his fiance as we head to the 774 Rainbow Board. So we're going to miss... For everyone, Chidwick retaining the overpair range advantage as well as the betting lead. The sea bat's going to get it done, Randy. Little tiny one, too. Oh, it feels good. 50 players remain. The clock ticking down in the final two levels of day one here at the Triton Super High Roller Series, live from the JW Merritt. Enlighten me how far away from the ITM. About 24 spots off. I believe we've got 50 left. 26 places paid. Min cash of 40,500. Tomorrow, our first champion of the series, Randy. Going to be going home with a very casual $897,000. Just, you know. Not too bad. What's that? 36 buy ins in a 25K to kick things off? Yeah, and obviously 162 entries is phenomenal here for this opening event in London. You know, there's many other players who are here but haven't fired away yet. Um, looking to probably play tomorrow and all the subsequent events. For now, though, it is Ace King off suit here for Chris Brewer against JNT's Pocket Fives. 300. Brewer is actually three bet quite sizable here to 300k off of 870k stack. J and T on the button. We've seen him in the past. You know, get involved, but gotta retain that chip lead at the table. Yeah, I don't mind him doing that. When an opponent puts in like such a large three bet, you kinda think yeah, he's committed in some manner. Yeah. And obviously two fives is more of a guessing game at that point. Yeah, does he want to play a forty big blind pot? With a couple of fives. The C saying the dynamic duo, Randy and Henry. Dynamic yeah. duo, okay. What are we, superheroes now? I mean, way way to shoot a man down. I mean, <laughs> keep, keep your compliments to yourself, chat, okay? <laughs> only, well, cri uh, only criticism from criticism here on out. I want to hear it then. No criticism on this holding. A couple of aces. Fold all the way around to the big blind. KT, also known as Tent. And the big with the 9 7, gonna defend against the min open. Heads up to the Queen Jack Trey flop, complete whiff for the Thai superstar. 
Chedwick with the overpair, Ace of Diamonds, 135 in the middle. Likely to see this hand over and done with. Chidwick, not one to shy away from sharing that custom Jacob and Co. timepiece. You can only win from taking down a Triton main event, as he did back in Madrid of 2022. The short deck main. Yeah. As we switch on over to the red Both feature like table. Owls. Mm. They interviewed Seth Davies, and they thought it was Stephen Chidwick. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who made that mistake. King Jack going to defend here for Danny Tang. <clears throat> nice situation here, open-ended straight draw for the pre-flop raiser. Okay. Um, Lubavetsky. Uh, can I do a sparkling water and an ice? Thank you very much. All in pre flop call? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> okay. Every hypothetical situation you can ask, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, you if got, they're going to give the, you information, you King Jack. Yeah, why not? If I win this tournament, I have to go to Burning Man. It's on tape. Yeah. So what do they do at Burning Man? I mean, it is a temporary city of like seventy-five thousand people, so like everyone can kind of have their own adventure. You know, there's a lot of artwork. It's like, artwork. A, yeah. Um, <laughs> Look how skeptical you said. As always, worth mentioning to those of you American poker players, like a cliche watching for the first time. We are, of course, putting out content over on our Instagram, Twitter, exclusive interviews with some of your favorite poker players, behind the scenes footage, <coughs> you name it, we've got it. If you haven't already, I drop Google us a follow Man. over on Instagram and Twitter as Drew Gonzalez. Arguably the freshest looking man in the building right now. I feel like I saw like a Twitter shot of him like you did. getting a suit for, for yeah. this occasion. Yeah. He's going to be playing three events, and he bought a suit for each event. For each event? For each. He's uh, got three suits for the three <laughs> events. That, yeah, this man isn't playing around, okay? Oh, boy. Okay, well, he's in a situation where Koki Mizuno obviously going to go and face Queen off of eight blinds. He's going to have to... I would say it's oh. mandatory for him to push this ace-10 suited into the stack. Obviously, the bad situation, especially one ten down. <coughs> Koki Mizuno qualifier <coughs> into this event over on GG. Would you believe qualified for four hundred dollars, Randy? In great shape here against Drew mm. until wow. the Jack Ten Eight Bad board. Fight. However, two to come. Double gut it's shot as well as right the Queen. I'll take mine right now. Five Ten in the middle. Mm. Ace of Hearts on um. the turn. How about now? I don't know. Forty flipping percent. to the river. Susan, tell me what happened. King, happens. queen, nine heart needed. <laughs> As the table oh, is oh, tapped oh, and Cookie Mazzino is eliminated, getting it in good, but coming up short against Drew Gonzalez's ace, ten of spades, and one of our GG That's qualifiers. Him. Hit the showers. Henry. Randy. If this suit is this lucky, yeah, I'm not pair. wearing the other two suits on the following pair. days. That is a great point. He did say Interesting analysis. that he's uh, 
kind of two gut shots. What if I get a tattoo? What? If he wins, he's going to get a tattoo. Triton tattoo. A Triton tattoo. Okay. And it was, we clipped it. Lucas Greenwood said, but he's that stands if you win, like we all come with you and see you get this Triton tattoo. So, I mean, we might be going yeah. to a tattoo parlor on Saturday. I don't okay. know. Uh, how are we getting ahead of ourselves? I don't know. But uh, that's a good start there of the ace 10 into ace queen, one ten down. Daniel, <laughs> but like I never. Never, ever. Never go by Danny. I do Danny sometimes. Okay. Like, if someone in this room goes, Danny, are you looking or you know? I'm listening to the tone. If they're angry, I am not looking. <laughs> Andrei Lubavetsky's picked up Big Slick. Slides in a three bet, 2.5x. You see the smaller three bets when you're in that 20 big blind effective zone. You know, obviously we're playing 35 plus, you probably will see a little bit larger. King, queen, kind of a trouble situation here. Uh, that's a name I haven't seen in a while. Pascal Francois. He's good. <laughs> He's an absolute legend, mate. First time venturing out to a Triton super high roller series, but if I'm not mistaken, was uh, one of the gatekeepers of the highest stakes back in the day. Yeah, he, he was playing the highest stakes, no limit cash game, six max for, for a very long time. Not sure what he's been up to the past uh, few years, but I'm um, sure he's still obviously very active in the, the games out there. Yeah, we really are spoiled for for that kind of storyline, if you will, where we have these online legends from, say, a decade or so ago disappear for five, six years and then just randomly show up. We've had it before. We've had a lot of them. Like yeah. Some of them even <laughs> more old. Like, I remember David Benefield popping out and playing. Uh, you, but before you started. Cyprus. There was... Uh, oh, you were the first one to point them out. Um, Skywalker. Yes, oh yes. Yeah. But even some of the players at the table had no idea who he no was. No idea. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. It's good to see these these online legends from back in the day. I like to see how players like J and T throw curveballs at them, right? Like he's definitely got various lines that opponents are not used to seeing. Can Allow him to accumulate chips here. He's got a dominated situation. However, he isn't the preflop raiser. Does whiff. Uh, perhaps going to allow Chidwick to find a way to find victory in his hand. Starts to fire out a C bet. Quite Actually, like quite small, small, like a mini raise. Not sorry, mini raise, mini bet almost. And Looks like that's actually going to make J and T attack, or did he call with Just big chips? He called with big chips. Oh, zero improvement for J and T in the form of draws that he could potentially chase. Chidwick picking up a gut shot. An awkward one, right? Sometimes you drop the seven, your opponent's holding the nine, you lose chips. It's also the type of card of the eight where, let's say my opponent's holding like six, seven, they've got improvement to never full turn. It does get quite dicey to bet here on the turn. Maybe he feels his opponent is on kind of a weak holding. He looks like he was going to reach for chips given that he kind of bet minimum or close to it. Does get it done with King Four suited. Nice, Chidwick. Aggression paying off on the turn. Mm.
bolts over to the blinds. <coughs> Just the two of us. I will check. I like that Jack Germain from the UK is just sipping on this beer as he's playing this blind versus blind spot. Pulls out flop the eight king queen. Uh, it's about as British as you, you yeah. can get, Randy, right? Like, we're, we're in London, okay? Is this a pub game? I mean, what? Is this a pub game? I would love to take you to a pub game here, man. <laughs> <laughs> you would be... You just be like, you know, oh, everything goes out the window, but something that won't be going out the window is the theme of the tournament so far. The king on the river. Spin. The reason for several exits so far tonight. More beer. if we need more reasons to give a massive shout out to one of our main sponsors as well as the online qualifiers into this very event of course the 25k GG Millions Live Edition GG Poker most prestigious online poker series the 2023 WSOP Online more details of that coming up soon more topics ask Fadal the coach and tool Bambi Jackpot the daily 100k GG cheers and GG care. Spin and gold, fish buffet, flip and goes. GG masters, millions of Russian cash Fridays. All in free rolls, every stream on GG poker just for you to you know, sweat along as you sweat along with us as these players battle it out the highest stakes. It's a kind of, you know, a little sweetener did, did for, you, for people Did you say watching. fish buffet? Fish buffet? Yeah. Like, what what they got? Salmon? They Tuna? got, they got whales. They got octopus. They got sharks. Whale. When were we eating whale sashimi at? I'm just letting you know the different types of fish buffet. Okay, don't don't get Peta chasing after me. You know, I'm not trying to promote whale hunting unless it's you poker. You did. Unless it's poker. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Then, you know, you do what you want. Okay. Rodrigo, calling Ace Queen. No, I'm, all, I'm done with that conversation. Let's move on. <laughs> Thank you for <laughs> I was trying to get a sneeze in there. They appreciate the clarification, Randy. Like, I really do. Uh, Rodrigo with a sneaky flat, eh? Do like it. It's nice to retain some. Top of range of this stack depth. Good things can happen on ace high boards, of course. Also, it's important if you have a kind of a flatting strategy in position. I saw him earlier flat like a 10 9 suited, so he needs to kind of protect that range in case he gets squeezed at in those spots. So it makes sense how he's opting to, to flat the ace queen pre. For now, though, he does flop open and straight draw. Um, does fire out 45k. A little tricky for Chidwick is, of course, sometimes he makes just straight with the queen. His opponent's holding a king. The price is rather good, though, with this ace-8, despite the kind of the weak draw he's got. Stevie opting to check call. Cool. 260 in the middle. It's the eight of diamonds gives Rodrigo the queen high straight. Chidwick turning fourth pair. I don't know why I said fourth pair. Bottom pair. <laughs> but it is fourth pair. Well, I, I mean, true. you're not wrong. Thank you, Randy. You're I, just not saying anything relevant <laughs> in that spot. But okay, cool. I fourth mean, pair. Randy, for the most part. That's what commentary is all about. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with this straight, there is two flush draws present. So while sometimes you kind of want to get a little tricky here, it does make sense that he wants to fire out and protect against those hands as well as the random two pairs that exist. Gets it done.
final two 40 minute levels. 45 players left, 26 places paid. We obviously know that we won't be getting into the money tonight. The question is how many players will be bagging and tagging and you know, getting a good night's sleep. The prospects of coming back tomorrow and winning a Triton title as well as the 897,000 that comes with it. A few big names left in the field without a Triton trophy. Vogelsang, Ben Heath, to name a couple. But I tell you what, early showing, scrolling through the app, the Brazilians have come to London and shown up in force. Certainly going to be keeping an eye on the likes of Pablo, Brito Silva, Bruno Volkman, Rodrigo Seiji, Rodrigo Seliwan, just to name a, a few of the Brazilian armada that have shown up here as we see JNT. Not top set against Phil Ivy. Ivy with a gut shot. He had a gut shot with that little heart back up too. One over. A mini bet. So it looks like JNT I tried to bet 20k, but of course the minimum is actually a full big blind. So 25 will be the bet. Ivy obviously can't resist the price being laid to see that potential gut shot roll off. 185 in the middle, the eight of spades, board pairing, a card that one could lead from the big. It's crossing his mind, as you can see him think here. He he saw, like, the ultra-tiny bet. One to bet actually 20K, so he's actually thinking this is weakness. Well, music to the ears of JNT as the dealer announces 80K. Top boats. Okay, he's going to verify oh, he's got a go. boat. Yep, he's got a boat. Oh. Let's go, the the funny thing is he puts the glasses back oh. down after. He doesn't leave them on. Let's go, JNT. Calls. How much is it? Doesn't matter. I'm in. Count me in. Got top boat. Three, four, five in the middle. Ivy does not want to improve. Going to the river. Fortunately for him, the theme of the day continues. King of Diamonds rolls off. Oh, boy. Yeah, he's... JNT... Is selling the story that he's weak, kind of like some of the mannerisms, what's happened on that turn. And I think Ivy might be taking the bait here, and he is. Oh, both flush draws, bricking all the obvious straight draws, you know, the queen yeah, tens, yeah. queen jacks, jack tens, as JNT just clicks it back. Ivy's like, are you serious? That's one of the most frustrating parts of the game. When you get clicked, <laughs> Ivy just <laughs> gave a little brew, smirk. Brew a little bit of a stare down. Like, this guy's serious? Looking for a reaction. Oh, he's not <laughs> he doesn't need to look at Brew. Brew wasn't involved in the pot. I think it was more so just like, is this guy for real? He's like <laughs> clicking me on the river? Like, okay, puts his glasses on and makes sure he's got a full house. Takes them back off. He didn't put the glasses back on when the king came. The old reverse tails around the I um, love it. I mean, it extracted the value from that queen seven. JNT up to fifth in chips. It's the UK's Oliver Bittell leading the pack. Was at our feature table for a short stint. Eliminated not one, not two, but three players in... About three orbits, including Jason Kuhn. Nico Koop. Recognizable name, friend of mine. First joined us back in Cyprus. Cash at 25k, came second for 480k. Currently finds himself second in chips. Not too shabby. Some yawns coming out of Chris Brewer. 
Yeah, got in late last night, I believe. Flight was delayed, missed dinner. Probably. He missed the dinner. He did indeed. You know, whenever you see these, the likes of Nico Coop, for example, join us for the first time back in Cyprus and fast forward eight weeks, comes for a second time for a full series, one would assume, given that he's here from the start. Really does speak volume, or volumes rather, as to what exactly Triton puts on offer for these players, because you hear time and time again, you know, the VIP service, if you will, of how these players are, are looked after. Not only the, the tournaments, as I put a sock right. in my mouth, as Jack. <laughs> yeah, sock in the mouth for a second. Finds the fold with the ace queen. Discipline lay down, given the action in front of him. UTG open, plus two three bet from JNT. And now, Chidwick. Can he find the same discipline that Jack showcased with the offsuit ace queen? He's playing off of a 24 big blind stack, put in two so far of those. It's getting a good price. It just depends on what kind of range JNT is three betting in this spot. Um, you know, is he the type to just three bet even worse hands than ace queen, or or is this just premiums only? He's gonna know more. They've got, you know, obviously they've played over the years in these high rollers. Yeah, the positions are. What's concerning me the most? Trying to reverse engineer this in Chidwick's shoes. You know, I've opened from under the gun. Oh, 24 does find the jam, though. <laughs> JNT going to ask for the count. 615k total. It's awkward here of two tens. The thing is, of course, all the ace kings are going in there. It's. You put in five of your opponents, 24 big blinds, you could easily be ahead. Yeah, this is pretty much mandatory once you put in the three bet. Chance to knock out one of the best in the game. Slight favorite. JNT just, you know, leaning over, seeing what his opponent's jammed with before tabling the hand. It's like, this guy's four bet jammed ace queen against me. Jack, eight, seven, no improvement. For Chidwick, obviously the six immediate outs as well as some running club draws. And how about the nine of clubs on the turn presenting precisely that. However, the seven or queen of clubs would be no good. It would give JNT a straight flush. Three of hearts on the river. As we lose Stephen Chidwick, 20 spots off the money for a long day's grind. Be hitting the showers late in the evening. And J and T. Shove Ace Queen into me. I got you. You're out. You're showered. Dusted. I believe. Chip leader. Randy. Forty four left. Yes, he is. Up to two point one million, overtaking Oliver Bithell at the th throne for now. Flopping boats, sorry, turning boats, winning huge flips against the likes of Stephen Chidwick. Clicking back against Ivy on the river. My favorite part was he put on the glasses on the turn. <laughs> Didn't put it on the river. The reverse tells, bro. I mean, like, God. it worked on Ivy, right? Like, all people, he's got, he tricked Ivy. Rodrigo's picked up 9-3, suited in the big blind, will defend here against the dusty 5-4 offsuit. 30 BB's effective to start things off. Check. 10 connecting with bottom pair, Rodrigo whiffing. Fifty 
And the Seabet. Did bring in a raised eyebrow from Rodrigo, but the cards swiftly hit the mark after that. Seth Davies, Sam Greenwood, a couple of eliminations. When was the last time you played against the an outer tables, online player? As well as Michael Sawyer. I didn't know you were an $11 online player. <laughs> yep, let's play those. For real? Yeah. You must be having a blast right now. I'm on the spin up, man. I'm on the spin up, living the dream. I oh, hope, I wish you really all the best. Thank you, appreciate it. And it's a, 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 so many first timers run very well. I like to hear that. That's mm. great news for me. His running I, well. I, I, <coughs> I respect the fact that you just admits it. You know. Yeah, yeah. So many sometimes like these guys come and then they 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 try to hide the fact that they're it's their first time and. Mm -hmm. They don't, they do, you know? Yeah. It's great. I'm just having a good time. Good. Free rolling, you know? Played $11 tournaments. This is 25k. <laughs> Bro. Oh, you got King Eye Flush Draw, though. Nice. Stakes are going to be getting higher, and, well, the price will be getting more expensive, perhaps, for Jersey Ops to check back the King High Flush Draw on two overs and allows Alex Peffley to turn top pair. Yeah, one of the problems when you get tricky here, giving your opponent You're wrong. random equity does make the call. <coughs> yeah, it's not over. Still got 34%. And how about the eight of hearts? The probably least expected draw for Drew Gonzalez to have here if you're in Alex Peffley's shoes as we see him check on over to Drew who just a minute, is having the time of his life, enjoying his perceived free roll. A bit of change of scenery from his $11 online comps. I have to second what Danny Tang said, love the honesty, just enjoying the moment and firing out 140K. Gets paid, Randy, and is going to cross <laughs> the Six, 900K seven, eight, mark. Nine, ten. That's Straight. A is indeed. What is the story of how you got into the tournament? No, I, was I won it. a competition in Vegas. ACR is doing uh, packages to come out here, and I won one of those. How did you win a competition? I had to compete with the other ACR ambassadors, play $500 buy-ins and above, and we took our best five scores from the summer, and whoever had the most points won. So it seems like by calling yourself an $11 player, you might be a little bit underselling yourself. I'm a streamer, though, so I actually do still play $11 tournaments. You know what I mean? Regularly online. But I'll take shots during the summer, mostly. Any of them go I guess they must have gone well. Yeah. You won the competition. Yeah, what was yeah. your biggest score? Uh, 56. Hell yeah. I pulled a 50K bounty at the win. I shopped an ARIA tournament, $600 ARIA tournament. For 27. Does the bounty count for your competition? Yeah. <laughs> I was so lucky. So, so lucky, man. As soon as I pulled it, we capped it at 25x, so somebody couldn't just bink some stupid tournament and then win. So that gave me a 25x. The chop gave me a 25x. Well, all you need is 15th in this and your new career high. I know. For sure, yeah. 56 awesome. Is the high score. What do I need to beat 56? Uh, well, 57, there's a 50, I think 17 or something. Oh, okay. That'd be cool. Yeah. <coughs> Table mates. Is this the only tournament you're playing then? Relishing no, in. I get 100k and buying, so. You can the decide. The story. Yeah, I'll play the mystery. We'll and then I think I'm going to play the Olin. turbo. The 30k or whatever with 10k bounties. That's exciting. You're a bounty specialist. Huh? You're a bounty <laughs> specialist. I was going to say, I, of I course now, you yes. played a bounty. I, I do it makes mystery sense. bounties, I have to. You did, you not, did you consider just firing the main and that's it? For like a second. That'd be tight. That, that, yeah, that's pretty badass, but I don't know if I have that in me. I want a couple shots to hang out with you guys, you know? A couple shots is the responsible thing to do. <laughs> I'm just bagging off the main for fucking five million. <laughs> <laughs> quite the story. Just come here and rifle the main. Look. No, I, I, I sold some action for sure. So, I still possible. 
just needs to bink this one first. <clears throat> no, 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 no. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. I don't care, Randy. I'm, I'm a fan of this man. I'd love to see him go all the way. It would be quite the story. $11 tournaments. Can follow along Drew Gonzalez's story over on his socials. Bet on Drew on Twitter. Sharing his experience here at the Triton Super High Roller Series. He said $11, right, Henry? I can't get past it. So how many X uh, buying are we playing right now? 2,500? It's just this insane life-changing spot, right? Like it's it's fantastic as San Alexandre. Not a fantastic spot for him. Rejamming his final nine and a half bigs and running into the tens. But sure. the silver lining, 29% equity and one over. Five cards to come. And Ooh. there is that over the ace jack five board. Alexandre leaping in front now. Ninety five percent of the equity. Safeda Black Ten does precisely that. In fact, boats up just because why not? Yeah, okay. Ten high for his opponent. Gets it done. Obviously devastating there, down to be eight and a half blinds for Pascal. Where? How hard? Three out of ten. Three out of ten? Is that okay? I'll return six out of ten. <laughs> that's fair. No, that's not the three. Six out of ten. That's though. not the know. three. <laughs> that's not a three. He was upward, so like, it's like you're fighting gravity, you know? It's like <laughs> one and a half. The C in the chat said, Randy, context. I'll buy Maybe you a two and eleven dollar like tournament. Stole his blind. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why did he want me to I do? think I we crowdsource. <laughs> we crowdsource a few buy-ins for Randy. Let me get in. Yeah, let me get in the mix. <laughs> That's yeah, great. You, go, you just get that mm -hmm. GoFundMe going for me. I appreciate it. Eleven dollar tournament. I surely need that. Get me some flat whites. <laughs> there. there we go. Hey, listen, they're more expensive than the tournament buying yeah, yeah. rate. Right? <laughs> give me three. Give me set two flat whites London. is more. Responsible. <laughs> I mean. Quack, quack for Danny Tang. Looks like he mocked them. Liking the hair color on Drew. Is this, uh, do you know if this is like his normal color or if he's like one of those switcheroos? I don't know personally. Okay. I would look at you. But I'm sure. Like, is it different color per different suit, maybe? I know for a fact that he went out with. I would definitely Mel, go for the top. And okay. they bought a suit, a full on for suit, sure. for each tournament he's going to be playing. So three different suits. My hand was not ready to face. Anything. Based off the first one. Did Phil they get the suits in. while in London or did in they? In London, yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, so yes. extra, extra price. Yeah, got yeah. It. Yesterday it went out. Limited vocabulary. No more. You're doing great. You feel like any bagels by any chance? I'm a little. You feel okay, like some breakfast now? Uh, are you? Do you see what I see? These are mine. I'm gonna use them. Yeah, I would those. like one. Are you sure they are? I am sure Cream cheese. Um, <coughs> we can we can make it happen. Salmon. Uber Eats exists. Uber Eats, <laughs> yeah. Don't mean to give them the free plug. Obviously, they should just sponsor Triton Super High Roller Series. Suited King opens up front. Ace ten of hearts though. Danny Tang in the big blind. 
Well, immediately staring down the stack and counting it down. Do these positions you, you tend to just call? <laughs> Dan. Did Danny say w Dan Smith? Sorry, said wow. What is this? This is awkward. <laughs> this is really strange. Are they still staring at each other? Yep. What was that? <laughs> He's just. Is he acting? Oh. Hard to tell. <laughs> <laughs> he said it like silently too, like, Jack. Danny Tang with the no-look check, flopping top pair on the ace-queen eight. And Dan Smith <coughs> under the gun with a ball texture that one could argue is going to favor his range more so than the big blind defending range. And it's good news for Danny. One's going to crack. I think it's Dan Smith. I like Dan Smith's style though because he's got like the smite, the, like the slight smile on his face, so he can kind of you know get away with it. Mm -hmm. Do some clubs. Doesn't present any backdoor opportunities for Dan. Two six five in the middle as they both continue to entertain us in more ways than one. Is this going to get Dan Smith to potentially attack in a spot where you might not expect him with his hand? It seems it, he does. Danny Tang has potentially induced, induced a little extra action. Yeah, Smith just really leveraging that range advantage on this ball texture. It's kind of sending a message to Danny that, hey pal, we're going to be playing for it all by the river. Real decision here for DT. Cool. And with, you know, the pre-flop goofiness with the stare downs, does that, you know, end up leveling Dan Smith into maybe getting out of line as Danny checks once again. All the obvious stuff breaking. The deuce is not an ideal card to multi-barrel on in case your opponent's holding an, an ace and they feel more comfortable, of course, with their kicker improving. Sometimes your opponent convinces himself that he's trying to blow you off the chop and they, they still call a rather large bet. Uh, Smith unblocking hands like clubs, jack 10, or a double gut shot. He just got awfully serious. I don't know what to make of that. Nice little insight into the reads that Dan Smith is picking up on. Okay, you could fucking talk when you have these 10 suited. I see. And talk, I checked. Your actions were speaking. What? what? What's going on here, Henry? He seems a little bit annoyed now. Looks like some jimmies have been ruffled. Yeah. Danny Tang rustling the jimmies of Dan Smith. You would have called? Actions speak louder than words. You would. You wouldn't have bet at all. Smack. I mean, I thought betting at all was, uh, was coming. I was not expecting you to bet another 200. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Heading back over to the blue feature table, and some of you with sharp eyes in the early hours of the morning might note a lack of Phil Ivy. He's been eliminated in 41st to the hands of Jack Germain. Do we do we have a hand? 
We do. It was a nothing burger. Oh, okay. Short stacked, flopped middle pair. Money went in the middle after defending. And the rest is history. I roll in. Rodrigo. 12 and a half bigs. Ace King, a welcome sight. JNT. Maybe looking to. Come on, snack, King Seven <laughs> Snack on some Brazilians, you know. <laughs> Who knows, man? Like, <laughs> it's JNT, all right? Well, Ace 10 suited. It's got a bit of a decision here. 12 and a half blinds. Yeah, the Phil Ivy Slayer. On home turf. Looking to sink one of the ships of the Brazilian Armada, perhaps, with the Ace 10 of Spades. Awkward spot with a few oh, deeper okay, stacks behind, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Does oh. have Brewer, Hecklin. I was confused. I thought for a second they just put you. Behind, like, but has him covered. From the big blind. So ace 10 suit, it goes down. Can a pont on Archer call, making a decision here of two threes. Two threes is a bit troublesome here. It's just like, well, obviously he's got two overs, you're flipping, but <laughs> very often you actually see some pocket pairs. Pocket, close. Close one. Pocket. Pocket three. Me? No, I mean me. Oh, okay. Pocket three. If I have pocket four, pocket five, call. Almost. Three will be too big. No, almost. Pocket three. Almost, almost. Final level of the evening, 15k, 30k. You're the big one, you got Yeah, I was supposed to be the big one. Yeah, yeah. The way I'll double shove under the gun, back to back hands. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Players with chips at the end of the night. We'll be bagging and tagging for day two and coming back tomorrow. Chip counts from this feature table brought to you by GG Poker. It's JNT leading not only this feature table, the entire tournament. Only player with more than 2 million chips. Queens for Brewer. Yep. Welcome site, late into day one. I know, it, it is just like, what the fuck? The year of Brewer, perhaps. 2023. Massive <laughs> table, tiny golds. Huge, huge Still table. doesn't have <laughs> a Holden Triton trophy. Both of his titles. Coming in different forms. One PLO in, and truck deck, there right? There we go. Look at us finishi finishing each other's sentences at 1am, Randy. Big hands. <laughs> Nico play hmm? yes. If you play your cards right, I'll, I'll walk you back Never home. Never played some here. Uh, no? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Nico Coop here. Um, Nico, I looked at his little profile earlier, and uh, you mentioned him, and it seemed like he actually almost won uh, a Triton title, got second place in the turbo, so I think that's why he's a little extra hungry to come out to this... London stop. Yeah, 100%. I mean, world-class player. Always has been hungry for the game. And now, once right. you get that taste of Triton, oh, like right. you said, coming coming so close to a victory as well. He, he was. Certainly one of the big driving factors for a lot of these professionals. Because... <laughs> 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 It's somewhat easy to get the chips here, but it's really tough to get the chips you know here, right? <laughs> Reminds me, so like, design of a poker in track, player. like not the Are you, are you saying Henrik has too much space? Really? So like in track, the ovals aren't all created the same. 
picked like the fastest tracks or really wide ones where yeah, the corner is yeah. super that's smooth. Right. That's what I'm picturing. <laughs> I mean, if like I played on the circle table, I'd play yeah. so fast, it would be so easy. I've never seen you play fast before. <laughs> yeah, you just need the circle table and here we go. You can much easier see through his accent. He's got his 11 time banks left today. Oh. Simon. Be above Nico, fresh off of a $1.8 million score less than a month ago. Oh, I'm not aware. That's pretty massive. Uh, game third in a big 10K. Discipline fold. The A7 finding the mark from the small Rodrigo. Defendable eight? hand. What the fuck is this? You have like he said, he 11? Has, he has 11 time banks well, left. Jesus said. Christ. Rodrigo is going to actually reshove here. Yeah, as much as me. I love I Brazil. I've used one. I love everything about it. Yeah, well, it's not going to love that he's going to get called in this it's spot. Kind of Ace queen. Yeah, like at the beginning you got a few more than has plenty of equity when called. Oh, oh, oh. Knows that he can get some folds because Hecklin's going to have some I'm raised folds from the hijack. 885,000 in not the middle. The pass, not the last pass, just a flash draw. Just a, just a flash draw. <laughs> I'm blocking the ace, ace, ace of diamonds. Puerto Rico with the 10 9 suited. And well, Ooh, how about that for a flop? Well. Well, open ender. Note the equities, Randy. Yeah, it's actually 10 9 suited. Slight favorite as we go to this turn card. But you'll be in like a short deck tournament. Like Three level spades. two. Like red lights. You have two boards Gives left. <laughs> the equity advantage back <laughs> to Hecklin. One card to come. Yeah. Pair the wow. board. Oh is this how it goes? On is demand. Is this yeah. how it goes for the mediocre Dane? Just calling <laughs> run outs <laughs> when needed. What the fuck? You, you, did, you did use a single one. I, I felt like you yeah. were. It's more of a free roll then. 20k is a uh, free roll. I was just like, yeah, this guy's got it. I've just learned when you're sweating it. It's, it's just way too many outs, none of the board outs matter, just pulse it. Yeah, it's simple. A lot of ways to look make any strong, too. Just keep it. Everyone's like, oh, wow. It's better for you, actually. <laughs> Those are the <laughs> secrets. She's right. If you use two. Eric, up to fifth in chips now. I'm just joking, because you're actually guessing 12 cards. Yeah. But so like when it hits, it's like, even like... Yeah, it's like, She's a pro. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, just, get, just guessing what, like... Like, a, like a quarter of a deck or something. Yeah, 12 out of 40. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Better than a deck, actually. Yeah. Like, look at me. Genius. We got, we got yeah. one more bullet. Sorry? One more bullet. Yeah, sure, go ahead. All right. If we, if we find someone from here, it's hard. So I, I see them. I see them waiting in line over there, but they're not coming over here. Well, serious. It's beer level. I just yeah, try it and it's fine. Try, try it. Uh, yeah, yeah. They upgrade. We, we tried red wine, but the, the waiter kicked them over, so we switched back to to white wine. It's a long story. And it makes Actually, sense. longer than I said. Yeah. I promise you, it's, the story is not worth retelling. But my God, <laughs> that's what you just did. <laughs> like the waiter broke our glasses. So we started with white wine. No, no, don't tell it. Don't okay. Tell it. <laughs> <laughs> they, won't, they won't think it's funny. It's not funny. It's it's hilarious. Trust me. Kids, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> trust me. <laughs> trust me. <laughs> it only makes sense to us. It's, it's so profound. It's so. <laughs> you, you think, uh, you, you think always, it's the one serious old again? Profound is the word I use to describe Hecklin. Yeah. I was oh, like, what's Henrik like? Oh, and I'm thank like, you. profound. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it sounds very British. I take that as a compliment. <laughs> I hope it was. Yeah. If it wasn't Just true, hearing that at so the World Series, you have beer level. At <laughs> Triton, you have wine level, the final profane level no, no, of no, play. That, that was profane. Yeah. Feel free to order us a Ish. Pinot Grigio, Randy. So we don't get the story because Hecklin says it's not worthy. It's of too profound, he said, that we wouldn't get it. Those were his words. Okay. Note the sixes hit the mark, by the way. Discipline yep. from KT. Also note the size of the field. Down to 38, just 12 off the money. Yeah. Maybe perhaps going to get closer yeah, to that just look at the main app. cash. 
No, you're not allowed to. Yeah. Forty thousand five hundred than we expected. Uh, well, we used to be allowed to look at the app, and then someone complained, which is a crazy thing. To <laughs> no, I, about. I think you were never allowed. Who was it? Yes. But I, I think don't name. I think it was it was just nation. Uh, they'll fun they live in the UK. Oh. Oh yeah. Yeah, it wasn't Christoph. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. Yeah. That's obviously true. Henrik and a few of the. Ooh. Hello. I mean, it was a little funny because. Non Brits do call London home. There's Henrik, one of those. Flops middle set on the 10 8 tray board, the case 8. The other one busy in Coop's hand and potentially himself in some trouble here. Little pair. Backdoor clubs. A lot could happen here, Randy. Jack with, you know, the inside straight draw. 300k in the middle. Yeah, he's reaching for some chips. Uh-oh. Thinking about making that play he was cutting out earlier. Does <laughs> get out of there? I mean, Henrik probably sweating that tank. It's like, go on, do something. Take it upstairs, Jack. 40 bigs effective against Nico. Like he's thinking about whether to raise or not. Does. Check raise to 230,000. Excuse the graphics. And a quick call from Nico. Undeterred. Now, worth noting that the size of the pot is 200k bigger than currently displayed. 685 in the middle. Nico, the effective stack with 1 million, picking up a gut shot on the turn. Yeah, with that small check raise, kind of just get your opponent to come in with hands that have so little equity. Ten X still a large part of Nico's range that he can clearly get value from. It it really throws a spanner in the works when you've been having banter with your table mate, you know, just joking about the wine and whatnot. And you notice how everyone just goes silent the moment there's a check raise and they start playing a big pot. Mm -hmm. No friends at the poker table as Hecklin looks to set up a pot sized river jam should Nico tag along for the ride. 285 is the price. He just has a bit too much to be laying this one down with the pick up the inside straight draw. Kinda. Anything to read into here in terms of how quickly Nico's been making these these calls? Yeah, it definitely could mean something uh, depending on you know who's playing. Not sure how much history these two players got. Regardless, Nico is going to be put to a pretty tough decision here with the pair of eights. Let's see if Henrik does go for that jam that you suggest may happen. M might go smaller too. Hold on. Well, Henrik, of course, happy 
to go for it all across three streets. And now Nico with the decision for his tournament life with just 20 minutes left on the clock of day one. So I'm trying to think. I guess the kind of one of the big questions is it does look like Nico's holding like a 10x holding. Would my opponent try and and push me off of that? No heart draw. I mean, no no any flush draws were present at any point in his hand. So it does reduce kind of some of those hands that may take this kind of check raise bet turn line. Holding the nine, you do block the jack nine a little bit, which is something you'd want to pick off against. By this decision, the Hecklin's put him into. Knows that Hecklin's capable of having bluffs in it. Might just call him off. It kind of gives you that vibe, doesn't it? It really does. The speed at which he kind of just tried sending a message on flop and turn. Hey. You're not going to shake me out of this one, pal. And I understand why. He's really just so confused. As he knows that with, by him flat calling in position and, and bet calling the check raise and calling the turn that he can show up with very nutted hands. You know, obviously all of the sets out there, tens, eights, and threes. So the fact that his opponent's still jamming without any concern is... You know, kind of crossing his mind. Like, what? Let's just say Henrik is value bet thinner. Like, would he still value bet jam here with like I don't know, Ace Ten hypothetically? If you start to like kind of kick these hands out and think it's a set or nothing situation, then your hand looks a lot better, especially holding the pair of eights, which blocks that set of eights. Although in this case, it does have eights. Yeah, and don't forget, you know, this hand went three ways to the flop. Would Hecklin be inclined to check over pairs? Feels unlikely. Uh, jacks, queens, kings. Wouldn't want to give a free card off to two players' hands. So does that mean it's more like a hand like ace nine, ace seven, That's the back door? Even though it was a rainbow flop, does obviously retain all of the suited ace x. Should he check raise flop? Why do I think you're full of shit, Henrik? Yeah, I always think that, but. I don't know if my hand is a good bluff catcher or a terrible one. Yeah, it's an interesting hand to have. It has arguments and merits for both. Oh, Henrik's done a fantastic job at selling this story that he's, uh, in Nico Koop's words, a bullshitter. The Great Dane, Triton champion, would be chip leader, should. Coop, click, call. <laughs> Daya, Randy flicks in the one chip and gets shown the set of eights. And with that pot, 2.6 million chip pot going Heckland's way with just. A few hands left. Last four hands, there you go. There's the announcement. And Henrik Hecklin, overwhelming chip leader of the entire tournament. That is a massive <laughs> pot, my friend. <laughs> and that is a dangerous man to have all of the chips in there. Kind of in my, in my area. You got this reputation capable of making huge plays, and you get paid off when you hit it. That whole dynamic as well leading up to it the the banter 
the stories from previous tables, like there was history there, you know? Yes. Can't fault Nico for making the call there. Hopefully not going to be too hard on himself. Four more hands, Henry. We call it a day as we're currently down to 35. Lubavetsky's got ace-king, big slick in the cutoff. Danny Tang, ace-queen suited. Oh, boy. They could easily clash, especially if the situation, but just calls here will potentially save them some chips. It seems like bloodbaths coming late in the day, perhaps. 34 players remain. 26 will make the money. <coughs> Fortunately for Danny, does not come ace high on the 10 9 3 board. Hello, lady. It's a good one. Mama Sita of spades. On the turn <laughs> of spades. Okay, I like that little <laughs> extra information. 180 in the middle. Andre with the two overs and the Broadway gutter. Very interesting check here from Danny Tang. Kind of a tank check. You, you would expect the ace queen to bet the turn up pretty high frequency and i believe that kind of long check there on the turn has gotten andrew lubavetsky to fire away kind of looks like oh i've got some kind of showdown type holding like a 9x or like two eights two sevens but i really trying to let telegraph that information so that you won't bet and i think he's kind of read into it and try to attack here, but he's actually holding, obviously, a, a clearly strong holding of top pair, top kicker. Nicely done, so far. BT, of course, going nowhere. And gets the check mark next to his name. 420,000 in the middle. Slide it on over to Andre, who's going to take the showdown with the ace king. How you don't race pre flop? You get all the chips. Scared. Scared of what? Ace queen suited. Thank you for saving me some chips. You're welcome. <laughs> River two. That was a interesting. Well, it, is, it was genuine. It's just like uh, I, we've all been there. You know, you, in your mind, you feel like your opponent played a hand poorly and would have won all of your chips. I, I've been there before, you know. It's, it's one o'clock in the morning. But some was, people are jet lagged, some people are tired, you know. He, he, he seemed kind of tilted as yeah. he was kind of saying this to him. Like, Do I got unlucky, but you could have got all my chips. I'll give you an example, right? Yeah. Fuck, I'm so lucky. <laughs> I'm so lucky. <laughs> you know when you're going to empty the clip on a bluff, but instead of being given the opportunity to jam river, your opponent leads into you? That annoys Playing me because I'm BG's like, well, you wouldn't want it all. Yep. <laughs> the needles continue. Apparently, the soundtrack, famous song, the Bee Gees, Staying Alive, going to be his alarm clock tomorrow morning should he bag for day two, which is looking likely. Two more hands. All in. Look at this reshove. This is pretty cool. Not something, you know, standard, of course, to defend here of two fours, but he has created an opportunity to get the coin flip to just lay it down pre-flop. Pretty big fan of that play. Alex Perfley, first time at a try and defend. I've had the pleasure of commentating on him before. Rocking... The same cap, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe his run good cap. 8-3 offsuit attacking uh, after the Brewer Limp BVB. 
Just some dust looking to take it down. Ace three. Someone send the memo to Hecklin that this is, uh, you know, mm -hmm. almost August and turning into the year of Brewer. Those are Nico Coop's chips going to work. That is true. <laughs> Randy, I tell you what, the more I've gotten to know you, the more I've realized that you're just a savage <laughs> deep down, <laughs> like some of the one-liners you bang out. And it's so subtle as well. <laughs> uh, those are, you know, Nico Coop's chips. Savage, mate. It's a 25k buy-in. He was absolutely pained by that decision. Ultimately... Made the wrong choice on the river. Henrik Hecklin, chip leader, 34 left. 897,000 up top in this 25k. Great day in pole position to add a third title to his incredibly impressive Triton track record. Chris with the ace three off, so actually reaching for more chips. Check race. Brewdog with that ace of clubs. Getting busy. He's tough. Gangster. Up to 1.3 million. Now he's got some of Nico's chips. You just <laughs> took my line right out of my mouth. I was going to say, hello, Nico's chips. Two more hands. Is there more blood? to be spilt before we end today. A couple of short stacks out there. Vogelsang with 20 bigs. Drew Gonzalez up to 1.2 million. Yeah, okay. Yeah. The red feature table. <laughs> there was extra hole codes right on the play ID. <laughs> if I'd known you were 007, I wouldn't have raised quick. Makes sense. Very important number in this country. No, it's just Vogel. Secret agent. Yeah. I mean, and I'm, and I'm in my Ace home Nine going to hit the mark? Is this your home country? James Bond. Well timed. Oh, okay. <laughs> so T had it yeah, out pipped. <laughs> One seat over. <laughs> I was confused for a second. <laughs> no. I don't think there's many poker tournaments in San Diego. <laughs> no. I mean, Tim Adams has a break. Oh, boy. I mean, who knows? Yeah. A couple of hands in the blinds, Randy. Sixes for Hecklin. Gonna just flat now. KT. Gonna look to announce himself. A couple of cowboys. Yeah, the main question is whether he just three bet ship squeezes this or does he maybe put a little bit less in there? Try to induce some action from his opponents. Looks like he was gonna go for like the two low 225 see if ace jack can get away you know, it really does depend on nice the mood j and t's in discipline so far today i'm loving the style that he's bringing to this feature table second and chips overall Hecklin with a potential back jam spot. 25 bigs effective against KT. You know. Gets out of there. Sixes hit the mark from the outer tables. Leon Sturm has been eliminated in a sizable pot. Wow. Roberto Gomez now finds himself chip leader. So Randy, it went Leon open from the cutoff to 75k with a couple of fours. Gomez made it 200k on the button with two tens. Forwarded back round to Leon Sturm who opted to take the aggressive line. Jammed over the top, got snapped by the tens clean run out for the Spaniard <coughs> an ultimate hand of the evening finds himself chip leader at his maiden Triton series maiden Triton event KT is going to limp here 
Blind versus Should've Blind. That would have been really good. <laughs> you, win, you win the hand. <laughs> How much is it? I'll just chuck the app. I'm going to turn my mic on. A lot of times you'll see the King 5 take a free flop here. He does. Gets out flopped. Jack, 10, Trey, KT. Picking up some heat. The final few hands of the night. Always a welcome sight. To bag a few extra chips for the end of play. See what Vogel comes with. King of diamonds in hand, one over to the board. 60% of a royal flush. You name it, he's got it. Yeah, it looks like he will continue, and occasionally he's got the best hand. He's got the position, the key important part of the hand. See what his opponent does and react accordingly. Yeah. <laughs> really can't say no to the backdoor Bangkok potential. Ace of spades. Let's give Vogel four additional outs. And obviously give him Broadway, King. It's kind of tricky betting on the ace as, you know, you expect kind of like the bigger holdings that have an ace or like the king, queen to kind of raise pre-flop after it checks to him. Yeah, it, just, it doesn't really make sense for him to start firing, so it makes sense he takes a free one, does check there. And, you know, the king actually has enough shutdown value where I don't feel he needs to turn this one into a bluff. He probably doesn't expect the ace-x or jack-x to, to ever fold with the action. Yeah, KT with a snap check on the river. Vogel happy to show this one down, gets shown the 10-8. Canapong. Crossing the million chip mark at the end of the evening. Uh, with that, the bags are being brought over to the blue feature table. 33 players are going to reach day two, which means, Randy, tomorrow kind of you know, come back in soft-ish bubble, if you will. Seven off the money. That min cash, 40,500, be locked up by the final 26. But that does mean seven players will be going home, going to bed, coming back tomorrow to only leave empty. And tournament poker really is brutal. Chip counts for the end of the evening. At this feature brought to you by Poker State, Henrik Hecklin tagging a very welcomed 71 big blinds. Was looking like he's going to be bagging the chip lead. Got check raised by Brewer, blind v blind. And then Gomez scooped a monster pot on one of the outer tables. The Spaniard, first ever time at Triton Series. First ever Triton event, obviously, the 25k GG Millions. Probably going to sleep like a, a baby tonight. Yeah. Job well done. Job well done, you know, like uh, obviously doing well. Well, many players in, in great contention, but, you know, our first title is uh, going to be crowned tomorrow in this uh, opening event. And, of course, there's another event that will be going on at the same time for those players who are no longer in the tournament. But uh, it's exciting. Day one in the books. Uh, and how many more events do we got? Like 15 or so? 15 or so. Yeah. I will just state for the record that the app – hadn't quite updated itself. And Roberto, who we just said potentially going to sleep well tonight, perhaps not, Randy, because the last hand of the night played a 3 million chip pot against none other than the very own local Sam Grafton, who is going to bag chip lead. Well, scroll, go back million. to the hand and scroll well, a little bit more. Like, what kind of I mean, hang <laughs> comment on. is that? Hang on. <laughs> All right. Chill. So both of them turned a straight. Roberto with the jack eight had the queen high straight on the queen 10, six, nine board. Squiddy turned the 10 high straight with the flush redraw. I mean, Sam bets turn. Roberto just piles. Grafton calls and finds the spade. 
just finds the backdoor flush, the miracle spade, Bing. to send the Spaniard home with potential nightmares as what <laughs> could have been. <laughs> That's nightmares for sure. What <laughs> could have been for Roberto. Sam Grafton coming back tomorrow with a chip lead on the home soil. He kind of called it at the start of the day. There was some banter as he was nursing a short stack about the home field advantage. But from Randy and I here in the booth, we're going to call it a day tomorrow. Same time, same place, I believe. Ali, Najad and Maria Ho are going to be kicking things off 2 p.m. at local time. Make sure you do come back and join us as we play down into the money. And then, of course, down to a champion where set champion going home with $897,000 from us here in the broadcast booth. Good night.